On September 19th of 2015, Amy Day killed her mother. The reason why she killed her mother is in order for her to get away with stealing her money and being able to continue draining her bank accounts after she was dead by pretending that she had been going off to Colorado with this mythical Rose person. Now, why should you believe that? The evidence in this case, as you've heard, you've heard a lot of little pieces of evidence. In other words, just like we talked about in jury selection, the evidence in a criminal case is like a jigsaw puzzle. And like a jigsaw puzzle, any one piece of evidence doesn't necessarily tell you the whole story, the big picture. But what we have to do is put the pieces out in front of you. Look at them all together using your logic and common sense and see how they fit together. And just like in doing a jigsaw puzzle, what is the first thing you do? You go for the corner pieces, the edges, because those are the clear-cut pieces enabling you to frame out what you're talking about. So in this case, what are those corner pieces? What frames out the issues in this case? I submit to you four things that frame out this case. The first is information we gathered from the burial and remains. The second is the detail surrounding the attempt to make it appear as if her mother had gone to Colorado. The third is following the money. Where is the financial motive for this crime? And lastly, we look at the statements, admissions, and omissions of Amy Day. And what you will see is that all four of those corners interconnect and establish that there is no other person with the means, motive, and opportunity to commit this crime. All of the evidence in this case points to one conclusion and one conclusion only. What you will see again is that these four prongs interconnect. So first we're going to talk about the burial and the remains. One of the key pieces of evidence in this case is how the body was wrapped. As you'll see, the victim's body was wrapped first in garbage bags. Then over the top of the garbage bags, she's wrapped in pink blankets tied together with a rough rope and a long white coaxial cable. Now this evidence is key because it interconnects again with the defendant's statements as to how the body was wrapped. Because what the defendant, if you recall, was asked in her interview with Detective Rios, at that point, she had been told that the body had been wrapped in garbage bags. That was the only information she had been told. It was buried and wrapped in trash bags. So when Detective Rios asked her, would your DNA be on the trash bags? She said, yes, you know, I've handled the trash bags before. He then asked her broader question. Is there, you know, what else would your DNA be on? And what did she list out? Blankets, cable, and a rope. Now, why would she list out those items first? You've seen the photos of the house, and the photos of the house will go back so that you can look at them. There's millions of items in this house. It's a crowded, packed garage. Why would her mind go to blankets, cable, and rope? Particularly since it wasn't just any blankets, cable, or rope. She wanted to specifically describe the nature of the blanket. It was a pink blanket. Childhood sort of characters on it. It was the rough, scratchy rope. Remember the detective asked her about twine and fishing line and she said, no, no, no. I remember handling the scratchy rope. Very specific. She was very specific about which cable. It was the long cable that she took off her mother's TV that she handled. Why would your mind go to those materials when asked what would your DNA be on? Amy Day lived in that house for five years. Her DNA could have been on anything in that house. 
Why would her mind go to those three materials? At what point, unless she was the killer, she would have had no idea that they were relevant to this case. She would have no idea that they were wrapped around her mother's body. The fact that her mind went right to that, trying to build a defense against those materials used, shows that she knew what her mother was buried in because she was the one that did it. There's no other reasonable explanation as to why her mind would go to those specific materials when asked by Detective Rios. Now I'm going to show you Staked's Exhibit 5, Photograph A5. This is what her mother was wrapped in. Remember, Amy Day was being interviewed at the sheriff's office while they were unearthing these remains. She had no opportunity to see it. She wasn't given a photograph. She wasn't told. And what materials? Pink blanket, white long coaxial cord, and you can see here the rough rope. There's no reasonable explanation as to why she would be able to know that, why the brain would jump there, other than she's the guilty party who wrapped her dead mother's body and buried it. Now, what else about the burial and remains? You have, of course, the injuries to the victim. Now, I know that the autopsy photos in this particular case are not pleasant to look at, but... And I'm not going to display them for you right now, but you will have them back in the jury room to look at. And there is something I do ask you to look at. You heard Dr. Stephanie tell you that the victim had been beaten severely. She had been bruising over both eyes. She had burst blood vessels called scleral hemorrhage in the whites of both eyes. She had bruising on her upper lip, on her tongue, she had a large bruise on the right side of her face, a large bruise around her ear, two large bruised areas on the back of her head, and additional large bruised areas on her back. Now, while he said that those injuries were not sufficient to have caused her death, what it clearly shows is that she met her end in a violent way at the hands of another. Specifically, he told you those injuries could not have been caused by a fall or an accident, other than perhaps falling down a flight of stairs. This is a low-level ranch house, no stairs in sight. In other words, those injuries were inflicted upon her. Now, he can't tell you exactly what the exact mechanism of her death because she wasn't shot, she wasn't stabbed, she wasn't strangled. What he can tell you from the body is that suffocation is consistent as a method of death. And why would we believe suffocation might be a probable cause of death in this case? Number one, she's found with her upper body completely covered in garbage bags, which placed while she was alive would have caused her to suffocate. Secondly, you have the injuries to the mouth. And this is one where again, as unpleasant as it is, I would ask that you look at the photograph of her face. Because what you see is the bruising on her lip. Upper lip is very distinct. And I'm gonna show you sort of a little bit of the body chart that the doctor showed you. What you can see is there are small spots of bruising with unbruised space in between. Now, how would you get that? Again, someone who's just been struck in the face, you'd expect a broad area of bruising. But I suggest to you that the spots of bruising across the lips would be consistent with being forcibly grabbed by covering her mouth. Think about finger marks. That would cause the pattern of bruising we see on her upper lip. Now, why might we have forcible grabbing of her mouth? 
Remember the circumstances? She frantically goes over to her mother's house looking for her mother. We know that only a few minutes have passed, which means Miss Day and her mother were in that house. The killer had to keep the victim quiet. Forcibly covering her mouth, perhaps smothering her in the process, would be consistent with the physical evidence and the circumstances in total to cause her death. And then lastly, we have the evidence of her bindings. Remember, she was found with her hands zip-tied in front of her body, held together with three zip-ties, and then covered with duct tape. Additional duct tape had been applied to secure, to tie her arms to her torso, so she had clearly been confined and tied up. And I submit, unless you have a zombie problem, there is no reason to do that kind of bonding to someone who is already dead. So it's consistent with her being bound up while she was alive and then beaten and then suffocated. So what is important about the bindings other than as a method of death? It's also relevant to the charge of kidnapping you'll hear. But more than that, you have the physical evidence of zip ties and duct tape being used to bind her because zip ties and duct tape linked together with the evidence of the attempt to convince everyone that she had gone to Colorado. So let's talk about that. There are three main parts of this process, and that comes to the staging of the scene, the phone calls, or lack thereof, and the fact that evidence shows this was not a standard burglary. So what do I mean by the staging of the scene? The morning of September 20th, when her sister arrived at the home, the house had been staged to make it look like she had gone to Colorado. Her personal belongings had been packed up, removed from the house. Her toiletries were removed from the bathroom. Her vitamins were removed and tossed over the back fence line. It even included, the killer even got the winter clothes out of the guest bedroom closet or that TV room closet. So what does that tell us? Well, a couple of things. When we recover the suitcases from the attic, you recall there were three suitcases and a trash bag pulled down from the attic. One of those suitcases was the silver suitcase. And inside that silver suitcase was that brown Publix bag that contained a bunch of random items and trash. First of all, who puts a bag of trash in a suitcase and then takes the time to lift the suitcase up into the attic. You would only take that effort and time if there was something of importance hidden in the suitcase. So what was in that brown Publix bag? Number one, we had extra zip ties found in that bag. We had zip ties as well as personal items belonging to her mother, her watch, her sunglasses have been identified, as well as her library card was in there. And these legal documents that have been torn up and torn up checks. In addition, in one of the other bags, law enforcement found a used roll of duct tape that had been thrown in with her clothing. <clears throat> so what the zip ties and duct tape do is they link the person that killed her mother and buried her to the same person who put these items up in the attic in an effort to conceal them. The same items used to bind her are then found in a suitcase that went up into the attic. Next, also in that suitcase, again, you find the financial items. And that's going to link us to the next one, which is follow the money. But before we get there, one of the interesting things about the staging of the scene is you have to think about who would have known to do that. In other words, the killer had to have known her and been intimately familiar with this house. Remember, there's obviously two bedrooms, two occupied bedrooms. So if this was a complete stranger who had come in, broken into the house and killed number one, she might have been, oh, you have to ask, why would they have been bothering to try to make it look like she had gone out of town? What would some random burglar have to gain by that? If you think about it, it's incredibly risky strategy with putting the victim on the phone with a family member. That's incredibly risky. 
the longer that a random killer is in that house with her and binding her, beating her, killing her, burying her, and concealing it, and doing all the staging of the scene, every minute she's in, the killer's in that house, it's risky. If this is some stranger. And why is it so risky? Because if it's a random person, they would have had no way of knowing when or if the other occupant of the house is going to show up. No idea when that person would come home. Now, of course, Amy Day knows that Amy Day is not going to walk in, which makes it consistent with why she would feel comfortable having that length of time to stage the scene. You wouldn't expect them to take the time to dig a grave and bury her. You would expect her to leave the body where it fell, gather up the valuable items in the house, the electronics, root around for jewelry, and then get out of there. So it's important in this case, the fact that the house wasn't burglarized in that normal sense. There were TVs, computers, tablets. Miss Day's bedroom hadn't been ransacked. There was no jewelry missing from her bedroom. If this had been some complete stranger, burglarizing the house that just went awry with, again, you would expect the house to be ransacked. You'd expect these other valuable items to have been stolen, but they weren't. This just wasn't a typical burglary. Then you have the phone calls. Now, remember, you heard testimony from her sister that she received this phone call on her home phone from her mother's home phone. In response to that call, she then spoke to her husband briefly and then drove over to the house. You heard from her sister that immediately upon receiving the phone call, she bolted out of the house, said, call, call mom. They started calling and trying to reach mom. You heard that after the house was empty. Interesting thing is, Amy Day corroborates the fact. Called her worried about her mother, reporting that she had received this phone call. But what is interesting is she then, Amy Day then, claims that she also got a call from her mother and that she also claims in different parts of the interview that after being alerted by and her concern level raised that she made calls to her mother to try to find her. The phone records show none of that. Now remember, during the course of this crime, the killer clearly thought about, when you think about a paper trail, a physical paper trail in the house, tried to conceal their tracks, didn't think about the digital records of what was going on, but the phone records you'll see is State Exhibits 65. What you see on the night of September the 19th, you see a call from her sister at 8.19 p.m. There are no calls before that on September 19th from her mother, none from the home phone, none from the cell phone, Again, this will go back with you. I know it's small print and it's hard. The size is hard to zoom in on. But what you'll see when you look at this exhibit is not only are there no calls to from her mother before the call from her sister. She, she doesn't make any outgoing calls after she talks to to her mother. So again, why would Amy Day make up the fact that she had received a call? Perhaps because she knows Again, if this killer were someone other than Amy Day, they would, and they know enough about her mother to know that in order to delay the discovery of this crime, they would need to convince her sister her mom was out of town. That person would also know that they would need to show Amy Day that mom was out of town since she's the one that lives there. If it was a stranger, if it was someone other than Amy Day, they would know that both daughters would need to be contacted in order to make it seem that mom had left. But Amy Day was never contacted. And again, that goes to show you again that the reason why would be because Amy Day was the one behind all of it. 
Now, when we talk about the fact that there's no evidence of any property being stolen from the house, other than this effort to make it look like it, she had gone to Colorado, that leads us to follow the money. Nothing was missing in the house of value that you would normally expect to be taken during a burglary. Nothing. However, we see thousands of dollars of her money disappear out of her bank account starting on September 19th. And most importantly, who has the motive to take all that money? Well, Amy Day is dead broke at that time. So how do we know that she was broke? Now again, these records will go back with you so you can look at them in more detail. But I want to highlight for you what I submit to you should be of importance. Now, first of all, you heard in the interview, Amy Day banked at PNC Bank, and you have her bank statements from the bank. I believe it's July through September. What you see is her bank account steadily dwindles. She doesn't have regular income coming in, and so by the end of August, her checking account had of all, oh, I believe, $1.87 until she gets that $2,500 check deposited on the 19th. So as of August 27th, $1.87. Now we know that Amy Day has bills to pay. You can see in one of the earlier statements in July down here, she makes several credit card payments. One is to a GM card services and one to Community Bank. Now in the interview, you heard her talking that she has two cards that she had joint accounts with her mother on, GM services and You Promise, which is Barclay card. So, but, but in July, she makes a payment to GM card services and a payment to Community Bank. What you see when you look at her records from August and September is that her bank account does not make any payments to those credit cards in either July, August, or September. And those happen to be the two of the same credit cards that we find being paid large sums of money out of her account suddenly on the 19th. And that State Exhibit 59, oh, sorry, the PNC Bank is State Exhibit 60. Now, in her records, you'll see records from July through September when this crime happened. And when you look at her records, you can see a picture of who her mother was. You'll see with her CFE credit account that she had a savings account, a checking account, a car loan, and a line of credit. When you look at her accounts from July, what you see is that her line of credit, which is labeled roof repair, has a zero balance. You see that she has a standard income. She's on a fixed income, and her fixed income was $2,060 a month. She had a social security and some sort of pension that was regularly deposited near the first of the month. So when you look at her bank account, you see a lot of charges that are you would expect from an elderly woman in St. Cloud. She goes to Walmart and Publix, local fast food restaurants. She pays her household bills, but no big monetary transfers. Maybe a couple hundred in and out of savings, a couple hundred of that dollar withdrawal until you get to September 19. So her financial situation the day before this crime, you can see she had a zero balance on her credit line, savings of $1,600 and $234 in the bank, her checking account. So she had a total money to access would be $8,860. After the murder, $6,000 on September 19 was transferred from the line of credit into the savings account and then into the checking account. Her savings account was drained down to $60.98. Her checking account, it ends up with a balance of 511. Why? Because we had this series of payments starting September 19th. 
Now we know the $400 ATM withdrawal was done by Amy Day. She admitted it in her interview. We see a $1,000 payment to Barclay Card, $43 to Boost Mobile, $2,500 check to Amy Day, an $814 payment to Comenity, and a $2,500 payment to GM Card Services. Now what's significant about that is when you look at her months previous, you see that Ms. Day did not make regular monthly payments to either Community Bank or GM Card Services or Barclay Card. Now, but what her mother did do is she paid several hundred dollars or more each month on her car loan than was minimum. So in her words, she clearly had funds available to make payments if she believed that these were her accounts or that she had a balance due and owing. So in other words, her mother clearly had funds available to make payments if she believed that these were her accounts or that she had a balance due and owing, if it was her responsibility. But she wasn't doing that. She was paying extra money on her car loan. So these accounts, which had previously been uh, the GM and Comenity, which had previously been paid by the defendant's account, had been going unpaid. And then all of a sudden, thousands of dollars are drained out of mom's account to pay on these credit cards. $7,262 was drained out of her mother's bank accounts basically in one day. And the thing is, these payments all benefit, went to benefit Amy Day. No one else would benefit as far as a killer from these payments other than Amy Day from this death. Now, how else do we know that she, that Miss Day, was in dire financial circumstances? Well, now in States Exhibit 46, these were documents recovered in the brown Publix bag in the silver suitcase from the attic. What you see here, first, a letter from PNC Bank dated August 5th, denying her credit. So clearly in the month preceding this attack, she is trying to get more access to credit and being denied from her own bank. And you'll have this in the back so you can read it later. I know it's... You also see multiple letters from Enterprise Rent-A-Car dated. This one, uh, this one's dated uh, August 19th. Another one dated in June, showing that she owed $443.14 as a result of a damage claim. And obviously, as you see these multiple letters in the file, you can see that Enterprise is kind of hounding her for this money. And you also can see that, and this is dated September 11th, that she was on food stamps. That's how dire her circumstances were. Again, in the black makeup case, the travel case that was found under Amy Day's bed, underneath the debit cards and the credit cards belonging to her mother. Exhibit 28, Photograph P17. What you see here is a letter to Amy Hawkins dated August 27, 2015, showing that she had credit card debt from FIA card services in the amount of $13,000 that is going to collections. So clearly, Amy Day owes a lot of money to a lot of different people, but she had one dollar and 87 cents in the bank account. No evidence of anyone else who's close to her mother that has anything like this level of debt or financial need. So what else about the finances leads you to Amy Day? Not only does she have a desperate need for the money, you see again, the money is going to her. But now, in addition to the $2,500 check and the $400 that she withdrew from the bank on September 20th in that black metal travel case that law enforcement found two additional checks supposedly written to Amy Day by her mother, both of which Amy Day had already endorsed. 
Check number 5414 for $2,500 dated September 23rd. Now, if you recall with Amy, after all these transactions had occurred on September 19th and 20th, at the time, the total amount available in her mother's account was $1,572. So, but we have these two post-dated checks of 5414 for $2,500 and 5415 for $500 dated September 25th. Now, what these post-dated checks show us is that Amy Day had a very specific motivation to keep the death of her mother under wraps long enough for her next month's income to come in so that there would be enough money in the account to cash these checks. Because that is the only thing she has access to the accounts. She knows the balance. That's why these checks are sitting in the lockbox post-dated. I would submit to you that this is a specific motivation to keep this under wraps. In fact, there's two points in the interview where she specifically comments on this when Detective Guevara is pushing on her. You have access to the finances. You have it. And she responds, not if she's dead. I don't. If she's dead, then my sister has control. So in other words, Amy Day has very specific motivation to drain these bank accounts before her body is found. Because she knows that once her body is found, she no longer has access to mom's credit cards and to mom's bank account. So I want to play for you briefly the clip from her second interview where she discusses her knowledge of what would happen if her mother is found dead. Again, what are the materials used to wrap her mother? Blankets, cable, and rope. How would she have known that if she wasn't the one who buried her? When you look at, um, this is Exhibit 23, look at these. When you look at the garage, in this case, there's stuff stacked everywhere. Bins, boxes, yet she zeroes in on the exact three items wrapped around her mother. That's not a coincidence, ladies and gentlemen. It's simply not. There's no reasonable explanation for that other than the fact that Amy Day knew what her mother was wrapped in because she was the one that buried her after killing her. What else is important in her interview? She also identifies a gun that she used that she says she hid in 1998 in a bin, and she specifically describes it. It was a chrome with a wooden handle. Now, why is that interesting? Of course, you heard that was somehow a gun used to fire a shot into the bed in her mother's bedroom. Now, again... The physical evidence left behind doesn't tell us exactly why that was shot. Was she trying to threaten her mother? Was she trying to kill her mother? Her mother got out of the way? We don't know. But what's interesting is that, again, in trying to explain away physical evidence, she specifically talks about this particular gun and declares exactly where it's located. In the bin. It's got a wooden handle. And why is that relevant? When you think about the interview, remember when Detective Guevara is pushing her and pushing her? Like, you know, tell us what happened the day before. She was asking, he was asking her about the events the morning before the interview. Not months ago, not years ago, the day before. And she's like, I, I, I just can't remember. I just can't remember, but she can remember exactly what a gun looked like that she claimed she last saw in 1998. She can claim that she remembers exactly where that was. She can remember when trying to explain away her DNA that she handled a blanket, which is used to wrap the well when it freezes. Remember, this didn't happen in September. It had been quite some time since she had last wrapped a well in that blanket. 
no reason why that should pop into your mind as what your DNA might be on. Something that you last would have touched months ago, except for the fact that you buried your mother in it. Her memory is quite selective. And again, all designed to conceal her efforts to bury, to kill, steal, and bury her mother. So when you look at all of this evidence, what becomes apparent is that all of the evidence points back to Amy Day. Nobody else was financially benefiting from both the death of her mother as well as the concealment of the death. Because remember, with the items that Amy Day had ordered, she was getting a 50-inch flat-screen TV delivered to the house. There's no way she could conceal that from her mother if her mother's alive. There's no way she could conceal from her mother that thousands of dollars were diverted into her bank account. The only way she could get away with that kind of theft is if her mother wasn't there to discover it. And furthermore, again, the only way she could continue accessing those credit cards, continue cashing those checks, is if nobody else knew her mother was dead. No one else had the similar motive to both kill her mother as well as conceal the death in order to, for further financial gain. Nobody. There's no other suspect located. No other suspect identified. So what about the physical evidence? You heard that the detectives and crime scene analysts gathered a lot of evidence. They swabbed a lot of things, tested a lot of things for fingerprints and DNA. But in this case, fingerprints and DNA do not solve the case. There was no DNA foreign to her mother found on any items. Now, does that, obviously, that doesn't point to the finger to Amy Day, but it also doesn't, we also didn't find DNA from anybody else. What about fingerprints? We found fingerprints of Amy Day on the Walmart bags on the other side of the fence containing mom's toiletries. We found her fingerprint on the brown Publix bag and on the duct tape roll. Now, again, she lived in that house. These are items from their house. So her fingerprint being on them, since we cannot date how long a fingerprint's been there, that doesn't say that those fingerprints were deposited in the course of staging the scene. But what's interesting about it is that nobody else's fingerprints were found. Now, how would that happen? One of the most common, of course, forensic countermeasures of all is gloves. One of the things in the photographs from the nighttime. This is a dark photograph. It's hard to see. But what you can look at, what do you see hanging by a line over the washer and dryer? Gloves. Now the presence of gloves in a house where people do gardening is not in and of itself suspicious. But what it does show is that Ms. Day had the ability to wear gloves while burying her mother and handling the body to prevent her fingerprints and DNA from being deposited on those items. So again, in this case, the forensic evidence doesn't answer the questions. But it also doesn't point to anybody else. It doesn't create any new questions. In this case, when you, when the evidence, when you look at the evidence found in the black traveling case, the evidence found in the brown Publix bag in the attic, the duct tape roll found with other clothes in the attic, condition of the body, phone records, the bank records, all of that together points to one person and one person only who could have done this crime, the defendant, Amy Day. Thank you. I'm gonna record this so I don't forget anything, if you don't mind. No problem. Um, so you are Amy, what's your last name? Day, D-A-L. And what's your date of birth? 3471. And what's your phone number? 
you have my cell phone, but the one at the house is... I don't have your cell phone, so okay. if you remember it offhand... It, okay, they have it in evidence. It's 407-709-7363. 7363. Yeah, but it's... They gave me a voucher for it. I understand. Do you have a home phone as well? Yeah, but I, it's 89407. Mm-hmm. 892 mm -hmm. 6714 okay. but I don't know if I'm going to be allowed to go home so why not well you've got to well you'll be allowed to go home oh okay we just got to make we're trying to find your mom that's all we're trying well, to no, do I, no I understand that I just with crime scene normally yeah I mean there's going to be a time where we're going to have to be in there but you're going to go home oh okay and um then this is the number that I'll be at. This is your home phone? Yes. Okay. And uh, what's the address there? 4725 Lakeshore Drive. Two words. Tim Cloud. Mm -hmm. And um, it's 34772. Okay. How long have you lived there? I moved back in with my mom um, five years ago when I was going to my divorce. How long has your mom lived there? Um, over 25 years. God, I don't even know how long. It, it, it's been a long time. Um, my parents got divorced when I was 12 or 13, and I think my mom bought the house. Uh, my dad bought the house that he lives, that we, we built the house me and my mom and my dad built a house that he lives in now and he bought her half out and I think I was 15 so I'm 44 now so over 25 years so yeah is, is it just you and your mom who lives there mm -hmm. and um, I'm getting ready to move but where are you moving to Ohio What's in Ohio? My job. What's your job? I work at a law firm. I'm a paralegal. How long have you been doing that? Um, a little over a year. Do you already secure this job, or? Mm hmm And what? Who's the legal firm that you're working for? It's Hanson. Hanson. Mm hmm Just Hanson Legal. It's Hansel and Associates. Hansel or Hanson? Hanson and Associates. Richard Hanson is the owner. And um, have you lived in Ohio before that? No. And how did you get to know Richard? Did you just apply or what? Do uh, you know him? Or? I applied. So you don't know him other than just applying? Mm-hmm. And um, we just do lo loan modifications trying to save, save people's houses. Mm -hmm. And are you working with them currently? Or are you going to start working for them? I'm doing odd jobs every once in a while for them. How long have you been doing that? Uh, about six, seven months. I think you wanted to kind of test me to see how I did. I understand. And, um, all right, if we can just go through the last few days. Okay. Um, I guess we're guessing Saturday. Did you see your mom on Saturday? Yes. When did you see her? Um, when I woke up until I left at 5 o'clock. You left at 5 p.m.? Yes. On Saturday? Mm-hmm. Where'd you go? Uh, went to Chiefland, Gainesville. It's just 20 minutes outside before Gainesville. So you went to Chiefland? Mm-hmm. I've never even heard of Chiefland before. Bronson, Williston. No. <laughs> it's 20 minutes from Gainesville. I understand. It's just easier to say. A little small town, yeah. Yeah, it's 
it, it's dry on Sunday, if that tells you anything. <laughs> I think the population's like 400. What's in uh, Chiefland? Uh, Carrie, my boyfriend. Carrie K. E R R Y. What's his last name? Glisson, G L I S S O N. Um, so, um, you left to Gainesville? I'll say Gainesville, Chiefland. Yeah. Um, how'd you get there? He picked me up. He picked you up at 5 p.m.? Mm hmm. In what kind of car? He drives a black Mustang. Is it older or newer? Do you know the year? Uh, I believe it's 2006. And, uh, Don't quote me on that. Though. No, that's fine. Um, and he brought me back today. So you left at 5 p.m. and you came back today when? Um, around a little before 11. We don't get to spend that much time together, so the time we do, we take it. I see him once or twice a month right now. What's Kerry do for a living? He's in construction. He works for a concrete company. Just up at four thirty in the morning and goes until five or six. Do you go there every weekend or No. I only see him once or twice a month right now. This is their busy time of the year. I understand. So if we only have twelve or fourteen hours to spend together, we take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. So he came down Yeah, because on Saturday at five and he brought you back at eleven AM this yeah. morning yeah because it's a two and a half hour drive uh -huh. so he needed to get rested he goes to bed at eight o'clock uh -huh. and mom was supposed to go to church on sunday so i couldn't ask her to borrow the car understood so when you left at five where, where's mom at what she, was she doing she was at the house she was um cleaning um good mood said hi to him Said to be safe. Told me she loved me. She'd see me tomorrow. She, she saw Carrie too. Yeah. Okay. And of course. Does, does she know Carrie? She talked to him on oh, a regular she, basis and stuff. Oh like yes. That? She, yeah. They. They. Yeah. We've known each other for thirty years. And you and Carrie. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, he's been married. I was married and we didn't start dating until we've been best friends mm -hmm. but we didn't start dating until after my couple of years after my divorce um okay and it was a hard decision for us to come to because we didn't want to lose our friendship so and um but my dad knows him my sister knows him my mom knows him where's your dad live he lives on Rambler, uh, right next door to my sister. Okay. Um, so, Carrie comes to get you at five. You go up to his place, I'm mm -hmm. assuming. Mm -hmm. And does he live in a house or an apartment or what does he live in? He lives on five, five acres that has a double wide trailer. Okay. And do you know the address there? Um, not off the top of my head, it's on my phone. Has he lived there a long time? Uh, about six years. Okay. Um, he went up there because of his job, they need somebody in toward Gainesville, and um, so he went up there and he runs Gainesville now for him. Okay. So, Saturday night you leave at five, mm -hmm. and you leave your mother in good spirits. Yep, she said drive safe, told her I loved her. To have you talked to anybody? Tell me the first conversation you had about your mom since then. Uh, with my sister. And when was that? She called me, um, I guess, right after. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if mom called me first or if she called Judy first. I don't know. But um, Judy called me and asked if I had received a phone call from my mom with from mom, and I said yes. And she asked me what mom said to her, me, and I told her, and she said she'd been there, and she was already gone. Okay, so, back up. 
you got a phone call from your mom yeah tell me what was that what was that about she told me that she was going to be going with a woman named rose from church i've only met her once which was back in 2012. okay stop right there what's rose like how old is she um when i met her she had gray hair i would say in her 60s mm -hmm. um it was the end of service and i hate to say it let's but... go back to the description i'm sorry okay. um uh, was she a white person yes white um, have you heard her last name at all no um was she a thick or thin person um i she was probably about the same build as my mom and my mom is about 122 pounds so kind of medium there yeah maybe uh five six maybe five five okay um gray hair white or glasses um i really didn't pay that much attention where did you meet her at at church okay so you do frequent the church your mother goes to i only go every once in a while okay so you went one time and you met rose one time i went i it was at the end of the service i right, met that's her. what i meant yeah you, on one occasion you yes met rose. my mom said you know amy this is rose rose this is amy i said this is nice to meet you it was the end of the service i'm a smoker mm -hmm. i left i went to the car lit up a cigarette did you guys sit next to rose at the time no okay. where does your mom usually sit when you go to church her and i normally if I, when i go it's on the I would say, well, when I'm with her, you walk in and it's on the right side, probably fourth or fifth pew from the back. That's when I'm with her. When I'm not with her, I don't know where she sits. Okay. Right. I'm told by Ruth Avery, that who also attends the church and works with my mother at Mercury, that her and rose sits together all the time but i don't know that that's secondhand information i understand so you got this phone call from your mom and what'd she say that she was going to be going with rose um to help with the funeral they were going to california not uh, to colorado and that she would call as soon as she could and that she loved me and she was crying a little bit i took it as because she was going to miss me you know type thing um but it wasn't something that she had ever she had never mentioned it when i left she was cleaning and it's almost like when i left she started packing so she called you and you had already gone so you you're already on your way with um carrie carrie mm -hmm. um and she calls you on the phone mm -hmm. and how long after you left um we arrived at um about seven thirty-five, and mom called me about eight twenty eight twenty-five and she says i'm leaving to go to colorado with rose and what do you say i was more in shock and I hate to admit it that I didn't ask a last name. I didn't ask the vehicle. All I know, I'll, she said, you know, to help her with the funeral. And I kind of... Help her with the funeral? Uh, Rose's husband passed away. All right. I didn't know that. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Um, um, so back up. So she says, she gives you a reason why she's going with Rose. Mm -hmm. And what she said? she was going to help her with her funeral and that she was going to be gone a while and that she would call whenever she could but she was crying and told me she loved me like three times and i took it because she was going to miss me okay but i wasn't there so i i mean i don't know exactly what was going on mm -hmm. um she ever done anything like this before no the only time she ever goes anywhere is with my sister or to North Carolina, with, to her family. Mm -hmm. Now, my mother will do anything for a friend. So let's talk about more about the conversation, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, was that the entire conversation? Or was it just a few minutes? It was just a few minutes. And the last thing she said to me was she loves me. And I said, I love you. And she hung up the phone. The next call I got was from my sister. And how long after that was that? um not long it was probably 
8.30, 8.35. I guess when my sister got the phone call from what she said, um, she flew down to mom's house. With, she got there within two minutes and mom was gone. How long after the phone, after your phone call was that? Um, I, my sister called me probably 8.30, 8.35. Asked me if I heard from Right mom. after? Well, I, yeah, I guess. I mean, I mean, it was in minutes from your conversation is what I'm saying. Is that, well, uh, I just want to understand what you're saying. Okay, well, I got the phone call and then I would say between 8.30, 8.35. Um, mom called me between probably 8.20, 8.25. Okay. Mm -hmm. My sister called me within five minutes. Of your conversation with your mother? Yes. And she called and asked if I heard her from mom, and I told her yes. I told her what I said. Mm -hmm. She said she'd gone down there. She'd done 60 miles an hour down Ramblin. She made there in two minutes, knocked on the door. Mom was gone. So, and just bear with me. I'm just trying to understand. Um, and she basically told you the same thing she told me. She told me? No, she told Judy and me the same thing. I understand. Um, I'm not, it's just an opinion thing here. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know what your relationship is with your mother or your it's sister or anything good. like that. But, um, my if my mom... My mother's to, my world. Right. And she's how old? 79. She's 79. Very independent woman, from what I gather. Very independent, very strong, very smart. Mm -hmm. But when my if my mom were to call me and says I'm going to Colorado with Rose, is this unusual for you? It, because I'm stopping, I'm saying, whoa, 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 wait a minute, mom. What's going on? That's what I'm saying. It, it, it is, but my mother's also the type of person that would do anything for a friend. And she just hangs up the phone. She's, you say she's kind of crying and you're just, that's okay? It wasn't okay. I was trying to figure it out. I mean, did you try to call her back? Yeah. You did? Yeah. And... Did she call you from the house phone? Yes. Okay. And did you try to call her cell phone after that? I tried the house phone and I tried the cell phone. Okay. And no answer? No. And then your sister calls you within 20 minutes? No. She called me within just a couple, a few minutes. Five minutes? Yeah. And she says, Wants to know Mom has... She wanted to know if I received a phone call right. and Mom. she wanted to know what Mom told her. Mm -hmm. or told me and she said that mom told her the same thing that she jumped in her car and okay. went down there and knocked on the door mom I, didn't answer i understand so what happens next a bunch of scenarios went through my head i was i was thinking okay mom's doing something nice for a friend um you know it was just i was going back and forth i didn't sleep i just i was trying to figure out because it, it, it was unusual, but... Are you calling anybody? Are you doing... No, I was just, I was, in my mind, I'm just trying to... Were you worried? Or is she okay? That's what I'm saying. Well, I was, I was going back and forth. I didn't know whether to be worried. I didn't know whether to think, okay, she's just doing this because the woman's husband's passed away and she wants to help her because she's a friend. Sure. I mean, I, I, I didn't know, you know, and I didn't want to jump to worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. So, um, I sent my sister a text. Now, let me ask you this. If you were to call her cell phone, because I can tell you my mom, she's an older woman, of course, but she doesn't answer her cell phone. Does your mother answer her cell phone when you call it? If she doesn't have the ringer turned off, yes. Okay. But my mother didn't have these. Do you ones. normally get a hold of her on the cell phone when you try it? That's what I'm asking. Not always. No. No. Okay. Um, but I, she doesn't have her voicemail set up, so we couldn't leave a message. Okay. And none of us have heard from her. And if anybody was going to hear from her, it would have been Morgan. Who? Morgan, my nephew. 
Understood. Because that's her her world. So what happens then? So you're you're kind of you're not I, sleeping much and you're wondering and all that kind of stuff. And what happens today? I text my sister and told her that I would you know that I was going to be back and that you know if she heard anything to call me because I fully expected my mom to get hold of Judy or Morgan at least Morgan mm -hmm. before me and if she heard anything to call me immediately mm -hmm. and I told her you know that I would be back and she said okay and um I called her today mm -hmm. and verified you know what time I would be back and she said okay call me when you're within you know 10 15 minutes and mm -hmm. I said okay and I got there before she did but um, we both went in there and we looked through you know the house it was immaculate is that normal for my mother yes normal yes Okay, so She's nothing, a clean freak. Nothing's abnormal. Okay, go ahead. Nothing was disturbed. Didn't look like anything was missing. I mean, everything was... Was it locked? The entire house was locked up. As a matter of fact, the front screen, it has a lock on it. It was locked. I had to go through the gate and through the back door mm -hmm. to get in. Say that again? The, there's a screen on the front door. Uh -huh. It has a lock. Oh, okay. It was locked, so I had to go around the side to the screen or to the gate. But she get out through the garage? What's going on there? I don't know how she she would have had to have gone out the garage or she would have had to have gone out the gate. That's the only other way because you can't lock that screen from the outside. Right. Yeah. It has to be locked from the inside. Okay. And that screen does stay locked unless one of us is going to be gone. So you go around to the... I go through the gate and around the back and go through the back door to get in. With a key? Yeah. I don't I, I don't know your home, I'm sorry. Yes, with the key. Okay. And uh, so you go inside and what do you see? You know, the house is immaculate, you said that, and what else? That was it. There was, I mean, I looked around and clothes were gone. What kind of clothes were gone? All her clothes. All her clothes are gone? Mm-hmm. And um, there was all the dishes were done. The desk was completely. I mean, it was. It, it's her. Where was uh, Terry? Well, he just dropped me off. He just dropped you off after your mom's missing. Well, he didn't think she was missing. He thought she was with a friend. He didn't put much stock into it. He didn't come in. No. Is that normal? Yeah. So go on. Um, when mom, before she goes on a trip, she cleans everything. She puts everything into its proper place. Nothing is, you know, I mean, she just, she makes it look like, I mean, the desks are cleared. You know, there's no dishes. Everything is put away. Everything is washed. Everything's mopped, vacuumed. I mean, you know, dusted. And it's exactly what she would do for I mean, even when I was, she went to my cousin's graduation in June to North Carolina. I was there and she still did the exact same thing. And that's what it looked like. Let me ask you this. Um, when you go to Gainesville, how do you go? Turnpike 75, alternate 27. Does Carrie have a sun pass? Yeah. Does your mom? Yeah. And so do I. You have one too? You have a car? No. But you have a sun pass? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Where do you keep your sun pass? In my purse. When I use my mother's car, if I drive it to, get, if I drive it to see Carrie, I use my sun pass instead of hers. And then you leave your mom's at home? Yes. Because I think they would both go off. No, I leave hers with her. Oh, I gotcha. Because I don't want mom to have to, yeah. No, that's perfectly responsible I yeah. agree with that and I you know pay half the electric half the dish 
The one thing my mother did ask me is if I would take care of the electric dish and the phone. I normally don't pay her anything for the phone because I don't really use the house phone. Right. That's the only amount. But and I told her that was no problem because I can afford to do it. Okay. So let's get back on track. I'm sorry I got off track. Then. That's okay. Um so you get home and, 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 and then your sister's already, you come out, uh, your sister's, you got home before your sister, you said. Yeah, I opened the front door, she was there, she came in. And you, are you guys walking around, what are you doing? You're investigating the situation here. We're obviously. looking all around the house. Are you guys upset? Are you, what's going on? We're, we're not upset, we're kind of looking around trying to figure out what the heck's going on. What the heck's going on, right? Yeah. And what do you guys, what's we, your conclusion? We don't see anything out of place. Except for... No clothes and... Her stuff's missing. No vitamins. Where's her vitamins kept? Normally she keeps... Because of my medic... I, I, I do take medication my mother does not. Mm -hmm. She doesn't believe in. But my medication comes in little bottles and bigger bottles. Those bottles I give to her. She normally takes my name off of them. And she uses those. And she has vitamins for breakfast lunch dinner mm -hmm. she does it all three but in this case all of that was there and the large all of her big vitamin bottles gone from the cabinet there's a in the kitchen when you walk into the kitchen the very first cabinet is where she kept all of her vitamins and all that stuff and that's wins glasses and then and, and plates but <laughs> All of her everything all of the little bottles were empty and all of, all of the other vitamins Excuse me. the larger bottles that she normally keeps at the house gone what about her toiletries gone and where are they kept obviously near the toilet but are in they bathroom. kept in on the counter in the closet where are they kept the toiletries are some of them are on the back of the toilet some of them are in the um, medicine cabinet some of them are on the counter and back on the sink and some of them are in the shower now what's kept on our counter normally on the sink in the yeah, sink, in the sink. A toothbrush her pick for her um dentures that type of thing mm -hmm. where she keeps it where does she keep her dentures at she had a uh blue case that she kept in the medicine cabinet except for when her dentures were in it then it was on the cap it was on the cabinet and they're missing gone full set she had uppers and she had a um bridge in the on the bottom and did she have any spares or anything no, no she did not Right. Has she ever traveled before? Mom? Yeah. Yeah. Where'd but she go? North Carolina, Arizona, because she has a sister there. What suitcases does she normally use? Um, she has a silver one that, but her and my sister bought that one, but I think that was recent. Um, I think that's the one she took in June to the graduation because she wasn't going to be there. Silver right suitcase? Mm hmm. It's like a carry on. Um, she has a black one, and um, what material are we talking? A hard cover case or a soft cover case? The silver one is one of those new hard ones, but it's you know the like carry on, mm -hmm. or well not carry on, but the um, overhead one is small enough to be overhead, but it's got the it's the hard. Right. The black one is kind of like a the vinyl. Where does she keep that stuff? In the garage. Where in the garage? Um, normally on the shelves. Uh, they're in there. I don't know. Your oh, I'm sorry. If when you walk into the garage, there is the whole whole one wall on the long wall is all shelves. So it's. On she the shelf. yeah. She keeps them on the shelves. Okay. And she has another one um, that I saw there. Um, Did you look for these pieces of luggage to see if she used them or not? I, Judy and I both looked out in the garage to for them. She looked for the silver one. I looked for the black one. And there was also a um, blue 
like kind of duffel bag, but you could, it has a roll, it has wheels. Um, it wasn't there. It wasn't there. It's normally next to the silver one. In the, the garage. Yeah, and those two were gone. They were gone. Mm -hmm. I can tell you I have a couple of concerns. Okay. Let's hear. One, the ladder is never in the garage. It is always in the shed. The shed, okay. There is never anything in the attic because my mother is afraid that something will happen because of the heat. She okay. never would put anything in the attic. Mm -hmm. And there is absolutely no way that she would put the ladder in the garage. Okay, what's your other concerns besides the ladder? The fact that that stuff was in the attic. What stuff? Well, I saw him bring down three suitcases. Hmm. Did you recognize them? Mm -hmm. What and what suitcases were they? The silver hard case, the duffel, and the black one. So you recognize the suitcases as the ones she usually uses? Yes. I saw them in the drive when they put them in the driveway. I saw them. Yeah. And I called Judy over. And Judy recognized the silver one also. Called Judy over verbally. She was already there. But yeah, we were all out in the street, and I called Judy. Mm -hmm. She recognized something. <sighs> and my mother would not store clothes in the closet. She would give them to Goodwill. So what is your theory, Amy? Mm -hmm. Do you have a theory of what's going on here today? I do. Okay. But I really don't want my mind to go there. Is it going to help me or hurt me? I knew my mother would not put her clothes up in the attic. Okay. I know that she would not contact Morgan. Okay. And I know there's a bad reason. What could that be? I don't know if she was taken. I, I, I don't know. For what reason would she be taken? I, I don't know. That doesn't sound like logical, not that it couldn't happen, but it's not logical. I mean, unless there was some kind of financial no. thing going on. No. I don't know why anybody would take a 79-year-old woman. Not that it hasn't happened, it has, but it, it's very rare and it's not really logical. I know that's just where my mind goes. I think it, something is not good, something's not right, Something is something's bad. I agree with that. Something is wrong here. Yes. I don't know what, but my mind is... Unfortunately, I've been up for so long, it's... My mind is going to dark places. And I don't want it to. Okay. I would love to hear from my mother. I would love to hear from your mom, too. Believe me. <laughs> that's, that's the best case scenario. I would love... I mean, even if... Morgan heard from her. Somebody. When did uh, when did Carrie call you on Saturday to pick you up? We went back and forth. I don't know. Were you texting? Were you calling? What was we going on call, there? We were calling, and but I don't know. Was this planned or was it just a spur of the moment thing? Kind of a spur of the moment thing. We had the time and we just decided to. What time was that? Approximately morning afternoon early afternoon okay so he says i'm coming down to get you right yeah um 
Or he said, well, he said, I'd like to come down to get you. What do you think? Do you have any plans? And I said, no. Do you ever um, consider driving your mom's car up there? Well, yeah, but she was going to church on Sunday, so I wasn't going to ask her. You didn't ask her? No, because I knew she was going to church. Okay, and you always ask her before you use the car? Yes. Okay. Do you have keys to the car besides her keys? Or do you have to borrow keys? Normally, she gave me the spare key, mm -hmm. but whenever I got to the house, the spare key was on the kitchen counter. Okay. Say that again. When I got to the house today, mm -hmm. the spare key was on the kitchen counter. I don't know where her house keys are. I don't know where the other key is. So normally, you would have to ask for the key? I would ask to borrow the car, and she would put the spare key on the kitchen counter, and I'd go out the door. But I never took her car without asking. And since she was going to church today, I didn't even ask. And Perry was more than he was more than willing, more to, come, willing to come. Yeah, because he knew she was going to church. Sure. So it wasn't. I mean, that wasn't even something that either one of us even thought about doing. All right. Well. Let's just say, for instance, and I don't want to go to the dark place, but let's say something bad happened. What, what do you think happened? I don't know. Do you have any enemies? No. My any mother, neighbors that you're worried about? Any... The only neighbor that gives me the heebie-jeebies is the one right next door, but I don't... Obviously, he wouldn't take her clothes and her belongings and put them up in the attic. That doesn't make sense, right? I don't know him. I just know that he gives me the heebie-jeebies. I've never met him. I don't even know his name. What When you saw those items come out of the attic and you recognized them... Well, what, I saw them in the driveway. Well, let's just... Okay, but you said they came down. Well, I knew they were going up into the attic and when they came down, they came out into the driveway with them. So we're assuming they came from the attic? Because that's what I got from you. I haven't been to your house. Well, they took the ladder, went up in the attic, and... You, went, s you told me before you saw them come down with these cases. Yes, they so went I'm up assuming the, they came down with, from the attic. Yes. Did you see them come down from the attic with these cases? Yeah. Okay. So, when you saw the cases come down from the attic, mm -hmm. what was your first... You recognized these as the cases that your mother normally uses when she travels. Am I right or wrong? You're right. So what's your first response? What's your first thinking? What are, what's going on in your head when you see this stuff? I screamed my sister's name and I said, these are mom's suitcases and I went to the ground crying. Why? Because I knew that wasn't good. I thought she had packed them with them being in the attic. I know she didn't. That's not good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's bizarre. It's weird. I gotta tell you. I can't think of a logical reason why those cases would be in the attic. I don't know. I just know it's not good. My mom gets along with everybody. She's friendly, she's sweet, she's Christian. There isn't anything she wouldn't do for a friend. I gotta find out who this Rose person is. It's Pastor doesn't know Rose? The Judy and has contacted the pastor. He doesn't know Rose. My brother-in-law knows the treasurer. They don't. I spoke to Ruth Avery, who goes to the church and works with mom. She says that mom sits with Rose all the time, but... I... When your mom called you, Amy, I'm sorry to interrupt you, and she said she sounds like she's crying. She sounds upset. Mm -hmm. Do you ask her what's wrong? 
I didn't ask her because she was she was crying. It wasn't like she was bawling. It was like she was just she was crying and saying I love you. I took it as she was just gonna miss me. Mm -hmm. I I wasn't going to a place where something was wrong. I didn't go there. Okay. For some reason. It's, it's been there. I mean, I I don't know why. I mean, I'm smart enough. I should have asked for you know last name car but like I said my mom was supposed to leave me uh, she said she was going to leave well two things she told me she was going to leave me a um, address and phone number and she said she was also going to call Joy which her sister there was no note for address or phone number and she did not contact Joy you said you had your own sun pass. Did you have it with you when you went with Carrie up to mm -hmm. Gainesville? No. Where do you keep the sun pass? Then? It was at my, it was at the house. In your room. Mm hmm. Joe, um. I'm sorry, I didn't okay. read. You know. No, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. No, I, no. I, when you, right, that's what we do. No, no, when, no, I, no I know, but when I always look at the person sure. who's asking questions. I do so, the same thing. Yeah. Uh, what kind of um, cell phone company do you have? What company is that? Cell phone company? Boost. Boost Mobile. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and you said um, she couldn't get to your cell phone, right? Your mom called you the phone calls when she was crying. So yeah, that she was my, yeah, she has to call myself on the only really the only okay. phone I use. And, and what phone was that uh, that she called you from? She oh. called me from the house phone. From the house phone? Mm -hmm. Okay, what number is that, the house phone? 407 Okay. 892-6714. And what company is that? Uh, CenturyLink. CenturyLink? Yeah. Judy said she called her from the house phone too. Okay. Um. What were you exactly when you received that phone call? I, were, were you guys still driving? No, uh, I would, yes, we, were, no. we were there already at his place and we were watching. We, we walked in the door and started moving. Okay. So you're already in, in the house, Carrie's mm -hmm. house? Mm -hmm. Okay. Has mom ever helped a friend like this? Like. She has to like pack up and just leave. Like well, the, no, not just pack up and leave, but yes, she has helped a friend like this. Um, Quinn. Um, um. Oh my God, Ellen Quinn. I, I'm sorry, I I've been up for so long, my mind is starting to turn too much. Ellen Quinn. Um, mom dropped everything in order to help her, but Ellen lives here, so. Um, but yeah, she did everything for Ellen. She took her to a doctor, she stayed with her, she, you know, she did everything for her. Now but you, uh, she, she lived here and she lived, in, lived off in Narcusi. Um, when you got back home, um, how did you get home? Carrie dropped me off. Carrie dropped you off. Mm -hmm. did, he, did he drop you off around the corner or no, around no, the house? No, in the driveway. Driveway? Yeah. But he doesn't ever come in. No? No. And you drove in the same car? Yeah, black Mustang. And what route you guys took back home? Same one? Alternate 27, 75 to the Turnpike. Exit then, at Kissimmee Park Road. Okay. Or Kissimmee Park Exit, whatever it's called. Don't could you create Pine Tree, Rambler, mm -hmm. Lake Shore. Okay. Um, how would you describe your mom's uh, physical? Your her physical appearance. She she my got mother, difficult walking, oh, standing up. God uh, no. My mother gets up every morning. She walks for thirty five minutes on the back porch. Yeah, I mean she just goes around and around, but she walks for thirty five minutes. She's very strong. Um, Judy, uh, Mark, and Maury come down and mow the grass, and Mom appreciates it, but she would prefer to do it because she likes to exercise. Um, 
my mother could run circles around all of us. I mean, she's just, she's a very strong woman. Mentally, physically, she is just, you, you would not think she was 79 years old. Did you get any, any medication other than the vitamins? No, she refuses to take medication because she says it does more harm to her body than vitamins. No, I get it back. Two months ago, she got sick, um, and for about three weeks, and I did not leave her side except for to go to Winn Dixie to get something that somebody said she might need. The doctor did give her anti-nauseous pills because she was having problems keeping things down, and so she did take that, and that that worked. But she only took that until she started feeling better, and I, she did had didn't have energy. She wouldn't eat. She didn't like, you know, I mean, it was difficult to get her to drink, to keep her hydrated. But her urine test came back fine. Her blood test came back fine. Her, you know, blood ox was fine. Heart rate was fine. Blood pressure was fine. And they all said, all the tests said everything was fine. Something was wrong. I knew there was something wrong because I know my mother. My mother had more energy than anybody I know. She can run me into the ground doing things. That's good. Mm -hmm. it, I, I'm impressed by her. She, I, I, if I was 79 years old, when I'm 79 years old, I, I would pray to God that I would be like her. I know I'm not going to be, but I, I really wish I was. Let's talk about that for a minute. Until you're done. Okay. Two more. Come, come on, of course, the other one. Uh, but you, you go away. Um, any dependency issues for you? Do you have any dependency issues? You mean like drugs? Mm -hmm. Um, back in 2010, yes. How about now? No. I have an absolutely wonderful doctor now and she really saved me. Good. That's great to hear. Yeah. It's a good success story. And when I moved to Ohio, she's going to give me recommendations for colleagues that are exactly like her. Her theory Does Carrie going to Ohio too, or just you? Carrie's going to Ohio with me, but not at the same time. But you know, she her th her theory is prescriptions last. Mm -hmm. She taught me yoga. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. It's great thing. Yeah, hers is exercise, diet, vitamins, a prescription, very less issue, and she'll come in with you with, you know, three or four different medications, goes over, and the paperwork goes over everything with you before she even thinks about writing a script. Yeah. So, she's going to recommend a colleague just like her for me. Very good. And the only prescriptions I take is the gabapentin, and I take... Um, Antenol, which is for my heart. Um, I take a blood pressure medication. Me too. And I take um, a, a fluorazepam, which goes with gabapentin for my fibromyalgia. Because I have fibromyalgia. So, and my dependency back in 2010 was with Alarica. Mm -hmm. And it was found out that my doctor was prescribing me three times what the pharmaceutical company recommended. It's a shame, right? Well, when I went to her, I talked to her, and because of the uh, withdrawal possibilities, she switched me over to gabapentin. I started off at 600 milligrams, and then I made the decision, and I talked to her about it, to start lowering the dosage. I went down to 400, down to 300. We did try 200, didn't work, mm -hmm. So we, we, but we've stayed at 300, and I was proud of myself for being able to do it, and she was proud of me for being able to do it. I went from 107 pounds down to 119. Good. So. Good for you. I got it under control and I'm a lot better. I don't drink alcohol. Good. So. I just, I'm trying to use, I'm just trying to get to know your mom a little bit more. Oh, sure. Her physical, what she's capable of doing mm -hmm. physically. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she's, um, Suki that she normally uses to travel. Well, she has any problems carrying those bags, put them in the car, unload them from the car. Incapable of going up in the attic and put them in the attic. Will she have any problems with that? 
I can't answer that because I've never seen her try to. Okay. I don't think I've ever actually ever seen her go in the attic. Personally. Have I, you ever been in the attic? I actually have gone up in the attic one time because of the dish guy and I went up there because he was having a difficulty or something and I, I went up there to see what was going on. Because he was up there? Mm-hmm. I didn't get a good vibe from him and with my mom being there I was being protected. So he was already in the attic when you went up there? Mm-hmm. So did he have his own ladder or what? Yes. And he used his ladder to get up there? Mm-hmm. Hey, what's Kara's number? His phone number? 407 467 8684. Oh, that's the sixth person I've got. I'm giving it to you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so you know what kind of company he got? What kind of cell phone company he got? No, I don't. No. no. Um, you mentioned before to my partner that. Um, When your mom called you, you should have asked her for where you're going and stuff like that. But then you added that she was supposed to leave you an address, phone number, or something. She was. She said she was going to leave me an address and a phone number of where she was going to be. Okay. So whenever I got home, it would be there. But then you then you felt like it was your job or your responsibility. To ask her for that. Well, what yeah. What do you mean by that? Because she would ask me for it. It was just the way, you know, it's always been when we were growing up. You know, if we were going somewhere, she would want to know the phone number or address, you know, something. So it kind of transferred over to me. Okay. I mean, mom's talking about Colorado. When I <laughs> go into Ohio, she said she wouldn't visit me because Ohio gets too cold. She told Judy she wouldn't get to she wouldn't visit her in Michigan because it gets too cold. Colorado is three times colder than either one of those states. So you know, it just I just felt like I wanted to know the, but and I I cannot answer you, honest to God, I cannot answer you why I didn't think about it until after I hung up to ask about a last thing. I don't, I have absolutely no idea why. I don't so you, know. So you thought about that after you hang up, but you didn't call her back? I called, but I didn't get an answer. And right after that, G called me and said she just banged on the door and mom was gone. Who else got access to the house? Like, got keys to the house? Um, it was me and mom, and then I gave Judy a key today. Because she said she didn't have a key. I thought she did. But she said she didn't, so I found her a key. And I gave it to her today. And that one key opens every door in the house. In your phone, we'll be able to see in the history the the actual phone call, right? The history. Well, the phone when call I history. when I looked at it, mm -hmm. um, I was trying to show it to um, Detective Riddle. Thank you. Um, and I had four calls that were missing. There was an um, an unknown name call it came in that only lasted like a minute and 30 seconds nothing was said um when my mom called it's gone um it's gone it's not my log that's weird it, i know um and there's two others but my phone's been acting funny if i go to press the green button to call kind of funny you go i got boost it's a galaxy um S3 or yeah S3 I think is what it's called um, if I hit that green button or even the text button sometimes it'll go over to the it goes to the web or it goes to the Play Store mm -hmm. or I'll go back to look at my log and to get something and it's not there yeah. and I don't I don't I don't know why I honestly I, I can't answer you I don't know enough about cell phones. Me either. So, I mean, I know that it going to the web or the place, the Play Store, it shouldn't be doing that if I'm hitting to make a phone call or a text or, 
you know. Yeah, it's not an issue. We can get those records. That's fine. Okay. I mean, I got my voucher. Y'all got my phone, so. Yeah, we're good. Hey, uh, due to the fact that um, your phone is acting up, we want to get the most accurate information out of the phone. Uh, I understand that from Boost, you could go online and see your account history, phone calls, incoming, outgoing, and stuff like that. Do you do, do you have that set up? Do you have the, I never the, done, the pin? I've I never done that. No. Do you have a pin, like, to log in? Yeah, 4622. Four six two 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 two. Yeah. Okay. What's that stand for? G O A A. Oh. Goa. Okay. Not many people would. I mean, I started working for them when I was eighteen. I was there for nineteen and a half years. So. Gotcha. Four six two two seemed logical. It was easy for me for me to remember, and nobody would think about that. Sure. <laughs> Hey, um, I don't know if I was, my mom was somewhere else, but um, what did your mom thought about Carrie? Like, did she know him? Did she get along with him? Did she, yeah, she had a conversation? How oh, long yeah. did she know him? Um, she's known him as long as I have. Um, well, I get back. She's probably known him 20 years. And she met him through who? Me. Um, I met him when I was 13. He was 19, but he was married to my best friend's sister and we were just friends that's all you know um and i was there when both of his sons were born they called me and amy you know i was like a sister to him <laughs> for a long time um then i was working at the aviation authority he started working at delta um his first ex-wife also she worked for host at the time it was at the airport um and she went to work for the sheriff's department and got engaged to somebody at the sheriff's department while she was still married to Carrie. Oh boy. Yeah. Um, so, and got pregnant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really bad. Um, but they got divorced and we started going to a place called Rodeo that was in Orlando at the bar. A long time ago. A very long time ago but we had our own little area and a guy that we went to school with was the head bartender and we walked we literally had our cars parked walked in the side door we did not stand in line and we had our own area reserved because we were bringing in all the airport people but uh -huh. there was only a certain group allowed with us before we get to the bar Mike had everything already on the bar for us I mean they loved us wow. Um, and we went there, we were there six nights a week, and over time, it, he, I started looking at him different, he started looking at me different, but we really didn't get to where we were dating, we were just kind of hooking up. Mm -hmm. And then his original love of his life returned, and, um they ended up getting married and i actually was a witness even though i was cussing under my breath the entire time but i it was what carrie wanted he was happy so i did it and i got married and while i was married he got divorced and then after i got divorced he was there for me and we just we waited he waited we well we talked back and forth we spent time to eat together but it was a couple of years later and before we even started talking about the subject. Where's Carrie think your mom's at? He thinks she he's on her way to Colorado. Yeah? Yeah. Do you think that? No. Not with what I saw brought out of the attic. That's weird. I mean, how would she go to Colorado with no clothes? Yeah. It takes clothes to go to Colorado. Yes, it does. It's a weird one. I we can figure it out. So do I. Has Carrie been to the house? Yeah. 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 But not lately. Not lately. Because he doesn't come in, he just drops you off. Yeah, and it's, well, it's in that and, um, well, it's, Probably about a year, only because we're normally in a hurry or. What's the hurry? T 
traffic, wanting to get back. It, I mean, two and a half hours there, and then spending as much time as you can. You ever drive your mom's car up there? Oh yeah, yeah. That's the last time you've done that. Oh boy, um, September. I see. Uh, July, August, maybe August. Okay. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Well, when's the last time you drove your mom's car? Today. Today? Mm -hmm. When, 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 what time was that? Um, it was a little bit after Carrie dropped me off. Um, I had to run in town and then I was back by 11.15, called my sister. What you running in town for? To swap out cigarettes, they gave me menthols instead of regular. So I just I swapped them out, and they're there. At the, they're at the house in my on my dresser. Just after you found out your mom's gone. Well, I mean, when I got there, everything looked normal. So I mean, just I, before or after your sister got there. I got back, and then my sister got there. So you got home. Your mom's not there. I the day before, she's crying on the phone, saying she's going to Colorado with Rose. And you get home, and the first thing you do is go swap out cigarettes. Well, I just grabbed, I mean, I wasn't thinking anything was wrong at the time. I just grabbed the key, ran, and... There's nothing wrong with that, Amy? There's something wrong there. Your mom's crying, so she has to go My to Colorado mom, with Rose. It well, it's not crazy. that she was crying that she was having to go to Colorado with Rose. She was kind of just, I mean, it wasn't bawling. It was just a little bit of crying of, I love you, kind of like, I was going, I'm going to miss you. And my mother did that all the time. She does that all the time. Yeah. Yeah, but she doesn't leave the state all the time. No, but... Just, it, I, and I'm not trying to offend you. You just... You kind of jump in my shoes for a minute here. It's just kind of weird. I mean, I, I kind of be. I, everybody's family's different. I understand that. I just, I think I'd be freaking out a little bit more. And, 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 and again, I no, no offense. I just. I, I, know, I and I understand that y'all y'all have a job to do. That's not even a job. It's personal feeling. Okay. Life. Well, I mean, I didn't want to freak I honestly was trying not to go to anything bad or freaking out in till I saw what came out of that attic and then that's when I freaked out yeah, we're gonna take a little break do you uh, have to use the restroom or anything yeah we'll be right hey one more question what store do you want to, to get to I met um, uh, Tasha at Westgate Tasha, that's any other store? No, she's a friend that works in Orlando and she does cigarettes like Siggy's. Okay. I don't smoke uh, Oh, okay. Well, there's, there's, it's Siggy's um, and it's all it's pure tobacco and it's just you, you roll them and um, you pay $30 for 200 which is equivalent to a carton. And she lives in the area, so we just met at Westgate and we swapped them out. Okay. And then I just went straight back to the house, which is like 10, 12 minutes. Okay. okay. All right, we're going to get some things together. We'll be back shortly. We're going to go off tape. It's 3 a.m.
Hey, hey, it's almost done. I thought he, he forgot to do one more, one more thing. I to do one more thing, but since we're waiting, I just want to go over a uh, couple more things that we talked about yesterday. Remember yesterday, you know, we talked a lot about uh, about that stuff. Okay, so before we get started, we're gonna record this. Okay, so today's day is the. September 21st, 2015, time is 3.23 p.m. So get out of the Sheriff's Office, Osceola County. Detective Joel Gavar, Detective Brett Roller, and can you please state your full name, Amy, please? Amy Grace Day. Okay. Um, again, thank you so much for waiting for us for the, for the phone thing. Um, we're, uh, as you can see, we're conducting a full full-blown investigation because we don't know what happened so we just want to cover every angle and make sure that we got all the steps covered okay and um, and and due to that I just gonna read some stuff to you some formalities okay this again just it's a full-blown investigation so um, I just want to get this out of the way okay um, you have the right to remain silent you understand that yes okay if you need to speak up since you're recording, okay? Yes. Anything you say may be used against you in court law, you understand? Yes. Okay. And so you're entitled to talk to a lawyer before and during questioning. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. If you cannot afford a lawyer and want one, one will be provided before and during questioning without charge. You understand that? Yes. Okay. Amy, will you be so kind? This is the, the part that I read to you. Print your name here. Grace or 
change to redo it. What are you put? Let's see. I'm not used to writing gray, so. Okay, that's fine. Okay, is um initial here. These are the stuff that I read to you. You said that you understood. And then I need for you to sign down here, saying that you understand. Now we're going to sign this here, myself. Then since this is the only part that we are that we are using, I'm going to cross out the rest of it. Okay. All right. You just want to go over real quick, just the highlights of your routine on, on the weekend. Um, you, you you stated. Let's start with Friday. Let's go back one day. I know we started on um, the other days on Saturday, starting back on Friday. Friday was your routine that day? Um, I was packing, I was um, getting clothes ready for Goodwill. Mom and I both were. Um, okay. We were. Um, I'm just laughing and joking. Mm -hmm. And. Um, Pack the pantry with stuff that I eat that she doesn't because she's a vegetarian. Um, going over just you know different things. I mean, it was just a, a normal day. Just a normal day. Yeah. Does your mom has like a regular routine? Like she does the same thing every day, or no. like the same routine, or just no, 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 different things, different days. I mean, you know, she goes to Walmart different days. She goes to Wendy's different, different days. She goes. The only thing that's routine is um, in the morning time, she walks every morning um, on the back porch, mm -hmm. um, takes her grandson to school, uh, will take lunch to him at lunchtime, um, and then sometimes she'll go down there and then but morning, the, the morning walk, taking him to school, and sometimes going and taking him lunch, I mean, taking lunch out to him. That's pretty much the routine. Okay. Now, um, normally she will, um, uh, but it's different days. But after she could goes takes Morgan drives to school and on her way back, she may stop at Walmart. But yeah, I mean, she tells me, but it's on different days. Gotcha. So you know. Sorry about that. And then okay, and then Friday it, it, was that the day that you already have planned to go out of town with with your boy with your boyfriend on. Um, or when, when, when did that those plans came up? That didn't come up until Saturday. Saturday? Yeah. Okay. And who reached out to you? you did Kerry reach out to you or you reached out to Kerry? He what called me. I missed his call. I called back. He um, he, didn't miss, he missed my call. Um, called back and then I called him back. I mean, we just went back and forth. Now, around what time those, those calls started? Um, I think the first one was like at 7.50, 8 o'clock in the morning because he gets up early. Okay. And then that's the reason I missed his call because I didn't hear my phone ring. Um, when I called back, I don't know what he was doing, but he didn't answer the phone. Then when he called me back, um, we talked for a little bit and then I called him back. And that's when, um, after that, we were like, well, you know, what are you doing? What are you doing? And we wanted to, we kind of decided what we were trying to see if we had anything, if anything was going on. I asked mom if she had anything going on, if she needed me for anything. And she said, no, she was going to be going to church, you know. And I said, okay, I called back and I said, no, I don't have anything. And he goes, okay, I'll come get you. I said, okay. And then um, on Saturday, your mom went out the whole day? No. Did she step out of the house? No, she cleaned on Saturday. Okay. So she never got in the car, left, or anything like that, went outside or well, she went, went outside to... She went outside when Morgan and Mark came down to mow the grass. Oh, okay. All right. But, I mean, other than that, she was inside cleaning. And she went outside, out back, you know, for a little bit and read the Bible. She does that. Um, the only other, the other routine she has is every day between 1.30 and 2.00. During the week, she does talk to her sister Joy, 
and then my sister calls her on her way home between four and five, whichever, whatever time my sister gets off work, until my sister gets home. That is during the week. Those are two things that my mother does. That those part of her routine. But um, on Saturday, I'm I go outside, but I you know Mark was there only because he's the one who runs big uh, zero turn. Um, I'm Morgan. I'm sure was there. Um, she went out. They mowed and left. She came in. She continued cleaning. You went out. Other than leaving with Carrie, that you went out. Don't, when day, I went, you stepped out of the house like, to go somewhere, run some errands, anything like that? No, when I stepped out, it was at 5 o'clock on Saturday. And that was to, that's when you left? Carry, yeah. Care? yeah. The okay. only other time I was outside was when I, I go out back to smoke because my mother's allergic to smoke. But yeah. I always go out back. And when Carrie got to the house, did he want to sell the house or no. did he remain outside? Yeah, he just stayed outside. I, I went outside and got in his car, but that's not unusual. No, oh, okay. Just like when he dropped me off, I got out of the car and, you know, went inside and or went through the gate and went through the back door, but that's not unusual either, so. How long does it take to get up there by the Gainesville area where he lives? I forgot the name. Ch Chiflin or? Chiflin. Um, without traffic, two hours. About two hours? Yeah. With traffic, two hours, 15 minutes, two hours, 30 minutes. And that's why I take the turn by seventy-five. Turn by seventy-five to alternate twenty-seven. And that's the route that you guys took, right? Mm -hmm. So trade route we went. And the same route you guys took back mm -hmm. on Sunday. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, on Sunday, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I'm losing track of days. Okay, it's okay. So um, let's go back to Saturday evening or Saturday night. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you heard from your mom? Um, between eight twenty, eight twenty-five. That's when you received that phone call, where she was a little bit, um, you said she was crying. She wasn't bawling, she was just kind of a, a more of a, it was like a whimper, you know, type, you know, and, you know, she told me, she told me she loved me, um, and that she would call me as soon as she got a chance. I took it as she was, you know, she was going to miss me, or, you know, I mean, I didn't read too much into it. I may mean, should have, but I didn't. You know, my mind was probably five, you know, somewhere else, but I, I didn't read much into it. My mom, when she says she loves you, you know, sometimes she cries. When she leaves to go to North Carolina, before she leaves, she tells you she loves you, she'll cry. So, I mean, I didn't really read that much into it. And during that phone call, did she give you a timeline when she was supposed to be back or how long she was going to be gone? She didn't really give me a timeline. Um, my understanding is she gave my sister a timeline. And then after you finished the phone call with your mom, did you and your sister talk? Did yeah, my sister called me. Apparently, after she went down to mom's house, banged on the door, she didn't answer. Judy called me, asked me if I had heard from mom. I told her yes. She asked me what she said, and I told her. And Judy told me she told her the same thing, and that, but that she had said she was going to be gone for six months, and that there was no way that mom would miss Christmas with her grandson. And I said, if you, you know, hear anything, call me. And I started sending my sister texts, you know, if you hear something, call me, you know, anything happens. And all she would respond with was with the letter K. You know, I told her, you know. That was Judy, right? Yeah. I sent her a text saying, you know, I'll be back on Sunday. And she responded with, okay, or she's going with K. But I, you know, I was sending texts. I think the last text I sent her may have been after 10 o'clock. So how far, like how many minutes, just approximately, that's not to be exactly, and it's kind of hard to go back and quote, except minute, how, how, like how many Between minutes the, after the phone call, with you got with your mom, mom and ended, and then when you receive a phone call from Judy? 15, 20 minutes, maybe. And how many phone calls? How many times you actually you guys had a actually conversation on the phone? Me and After, Judy. Yeah. Um, that night. That night. Yeah. One. And then the rest of the communication was text. via text. Mm -hmm. Okay. From your phone between your phone and her phone. Mm -hmm. Okay. And your phone. You're the only person that uses that phone, right? Nobody else uses that phone. Not that I mean. I've let other people use it, but majority of the time I'm the only one that uses it. 
Okay. I mean, you know, my mom's used it. Okay. Uh, when was the last text that you sent to Judy and you received from Judy on Saturday, Saturday night? I want to say, the, I, I don't remember exactly, but I want to say it was probably at 10, okay. maybe a little after. And the last text you received from Judy was like, okay, or what, 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 what is that? The letter K. The letter K. That's all I ever got back from her was K. Okay. Let's move forward to um, Sunday. Um, did you hear from Judy or did you contact Judy or? I contacted Judy, told her I was on the way back. Around what time was that? Um, nine. I, get, I, I believe about nine. She told me to call her and let her know when I was um, 15 minutes out. Okay. I said, okay. Um, I got there uh, and I called her. And Around her. what time? Around what time was that? That you got to? 11. And that's what the house, right? You said? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, around what time you guys left um, Chief, Chief, Chief Land? Yeah, about or, nine. About nine? Yeah, maybe a little before. Did you guys stop anywhere else? Mm -hmm. And you came back with Kerry, right? Mm -hmm. And his car and his black Mustang? Mm -hmm. Okay. And when I got to the house, um, I knew I had to meet Tasha, so I just ran met her on my way back. I called Judy, let her know that I was, you know, a few minutes out, got there, and then opened the door and Judy was in the driveway. Okay. And she came in the house. And you were driving? Mom's car. Okay. What kind of car is that again? It's a silver Toyota Corolla. Okay. So you met uh, your friend Tasha. Mm -hmm. I know we talked about this one time about some cigarettes, right? Mm -hmm. You were swapping out some cigarettes? Yeah, she gave me mint on my mistake. Okay. So. And you said, where was it? Where you that guys was at? Westgate. Okay. And it took me maybe 10 minutes to get back to the house. Okay. So from the time you left to go meet Tasha, mm -hmm. you met Tasha and you came back, it's about 10 minutes, you said? Well, I, I left about 11, got there, met her, and maybe I got to the house maybe at 11.15, 11.30. Uh, 11 I don't remember exactly what time because I didn't look at a watch, but between 11.15 and 11.30. And I called Judy. Okay. And then when I opened the door, she was there and she came in. Right. You stopped anywhere else? No. You want to stay home? So when you got to the house, your sister Judy was in the driveway? No, she got there right after I did. Okay. But it only takes her two, three minutes to get from her house down to the house. Okay. So it's about the same same area where your dad lives, right? Right next door. Okay. All right. It's very close. Um, so you get to the house, Judy gets to the house, keep going. And we went in, we looked around. Um, nothing seemed out of place other than the fact that mom's stuff, clothes, you know, that, that type of stuff was gone. But, I mean, kitchen, living room, um, her desk, the TV room, the, you know, where the computer's at, everything was, the back porch, everything was normal. I mean, there was nothing out of place. There was no book out of place. There was nothing in her room that seemed out of place except for her stuff gone. Any, anything else in the rest of the house, like any on your room or the other, the, that back room that's across from your room, that's what I like the, like that's the my mom's TV room. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anything out of the, out of the ordinary in no. those rooms? No. Everything seemed normal. Except for, I mean, her jackets were gone, but other than that, there wasn't anything out of the closet. It was missing. I mean, there's a huge coin collection in there that was still there, but that's Morgan's and, but I mean, that was there, but. Other than her jackets, that was it. Um, nothing in my room looked disturbed. I mean, there was nothing missing. And of course, I mean, I've, you know, I've got that huge TV sitting in there and all that other stuff, but none of that was missing. Gotcha. And when you got there, when and then arrived to Judy, got there with you, the house was completely locked up, right? There's secure, nothing tampered with no windows, no damage to anything, everything was normal. Yeah. Gotcha. You guys got an alarm at the house or no? An alarm? No. Yeah. 
Okay. And there's a thing there, but it's not connected. It's not connected. No. Okay. She had it turned off, I don't know how many, over 10 years ago. Okay. But no. Um, she keeps that sign there because it deters people. But um, no, there was, the house was, the, the screen door that's on the front door, mm -hmm. the only way to, um, it, it, it only locks from the inside. Mm -hmm. So it was locked. So I had a good gate and good back door. But that is not unusual. I mean, the only other, the only time that's unlocked is if, you know, I, I mom is leaving and she unlocks it for me, knowing that, you know, which, now that I think about it, going to church, she would have, she should have unlocked it because knowing that I was coming back. Because um, she was going to stop at Hungry Howie's for us after, after church because we always get something after church for lunch, whether it be Subway, Hungry Howie's, or, you know, whatever. Um, but it was locked, so that's the reason I went around to the back. But the back door was locked. The door that leads from the house into the garage was locked. The door that leads from the, it's that white door that goes from the garage out to the back where the recycling bin, mm -hmm. it was locked. The garage door was shut. You know, the front door was locked. Everything was locked. All the windows were shut. I mean, I didn't check if they were locked, but they were all shut. Okay. So while you guys were over there, you guys noticing the that there's just a couple of your mom's stuff. Your mom's stuff are missing. And they're not there. That's the only thing out of, out of place. Yeah. What kind of conversation you and Judy, Judy were having? Who was the, you guys both decided to contact the sheriff's office and and report this, or who who made my, who made that decision? Me and Judy were talking about it, my Aunt Joy, and uh, we all agreed that it was odd and, you know, it was, we started going through her address book trying to find, you know, trying to contact people, trying to find this Rose, trying to find anybody who knew Rose. Um, I remembered the church book from, with the pictures and the phone numbers and stuff like that. I went and grabbed it and to see if we could find her and um, that's how we got we had Ruth's home phone number, but that's how we got the pastor's number and the treasurer's number. And Judy knew some people she went to school with, and so she took it to make phone calls. Um, Joy said that we needed to contact the sheriff's department. We kind of agreed on that, and Judy told me that she was going to make some phone calls, and she was going to let me know. And then the next thing I know, she's in the house with deputy. Did she that? Did that? Did she, she do that at the house or she left back to her home? She left and went back to her own house. I was I asked her to stay until Joy called because I wanted to hear, you know, my, my the three way so that way the three of us could discuss it. But she said that she was on her way back from Pigeon Forge and she hadn't called. And so, and I was like, well, I have Doyle's phone number, his cell phone number. Mm -hmm. And she goes, no, we'll just wait till she gets back to the house. But I mean, I was, I was wanting to hear what, you know, the three of us have a conversation. Gotcha. Just to make a... That way, you know, everybody, family, everybody, yeah, everybody can make that decision. A that family way. decision. Yeah. Um, but she left, and she said she wanted to make some phone calls, and I said okay. I said let me know, and then she I mean she didn't call me. Next thing I knew, she was there at the house with the deputy. She never called me. She said that she was coming. She never said she called y'all guys. Nothing. She just showed up. Um, I just want to just put pause there for a minute. I want to go back to, to the night before when you received the phone call from mm -hmm. your mother saying that she's going to go with Rose. Mm -hmm. Did she discuss with you how the, she was going to go on a car, by train, by plane, she said Rose, by bus, and She said like Rose that? was coming to pick her up. Gotcha. That was it. Do you know, um, do you guys check, um, do you guys, do you got, do you have access to her bank account that you're able to confirm she, she bought a ticket or somewhere or anything like that? I have access to her bank account. Oh yeah? Yeah. We Where's your bank at? Uh, she banks at Central Florida Educators. She has access to my bank. I have access to her bank side. Okay. Um, I, I know we discussed um, yesterday or this morning uh, about your job op opportunity up in um, Ohio. Mm -hmm. That's probably you. Um, and I know you mentioned something that the, the gentleman that you're going to be working for, he'd be trying you out from here. So you've been like working for him from here or what? How, how do you get your income? How, you know, you have to pay whatever part you rent out? Whenever, what kind of work do? whenever there's somebody that needs that's here, he'll call me. So it's right now it's an need basis. Okay. 
um, when I go to leave to go to Hawaii or Hawaii um, to Ohio, which is supposed to be on Friday, um, then it would be at the headquarters. So it, I would be working on a full time basis then. Okay. So pretty much, is uh, when you get to Ohio, is that one of the things that you have to go into the office, or you you'll be able to work from home? No, we'd be in the office. Be in the office. Mm -hmm. You guys never took um, that step to kind of like go over her bank account, see if there's been any kind of um, like purchase of a ticket or or any kind of purchase, anything like that. that. That your mom bought a ticket somewhere, you know, like a airplane ticket, Amtrak, Greyhound, you know, to travel over there or or you know help rolls out, you know, while people putting gas in, you know, gas the, in the car, anything like that. The only ticket that she bought was she bought my ticket for me to Ohio. But, I mean, other than that, she, not that I'm aware of. Okay. And when you pay the bills, like, you know, you give them, you, you give the, 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 the payment to your mom, or mm -hmm. do you pass it to her account? How, how, how you guys work, how you guys work that out? I give my mom the money. Okay, gotcha. Right. Any, anything, anybody that you guys um, might think that, that she had ever kind of trusted outside of the family? Like a specific church member or anything like that? The only person she trusted outside of the family was Marie and Harry. Okay, and they are? Um, their last name starts with the P. That's that house I showed you, the blue house on, okay. that, yes. on Old Penny mm -hmm. Creek. That's mm -hmm. Marie and Harry. Okay. Um, she trusted them implicitly. Um, she worked with them at Mercury. Okay. Um, the only thing that I and I didn't get a chance to tell you because I kind of went past me. The neighbor that is um, not directly across over here, the one with the green car, the lady with her son. Okay, if I'm facing your house, right? Okay, no. If, if, I'm, well, if I'm facing your house and, uh, and I'm doing it like an about face. Okay, now, now, now I got your house to my back. Okay. Okay. The house. The house, like right here. Yes. So if we're looking at a clock, 12 o'clock will be here. Mm -hmm. It'll be like about 11, 10 o'clock. Right. Okay. She has the fence, two dogs. She has a green car, a son who drives oh. a truck. Okay. Um, she asked me something last night, but they, you know, they told her that she needed to go. She couldn't talk to me. Um, she wanted, She asked me, and it didn't really register, but I mean, she asked me if I knew the woman who came to visit mom, which... I don't. I mean, I, I, I don't know who she's talking about. Do you know her name? The lady across the street, do you know her name? I don't really know our neighbors. Okay. Yeah, another question I forgot to ask you yesterday. I know you mentioned something about the next door neighbor that, I don't know. The one that's... The, it, that give you the Ouija V. I don't the know. The BBGVs. The BBGVs. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit more about that neighbor? Why, why does he make you feel, oh, is he a he or she? He. Okay, what does he make you feel like that? I don't know. It's just, I guess it, it's a gut feeling. There's just, there's just something about him that just doesn't sit right with me. He just, uh, you know, it, it, it's like um, a couple of times, I mean, I actually started going inside he came out. There was a couple of times that, like, uh, the woman's dad came over, and he, I was sitting on the back porch, and I normally I don't keep a light on the back porch so that way you can't see me when I'm out there smoking. But um, I keep a flashlight with me. But he left out the back door, and their backyard kind of has a, a berm in the back. Mm -hmm. He went to the very back, crouched down, and the reason I can see this is because there's planks missing from the hurricane that they never replaced. Crouched down, and I could see his a, a light from his cigarette. And he stayed there the entire time her dad was there. And that just was like really odd. And from there it was like, okay, that just doesn't seem, you know. So I kind of just, mom and I just stay away from it, you know. And when he was outside, I would go inside and mom would do the same thing. Because even she got the heebie-jeebies from him. Was he, well, he said hi to you guys, like morning, waved? No, nope, didn't anything. speak. No, he no. never, I mean, we never, he never spoke to us. We never spoke to him. We never waved. We never even acknowledged. Uh, how old is this gentleman next door? Um, He's approximate. 20s. 20s. Late, yeah, late 20s, maybe 30. I, 
I would say like 20s. I haven't gotten, a, I don't know what he looks like close up, but from a distance, I would say mid to late 20s. Gotcha. I, I, I don't know. I'm not very good at estimating age. Hey, um, just one more question. I just, just When Terry dropped you off, Carrie, Carrie. Carrie dropped you off, did he went inside or he just dropped no. you off from the front? He just dropped me off. And you left? Yeah, it, that's not unusual either. Any, any additional questions? That's the wrong. Um, you said your mom paid for your Ohio ticket. Mm -hmm. When was that purchased? Um, Saturday. This Saturday? Mm -hmm. okay. Do you know what time? That, did you actually find them in, on the computer or something? Uh, yeah, I went to um, uh, Spirit, I, and she I got all the stuff in there, and she put the card number in, and... Okay. And, um, do you know what time of day this was? Was it during the daylight hours? Yeah, it was daylight. Okay. Because Saturday is the day you left to go to... It was before I left. Yeah, okay. So it was before 5. Okay. And it was with Spirit Airlines? Yes. Did you get your confirmation in an email or something like that? I did, and I gave it to one of the officers. It's flight 4060. I leave at um, 10.50 in the morning. Okay. And when's that? On Friday. On Friday. Um, and you said that you know a lot about your, your mom's financials. I guess you try to help her. She's an older woman. Um, does she have multiple accounts? Does she have multiple credit cards? Do you know what kind of uh, my financial credit she has? To my knowledge, she has a GM card, and that's because she has one, and I also she has me also on it. Mm -hmm. um, she has an Up Promise card, which we both have. She has one, and I that I have one of my. What's eight. a Promise card? It, I've never it, heard of that. It's called Up Promise. It's just like a Visa or MasterCard. Okay, it's a credit uh, card. Yeah. Okay. Um, she has one, and I have. She has one with my name on it. Um, mm -hmm. We share pin numbers. Uh, same with the GM uh, card, um, and then she has her CFE um, Platinum credit card okay. through the bank. Um, her ATM card. Okay. Um, and I think that's it. And what did she use to buy your plane ticket? Uh, her CFE Platinum card. Or a credit card, not the ATM card? No. Okay. All right. Um, um, who, uh, how, is Tasha a great friend of yours? I'm assuming you guys... We, no, we, she was a manager at Siggy's in St. Cloud, and that's how we met her. And um, she transferred to Orlando. Mm -hmm. And she still comes to St. Cloud and brings the cigarettes to us. Bring, I don't get that. Brings the cigarettes to you. What's that mean? She rolls the cigarettes, and for thirty dollars, she brings um, Mark, me, and Judy uh, the two hundred cigarettes, which is equivalent to a carton, and it's only thirty dollars. But it's pure tobacco. Oh. And so she just brings them and drops them off at Mark's shop. I got you. Yeah. So, what's your um, it takes a lot of patience to do that, I assume. They have a big machine. Oh, okay. You just tell them name. what brand <laughs> and you make sure, you, you tell them they put in the computer and you can pick mild, you know, you did, mm -hmm. it just doesn't have all the additives and all that other stuff in it. You pour it in the machine and it'll do like 200 cigarettes in a matter of minutes. Okay. And, and it's only 30 bucks. And Sunday, you said before... After you got dropped off and before Judy gets there. I you, met her and you, swapped them out. And where'd you meet? At Westgate. What's that? What's Westgate? Westgate in St. Cloud, uh, where um, CFE is, where uh, Big Lots is. Big Lots. Yeah. Um, and it was uh, where Siggy used to be. There's another store there now. But we just, we met there and she came to the window. I handed her the menthol one. She handed me that. I went out, went out the, um, uh, what is it? Uh, is it CBS? Right down the corner. Mm -hmm. I went out there, turned, and went up um, 
Old Canoe Creek, um, Pine Tree, up to Rambler, to the house. And then you went home? Yeah, and I called Judy, and she was there two, three minutes. And you called Judy before she got there, or? I called Judy before, she, yeah, I called Judy before she got there. Okay. Um. I opened the front door. Marie and Harry, you guys know real well. Yes. And does your mom talk to them on a regular basis? Yes. Would you say daily basis? I wouldn't say daily, but mm -hmm. regular, yes. Okay. Do you have to say it's odd that your mom hasn't contacted anyone? Yes. Um, since we left yesterday, I know you didn't have your phone, but has anybody been trying to call your mom? I don't know. Okay, have you or your dad or anybody at where you were staying last night, have they been trying to call your mom? My, well, I don't think my dad did, no, my, but my, I don't think my dad wouldn't because I don't know if my sister has. Um, did you talk to your sister since you left here last night? No. Okay. When I got to dad's, she was, I'm sure, already asleep and I would sleep and when I got up, did or you sleep? You, mm -hmm. a, a couple hours. Okay. Did you? Um, and I called you. And mm -hmm. from what I understand, Dad said she had already left to go to work. And I, she says she doesn't like getting calls at work, so that's the reason I haven't talked to Judy. Yeah. Okay. That's what it's going to ask. Yeah. Tried to call her or anything. But to my understanding, she's in training, so I mean, and I, she, he's getting phone calls at work, unless it would be from you guys. Right. Me calling, have you heard anything? Would you repeat her? And gotcha. I, I and I don't want to do that. So. Um. That and her, my dad don't speak, so she wouldn't call my dad's house. Right. And if I called her from my dad's house, she wouldn't answer. Why is that? Why don't they go? Why don't they talk? They had a falling out. Um couple of years back and they haven't spoke. Judy considers my dad dead to her, so. Okay. They have absolutely nothing to do with each other. So they, yeah. she wouldn't answer her. What about Mark and, the, and the, her son? Do they talk to your dad at all? What's she? They used to have a gate between the property and dad and Katie went to Tennessee and when they got back to get, they had removed the gate and put the fence up in place of it. Okay. It was over my niece. She got hurt. Nobody said anything. And it was a little thing that turned into this huge drama mountain and it went from there. I tried everything to get him to reconcile and I finally surrendered. How long was that? That happened? Two years ago. About two years ago? Mm -hmm. Okay. Shame. Maybe. Shame. Could be three years for all I know. Mm -hmm. I know at least two. So, I mean, if I called from my dad's house, there's no way Judy would answer. Um, has any family member called your dad or called your dad trying to reach you? No. And try to, you know what I mean? No family member. You have any, anything that the family members are talking? You know how it is, you know, you know how families are. No, but nobody, fam nobody family, no family member knew I was at my dad's. Gotcha. By the time I got to my dad's, I, it was so, I, there was, I didn't make any phone calls because I, you know. You went to sleep. Well, tired. well, I didn't go directly to sleep, but I mean, it was like four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So, and I'm not saying that my other family members weren't awake, but a lot of them, Anybody on my mom's side of the family wouldn't recognize my dad's phone number. Gotcha. So, and honestly, I couldn't remember my Aunt Joy's number because it's in my phone. And she would be the, and Marie, I don't know her phone number off the top of my head. So, I mean, there was not many phone numbers. I mean, those were two people I would have called, but I don't, couldn't remember their phone numbers. Where are you going to stay when you get to Ohio? Um, I have a friend, uh, Melissa Smith. She has, Smith. A, yeah, she has a house and I'm going to be um, staying there until I find a place. Okay. Let's go check on that phone real quick. Yeah. I'll be right back, okay? Uh -huh.
Do you need anything, Fiona? No, thank you. Thank you. Alright, I'll be right back.
the the little the little box just crashed. You swap it out some uh, an SD card real quick. He said we should be done in a couple minutes. Hey Judy, I wanna bring uh that's oh, sorry, Amy. Apologize. My bad. I wanna ask you a couple more questions, okay? And and I need for you to be completely truthful with me, okay? Alright. Base when was the last time you called you tried to contact your mom on your phone? When was the last time? Um But since I couldn't leave a voicemail, I... Did it at least ring? The phone no, did it ring? No, it just, all it said was, person you've reached, um, has not set up a voicemail. So, I assumed, and I know I shouldn't have, it, she, it was out of minutes, it was dead, or she had turned it off, or she turned the ringer, I mean, you know, and I knew she didn't have a phone charger. Okay. And I honestly thought she would call whenever they stopped. So I really wasn't too concerned. Okay. And then when Judy told me they've been trying to call her and call her and call her and call her, then... Okay. How about if I tell you that the last, for your phone, the last phone call that you ever did to your mom was on September 18th, which was Friday night, just before 11 o'clock at night. Will you be surprised about that? It's based on your phone information. Very. Okay. And then the call history, you know how you go through the call history and you can remove calls from the actual call history log, mm -hmm. what's removed, what's deleted. I don't delete my call history. Okay, why not? That's coming straight from your phone, the phone that you own, the phone well, that you I use. Well, I mean, I understand that, but there's no reason for me to delete it. I mean, I have no reason to. And I know that I called my mother cell phone okay. but after the 18th. I know I did. Okay. You said that the, you have an ePass account. Mm -hmm. Your mom has an ePass account. Mm -hmm. And then Carrie mm -hmm. has an ePass account, right? Right. When you went to, when Carrie picked you up at your mom's house, at your residence, mm -hmm. you guys left in Carrie's car, which mm -hmm. is a uh, a black Mustang, mm -hmm. and he didn't pay the toll. He went through the e-pass section, right? He has a, he didn't stop. He did he pay in, in the attendant, or and he went through the he, he did not pay attention. He just went right through the Sun Pass e-pass lane without stopping. When we went through the Kissimmee Park, it went through, but whenever the rest of them, he did pay because well, I guess his e-pound account was low. I don't know. Okay. Will you be? surprise or I would like to know what you would say if I told you that the last time that account was used was earlier this month. Carries Carries account, yes. And there's absolutely no record of him going through e-pass or anything like that. Yes, that would surprise me. Okay. So I'll give you already two things. You understand what I mean? That I understand. That I'll be able to confirm. Based on the information I'm getting and stuff like that, I just, you know, to confirm. So, I mean, but it, I, I don't, I can't give you an answer. But I mean, because okay. I don't understand, but it does surprise me. Let's swap shoes for a moment. You know, how will you feel about that? You've been in my shoes, getting those stuff right now. I just, I just want to know what happened to your mom. You know what I mean? What happened to your mom? I and stuff like that. And I just want you to be honest with me. I, you, know, you ain't left in town. You know, okay, I think you left town. You know, I was, I was hanging out here. Yeah, with another friend, but. You understand what I mean? So when you got those things, you just, you know, kind of a couple of exclamation points and, you know, a couple of flags are coming up. You understand what I mean? I, I understand. And I, I, 
I don't have an answer for you because I, I don't understand. And I do want to know what happened to my mother. I have no idea what's going on. That's what we're trying to find out. I know. And the only thing we ask from people, you know, to help us out and I'm is trying, just to be completely honest with us. And that's what I'm, I, I am. I'm being completely honest with you. Because I want to find my mother. Yeah, we want to find your mother too. And right now, all, all, all we care is your mom, your mom's yes, safety. that's all I care about. Okay. Um, going back to your banking, your banking situation. You got your own account mm -hmm. and your mom has her own account, right? Mm -hmm. Do you guys bank in the same bank? No, I bank at PSC, she banks at CFE. Okay. PSC, which one is that one? Uh, P PNC is, PNC. yeah, it's directly across from um, Dairy Queen. Okay, okay. Across the street, like from Subway? Subway area around right there? No, um, you have Dairy Queen and then you have like Prescription Unlimited. Gotcha, yes, and, yes. Well, yeah, and Subway is there, there yeah. on the corner, yeah, so it, it's right here, PNC. That's my bank. She banks at CFE. I have her account information, she has my account information. What can you tell me about, uh, has been any deposit made to your account? Mom wrote me a check for $2,500 that I did a mobile deposit for. A mobile deposit? Yeah, Is I, it a check or a mobile deposit? It's a check, but on my, uh, it's, there's a, PNC has an app where okay. you can do um, a, what's called a mobile deposit. You take a picture of the check and then it, it goes to your account. After, that? A few, after a few days. Okay. And what's that check at? Uh, she had, I gave it back to her. Okay. All I have to do is sign the back of it and then you have to put forward mo mobile deposit only, is what you do. So she writes it, and what day was that? When, what day was she wrote that, that check? That was on the uh, morning of the 19th. 19th, that's Friday. Okay, 20, no, wait, no. No, Saturday. Saturday, 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 I'm yes, you're right. I apologize. That's Saturday. okay. Yeah, morning and Saturday. Okay. All right. So she paid for your ticket for Ohio, mm -hmm. and she used what what card? The CFE Platinum. Okay. That's a debit card or a credit card? Credit card. Credit card. And then she also gave you a twenty-five hundred dollar check. check. And you some what? Just for me to go into my account to have, so that way she worried. You know, that way I had money and just in case I needed anything. She wanted to make sure that I was safe and taken care of. Okay. She didn't want me to have to, if I needed to get back or if I needed something or something happened, she wanted me to be able to have money to do it. Do you know your last four digits of your account number? That shows on your card? 5353. Okay. And that's with PNC, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a credit card, that's your, your checking account, debit card. That's my checking account. Debit card, right. Is it like a debit card? No, it's an actual, it's a checking account. Okay. Yeah, but I, debit card, I don't know what the last four digits are. Okay. That's at home in my purse. So, being here right now and asking you that about your phone, about the phone calls, and about the e-pass. And now this all comes to light about, you know, now there's a, actually a, a wire check, digital check transfer to your account. You understand what I mean? This didn't come up last night, early today. They didn't come up earlier and stuff like that. I didn't think anything of it, really. I mean... But come on, Amy. You know, the, the, don't you think that, that that would have been important? It, it is, but I mean, I am i can't remember everything when I'm that tired. I'm My brain... Well, it, I'm tired, too. I, I understand that, but I mean, you, your brain works different than my brain. Mine is going at 100 miles an hour. I'm trying to remember everything. I'm trying to be able to tell y'all everything. And I'm, I'm trying... It, it everything I can to give y'all all the information that you need 
be completely truthful with you and try to remember everything. And sometimes I can't. And I, I'm sorry for that, but I just, I, just, I, I can't remember everything all the time when I'm trying so hard to remember everything to be able to tell you guys. But my mom giving me money is not anything that's unusual. Buying a ticket for me is nothing unusual. What do you think Kara's going to say when we contact him? If we contact him. What do you think Kara's going to say? That he came pick me up at 5 o'clock and he dropped me off. And he's going to tell you that he paid for the tolls and he doesn't know why his son passed didn't register. What do you think Taj is going to say when we go talk to her? That we met at Westgate and that we swapped out cigarettes and that she left and I left. You just don't understand. He's like, you're telling me some information here about the phone calls that you made for you, to your mom, trust we see from your mom. You're telling me that. Then, however, when we go to your phone, you hear it from here to, to see, to take a look, stuff like that. You, your phone is giving us a complete different story of what you're sharing with me. I can't answer you on that. I, I have absolutely no idea. I don't, I don't know why my phone is doing what it's doing. I don't know what's going on with my phone. It doesn't matter if you delete or try to get rid of some information. The phone always keeps that information. I understand that, but I mean, I don't understand. I don't know why my phone is doing what it's doing. I don't, I don't understand. I can't give you an answer. I don't know enough about phones. I don't, I, I cannot give you an answer on this. I know what I did, I, but I can't tell you why my phone is not telling you that. I can't. I wish I could. We're trying to get to, to to find your mom. I understand that. Okay. Your mom is very important to you. I can see that you love your mom very much. Very. But you're... I would do anything to you're find You're telling us some information. You try to confirm that information. That information is completely opposite of what you're telling us. Contradict what you're telling us. You understand what I mean? I, I understand. So, it, it just... It, it just I, I just want you to, to understand in what kind of position, you know, that puts me. You understand what I mean? So I'm not saying I'm having doubts on you with you, but like I said, you just bring some some red flags. And I'm just trying to sit down here with you right now and be able to for you to for you and me to put our heads together and try to be able to understand all the pieces of the puzzle. You understand what I mean? I understand. And the only thing I ask for you to is to is to be completely honest. And I am being. Okay. And I just don't want you. I just don't want you to ending yourself by holding information by lying to me. I'm, I don't I'm want not, you to do that. I, and I'm not. And I okay. and I honestly cannot answer why my phone is not telling you what I'm telling you because it should be. Not correct. I mean, it, it it should be telling you exactly what I'm telling you. My phone should indicate all of that. That is correct. And I don't know why it's not. I cannot answer you on that. I, I, I'm sorry, I, just, I, I don't know. But it should be telling you exactly what I'm telling you. Okay. I mean, what I'm telling you, you should be able to look at my phone and go, okay, this is exactly everything. And I don't know why it's not. I honestly do not. I wish I could tell you. Gotcha. I want to find my mother more I want to bring you mom home. Yes. I want to bring you to the girl, to you girls. I, I don't, I, I would do anything in the world to find my mother. And that's the reason I'm being completely honest with you. I'm trying to remember everything. I'm trying to remember every word, every conversation, everything, but minute by minute. And I... Everything is just 
getting all jumbled. I can't remember times. My, my job description and my, and my job is to get the facts, investigate, talk to people, and, and assist the family. You understand what I mean? That's what I'm trying to do. I know. Okay. And then when everybody puts all the effort and the, you know, every, everybody has roles. You understand what I mean? I got my role and stuff like that. The information I get from you and the family members that you guys put on the on the table is what I take and I run with it. I know. You understand what I mean? And that that's what that get the machine going. I know. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's what we when, when we get the conclusions and stuff like that, confirm this, confirm that, and stuff like that. That's what investigations are. Taking all the facts, can be able to confirm, look into it, do research, and we get the answer. Mm -hmm. Okay? I understand. So the only thing I ask you, um, Amy, sorry, is for you to be completely honest with me, okay? And be able to think and help me out and I hope yeah, I hope you out and be able to share information and you know, change, you know, be able to share with each other thoughts mm -hmm. that we'll be able to understand mm -hmm. and to move on, okay, from this hiccup right now that I got. You know what I mean? Yes. It just, uh, right now, I gave, you, I gave you three things right now that if it weren't for my investigation, you would have mentioned the situation with the, with the phone now, with the e-pass, and now that transfer, that wire transfer. You understand what I mean? So I'm the, the transfer is not unusual. Okay. Does yeah. she does that every month? Not every month, but she. How does. often does she transfer that amount of money to 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 your account for just for you just every just to have it? Every few months. And why does she does that? If you were, you got your own income and you pay bills. Why are you gonna give money to her for her to pay bills? For you to pay your half, and then she's giving you a lot more money than what you pay her on a monthly basis to pay bills. I just don't get. It. She's trying to help me get a car. Okay. So how much money has she given you? Let's say of this amount, in the last year. Where was was in September? From mm -hmm. January to September, how, how many times she giving you this? Because you know I work. You know what I mean. I'm not rich. I you know, know what I mean. And, I, and you know, and somebody give me twenty five hundred dollars, I consider that holy crap. Uh, well, you understand what I mean? Like, yeah. oh my god, man. You're right. You understand what I mean? You just like that's a lot of money for me. Right. But that's my personal. You know, for my my opinion, you know, twenty five hundred dollars is a lot of money. Yes. You know how often does she does that? Like from January to to not September. How how often? Um, she done that four times four times and but unfortunately um so I it have, has been twenty five hundred dollars the same amount or she what, what has been the amount it's 500 it's 2000 it's 2500 but do you um, remember the amount it's just been those three it's been so 500 right it's been a 500 it's okay been, one second let's do something real quick i'm sorry wait a minute 600 okay um, so that's six hundred. That's the first time. That was one. That was one. Uh, you remember one? No. Uh, beginning of the year it was cold. This outside. year it was this year. Okay, six hundred. Um, it, uh, it's it's kind of the twenty five hundred to that. Uh, the other the, this recent. So that's twenty five hundred. There's twenty five hundred. There's okay. six hundred. Um, four hundred, and I think another six hundred. I know it's six hundred. Mm -hmm. So two times she gave you six hundred. And then one time she gave you 400 and now she gave you 2500 mm -hmm. okay so that, that that's a big jump right you know from going just for a couple hundred dollars now all of a sudden I mean, that's a drastic jump any reason why that's 4100 dollars you told me that she gave me he gave me you from she's january to she's wanting to try and help me get a car but she's also trying to help me get um health insurance because i lost my health insurance and so she's trying to help me get my health insurance and unfortunately, health insurance right now is like $300 a month. So until I get health insurance, you know, kicked in, it's going to be $316, dollars Okay. Because of blood pressure and my heart condition. Okay. Um, so she's trying to help me with that. So if I look a little bit more into your mom's account and your account, 
are going to be able to see those transfers, all those deposits from your mom's account to your account. Yes. And how do you guys did those transfers? The same way that you did the twenty five hundred dollars? Some was cash, and um, I, one was one was a check, and then um, which one was the check? I don't remember exactly which one, um, but mostly it's been cash because it goes into effect right then. So. What do you mean goes into effect right then? It, it's available to you. Okay. Does she put the cash in your account? She gives it to me, I go to the bank and deposit it at the ATM. Okay. Just the same way she did in this one, this most recent one. That, she gave me the check and she had me do the, the on my app, my PN, PNC app. Um, if I had my phone, I could show it. Who wrote the check? She did. Okay. Um, if I had my phone, I could show it to you. Okay. What I'm talking about. Okay. It's an app. You go to it, and it says deposit, and you put the uh, which account you want it to go to, how much. You take a picture of the front of the check, the back of the check, and then um, you hit continue, and then you wait for it to through your account, which could be anywhere from five to seven days. Okay. And that was the reason some of the times she did the deposit, it gave me the cash because that way I could just go to the bank and put it in the bank. How long you had, you had your phone for? How long? Since when? Um, over five years. Over five, same number for over five years? Yeah. Okay. Same company, Boost? Mm -hmm. Okay. You had the same phone for the five years or you've been upgrading them? Well, I've been upgrading them, but I kept the same phone number. Okay. Yeah. How long you had this style phone, your style phone, the, the smartphone? Uh, how long? Since, probably about six months. About six months? Yeah. Maybe uh, seven. No, probably about six months. All right. Let me see if that phone's ready. That way you can show me that check, okay? Okay. I'll be right back, all right?
died. Your phone died, so it's being charged right now. And it says that it's so dead that it's not, will, not, will not even turn on with the with the with the plug on. That doesn't sound right. When it's plugged in, my phone will turn on. When it's very dead, when the phone's even this iPhone, when it's completely dead. No, you turn it on and you plug it in, it will turn on that it's charging, but it will not have enough charge to turn on, on, to power on completely. Mine normally does. That's, that's what I just went over there, it's not going to turn on. I just got the little sound that's charging with the light, with the red light, and it's plugged in and it's not turning on. Then it shows the battery. It shows I, the no, battery. I, I understand that, but I mean, that, that's something wrong with them because so my phone... We, we, we just got to give it a couple minutes and I know we'll okay, fire up. But the, I mean, that I understand what you're saying, okay. but I have, my phone is, I've zeroed it out in it where it's turned off. Okay. And I plugged it in and I've still been able to turn it on. So there's something wrong with my phone because it should be turning on. I don't know. I ain't no phone guy, but I'm not I gotta, either, but I gotta I'm just, go I'm by just, the tech, so. I know. I'm just, I'm telling you that that has happened before. You know that we're going to confirm and reconfirm everything. You don't, you understand that, right? Yes. Okay. Um, the thing I don't get, I have e-pass. So, I have e-pass. Mm -hmm. um, the times when my e-pass has gone to zero balance, and I've gone through it, it will still register. Okay? Okay. So, you're telling me, you're sitting here, if I'm saying, and your e-pass is in your purse, right? Yes. Okay. So, you said that Carrie's e-pass was going low on balance, but guess what? I did take my e-pass. You know, okay, okay, forget about, about your e-pass. Let's talk about carries. Okay. It doesn't show carry up here using the e-pass. Even the e-pass register and anything like that. It doesn't show carry nowhere here. I'll tell you that right now. That's a fact. Okay? When you went to see Tasha to do the, the, the thing about the cigarettes, exchange right. the cigarettes, mm -hmm. you went straight home, right? Yes. You didn't stop nowhere else? No. Okay. You sure about that? After I left Tasha, yeah. Okay. So you went from your house straight to see oh, Tasha. Oh, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Oh, there wait. it is. Wait, wait. Um, there it is. I'm trying to... Okay. Please. Right. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I stopped at, um... What's that place? Um... It's a, a storage. Okay. I stopped there. Okay. And I was there for a couple of minutes and then I left and then... Any reason why you stopped at the storage? Do you have storage there? I don't have storage there, but I was going to see about how much it would cost to rent some... Because there's some stuff that I'm not going to be taking with me. What storage is that one? Where at? Uh, it's next door to uh, what used to be Mickey's. Uh, it's on Old Canoe Creek. Um, it was a gas station store. Yeah. No, I gotta look it up. I don't know. I, I can't remember the name of it, but it's I mean it's orange. It went inside. No, the they said to call a manager and but nobody, you know, answered. I knocked on the door. But I was only there for a couple of minutes. I backed out and then went straight home. But I was only checking to see how much storage was. Was that on the way to see Tasha? Or that was no, that was on my way back? home. That was on my way home. Okay. I can tell you that there's nothing wrong with your phone. I'll tell you that right now. And I want you to understand your phone is going to tell me exactly where you've been. Okay. You understand that, right? Yeah. And that's why I'm here talking to you because I want to give you the opportunity for you to tell me where you were. Hopefully, I'm hoping that you'd be honest with me and tell me, prove me wrong that the information that you're telling me is the same information that it shows on your phone. You, know, you understand what I'm getting through? Yeah. You understand what I mean? The only thing I ask from you, Amy, is for you to be completely honest. I know that. Okay. But right now, the information I got from your phone. It's not matching up with what you told me or where you've been. Or what you have done. And the same thing with the e-pass. Carries e-pass. 
I can't even tell you about Carrie's e bass. I, I sell our man. I, I can't tell you about that. I don't know. I can't answer you on that. How much money do you have in your purse? Uh, four hundred and five dollars. Six dollars. And where the where that money came from? Um, I stopped an ATM. Okay. When? Sunday. What? Sunday. I don't know exactly what time. In the morning, the afternoon. Morning. Was before lunch, after lunch, before, before lunch, before lunch. Okay. What bank was that? Uh, BB and T. Where's that one at? Uh, well, there's one on 192. Well, which one is the one that you stopped? That's what I'm asking. I don't know exactly which one it is. It's on 192. I don't know exactly which one. Put yourself in my situation, Amy. You see what I'm getting through? I can give you a little bit, putting out more things on the table. And all of a sudden, oh my god, boom, boom, boom. A little light comes on. Oh, I'm yeah, that's trying. Right. I am trying. I am trying. Yeah, as far as giving, is giving to me, you, you give me the assumption that you're holding back. You, you, you just don't, don't want to tell me everything. I'm not intentionally holding anything back. I am trying. I, honest to God, am trying. I am not holding anything back. I, I honest to God, am trying. I don't have the best memory in the world, but I honestly Me neither. But honest to God, but I, situations I, like this, very seriously, I tell you this right now, I'll make an effort I'm to trying. really remember. That's, I'm trying. And very important things that happen to the in the day, very big <sighs> stuff that happened during the day, I'm gonna remember. I you see, for a fact that you remember you meeting up with Tasha to exchange some cigarettes, <sighs> but you don't remember stopping at a bank, not stopping out of storage, and all that kind of stuff. I'm and trying. that all that taking half an hour. I just don't get it. I'm trying. I am trying. Honest to God, I am trying. I know you're tired. I'm exhausted. And I, I'm trying. Honest to God, I am trying. I don't know what to tell you, but I am trying. Put, myself in my situ put yourself in my situation, in my shoes, and I'm sitting in your chair. You're asking me the same questions I'm asking you about something very important that pertains to your mother. And all of a sudden, you're not remembering anything of where you've been, where do you go, where do you stop. It has to be me take, giving you a little bit for you to remember. This is very important, Amy. This, it, it pertains to your mother. The well-being of your mother, where your mom go, who your mom is with right now. The important mission right now is to get your mom home, safe and sound, back to her daughters. I'm aware of that. And, that's and you're I not want. making it easy right now for me. For me, I'm not because, trying to make it difficult. Because right now, information I'm getting contradicts completely. Oh, why are you telling me, Amy? It's been a long night for you, a long weekend for you, for you and your family. Time is time is going by. You need to let me know and be completely honest with me. What happened this weekend? I feel like you haven't been honest with me completely, Amy. I feel like you're holding things back. I'm not. And you need to be completely honest with us. I am, and I'm not holding anything back. Because based on what you know, you tell me, you spend most of the time with your mom that actually really it does. You live with her. You guys live together. Yes. You guys share a lot of time together, a lot of memories. You guys pay bills. Yes. 
You need to be completely honest with me for us to do our job, Amy. I understand that, and I am, and I am trying to remember everything. Honest to God, I am. All I want is to find my mother, and all I want to do is give you the information to be able we to We have to look you. everywhere. I know. Every avenue. I know. See who's lying to us, who's not lying to us. I know. You understand what I mean? And the more I dig and dig and dig, you understand what I mean? Your story is not making sense of what I got right now, Amy. I don't know what it's you not confirming what you're telling me since last night. And I want you to be completely honest with I me. Am. I want you to take a deep breath and say, you know what, Joel? I'm sorry. Yes, I did forgot to tell you. And then and let's start fresh. But you need to tell me step by step. And we took our time last night. And we took it day by day, hour by hour. Phone call by phone call, person by person, and then I come today. We try to reconfirm what you told us last night, which is pretty much the same thing. And then I get all this information dumped on my desk on my lap that is showing me that you're not telling me the truth. The only thing I ask for you for the sake of your mother, Amy. For her truth. safety, for you to tell me the truth right now. We need to get you mom home. I agree. All right. I got back before 11 o'clock. Okay. From where? From Chiefland. Okay. Got back before 11 o'clock. I got back probably about nine o'clock. Okay. I left. I went towards Nova Road. I turned around. I took a call from Marie. I stopped at a junkyard or something. I talked to her. I went into St. Cloud. I stopped at bb and I went to Westgate. I stopped at storage, went home, and I called my sister. Okay. What car were you driving? Mom's. Mom. When you got back home, what was, in, what was inside the house? Nothing. I mean, just, it was exactly as it was when me and Judy, when Judy walked through the door. The key was there, I just grabbed it, got in the car. I ran my errands and then I called Judy and that's a good step right now. You just took. But why? 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 why it took this long for you for you to come out with that? Why? Think about how it makes me sound. We're humans. We make mistakes. You don't understand. I don't, my, I don't no, understand. You I, don't, no, you don't understand my sister. She would take that and she would think that the most horrible person ever walked on this earth that I put myself in front of my mother and I don't. I don't. But that's what she would think. And so would my Aunt Joy. And I don't. I put my mother first. Listen to me. I stopped and talked to Marie. Because I got upset, and I didn't want to be driving while I was talking to her on the telephone. Okay. She can confirm that. Okay. We went over everything. What, 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 what you guys went over? The last time she talked to my mother, what my mother said, what she thought was going on, and I told her I would keep her up to date that I was supposed to be meeting my sister and that I would call her. Let's forget about your sister. Let's forget about your aunt. It, Let's just think about Amy and Mom. There is okay? Nothing. Let's forget about those people. There's nothing I wouldn't do for The only thing I care right now is the conversation that I'm having with you right now oh. and about your mom's safety. Okay? Let's put all everybody fact that nobody pays your bills you pay your own bills right yes. you get you work you pay your mom and you guys pay your bills right and she helps me I exactly exactly 
So it's a team, right? Yes. 50-50, she helps you, you help her out. Okay, then why Amy took this one for you just to tell, come out with that? Because it makes me sound like a horrible person. You're not a horrible person. We all make mistakes. Put yourself in my shoes. My mother is missing. It makes me sound like a horrible person. It really does. I put errands before my mother. But let's go back to... We've been talking since last night. Why it took until... I didn't want to sound Almost like, 4.55. I didn't want to sound like a horrible person. So why? This is, this is stuff that I need to, that I need to I know. I know, I know. You know what I mean? And, I know. And, and can I tell you something? That information you just told me right now, I knew it already. I just need you, for you to take that step of faith and put on, on the table for you to tell me what I know already. Okay? There's a start. There's not everything, okay? We have to move on. Okay? So, let's start from, let's start from the time that you got back home. What time you left Chief Land? Chief? That place over Seven. Chief Land. Okay. Just at Gainesville. Okay, Gainesville. Okay. And, um, and you were with Carrie. Yes. And still driving his same car, his yes. black car? Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys took the same route, right? Yes. Um, that state road was the... Two st Alternate 27 to 75 to Turnpike to the Kissimmee Park exit. Okay. Okay. Did he drop you off? Yes. Did he go inside the house? Yep. Okay. How do you enter the house? How do you get in the house? The screen door on the front was locked, so I went through the gate on the side of the house and went through the back door underneath the cover and it leads into the kitchen. Okay. And bo both were both locks locked? Both locks were, were locked. Okay. Um, I walked in and put my purse down. I saw the key and just grabbed it, went out the garage door, got in the car. And do you, do you I looked around I mean, the house? I looked around, but everything, I mean, I looked in the kitchen, I, I looked in the living room, I did go to the bathroom, in my bathroom, um, and I just kind of glanced in my bedroom, everything, I mean, nothing looked out of place, so I walked back into the kitchen, I grabbed what I could see in my mother's room, you know, I mean, all I could see was the dresser and part of the bed and her black chair which was where it was made. how was the bed bed was completely made okay. um black chair was exactly where it was supposed to be there was uh, the dresser was just like it always is the bathroom door was open you know for, i mean everything looked normal so i just grabbed the spare key i went out the garage door and got in the car opened the garage door and backed out did the errands and then drove back and called my sister okay all right, let's go back a little bit right now. Let's slow it down a little bit, okay? Um, I'm saying you were a little bit emotional when you told me exactly what you did, okay? But I just want to make sure that we cover every step, okay? So, you took the spare key out, got in the car, back the car out of the garage. No, the spare key was on okay. the... Okay, no, no, no. Okay. Uh, okay. You got the keys. You did everything you had to do in the house. Notice everything inside the house. Yeah, the spare key then was you got on, in the the kitchen, on the kitchen counter. Okay. Yeah. You got in the car, you, you backed out the car out of the garage. Mm -hmm. Okay, then you left out. You left the house. Which way you you, you left the house? You went towards um, Brown Hickory Tree. Hickory Tree? Okay. What was the first place you stopped? Um, at that um, what, salvage yard when Marie called me. Okay, so we're going on Hickory Tree, and it was around what, approximately what time? Nine thirty, okay. ten. Okay, so you go on Hickory Tree, you go towards one ninety two, right? One ninety two. Which I turn left? You turn left. Mm -hmm. Okay. I went towards Nova. Did a U turn at Nova. Make right. a left towards Nova. You sure? I'm, I'm sorry. Right. Right. Sorry. I'm sorry. Right. There at Seven Eleven. Mm -hmm. I turned right onto one ninety two. Okay. Went towards Nova. Got to Nova. Did a U turn. 
Marie called me and I pulled into, I believe it's a salvage. I don't know exactly the name of it. I just saw it was a business. I pulled in there, stopped the car and talked to her um, 15 minutes, maybe 20, I don't know. Um, I told her that, you know, I would give her a call back. Um, did that, got back on the 192, went down 192. Uh, there's a BB and T on the left. I stopped there. Um, got $400 left there. Which, um, when you got to the BB and T, that bank right down the corner, mm -hmm. um, you, do you use an ATM? Yes. Which ATM do you use? I mean, do, do you have to get out of the car and walk up to the place? No, it's the one that you can drive up to and it's right there at your window. Okay. And um, who banks there? Nobody. Nobody. I just, it was just, it was the first okay. bank, so I just stopped there. Okay. Um, and then I left there. And how, I'm sorry, and how much money you took out of there? Four. Okay. All right, from your account? Uh, no, actually from my mother's account. Okay. Um, Any reason why? Or from your mother's account? No, it was just, she said I could do it, so I did. When did she say that? When did she give you the permission to take out the four and a half? Friday. Friday? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I understand. Stuff. She gives you a check for twenty five hundred dollars that you electronically deposit in your account. Mm -hmm. She also pays you plane ticket, mm -hmm. and then she also gives you the day before permission to do it on Sunday to withdraw four hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. That was extremely generous. Okay, just making the math. That's like over three thousand dollars in less than a weekend. Well, I mean, you understand I can, what I mean? On my phone, I can show you all of this. Hopefully, next break I will take. Okay, you know, I can show you my account. I can show you her account. Okay. Um, but left there, drove through town, went to Westgate, met Tasha, mm -hmm. left out that dude by CVS, turned on Kissimmee Park, stopped at that storage place. And like I said, did press for the manager. Nobody answered. Knocked on the door. They have surveillance. You can check. Um, left there, got back onto Kissimmee Park, or Old Kenny Creek, and drove straight through, crossed over on Pine Tree, turned onto Rambler, went into Lakeshore, pulled into the garage, called my sister, within a couple minutes, opened the door, she was there, she came in. Why was that so hard for you to tell us that yesterday? Why, why, why didn't you start it with that yesterday? That was simple. You know what I mean? That was the reason I just don't, I, I just don't understand it. You understand what I mean? You don't know my family. has nothing to do with your family now. Okay? Let's, let's forget about your family right now. Let's just think about Amy and let's think about mom. I know. Forget about the family. You know, family's family, but nobody pays your bills. You pay your own bills. But okay, and you and, and right now, let's forget about that because in this situation right now, Amy needs to be selfish, and Amy needs to think about mom right now to do whatever she needs to do to get mom home back to her life, yes. to be able to both of you guys to keep going with your life. I agree. Okay. And that's all I want. Okay. The only thing I just want to understand, Amy, is like. Putting your family aside, why that was so hard for you to tell me? And we spoke yesterday for, I don't know how long we spoke yesterday. I know. You understand what I mean? And then we spoke on the phone this morning about two, three times. I know it was short. And I was You know, and then we spoke today. And, you know, you understand what I mean? And, and you just, you had the opportunity to talk. And I, and I was with my dad. I understand that. I don't even know, need to know about this, okay? I know, but if I just said my dad was sitting right there listening you're an adult. I understand that took you to his, into his house. But you could have told him, "Hey, Joel, can, and I, he can I please can I please speak to you in private?" We could have, we could have gone talk somewhere. You understand what I mean? I because know. you're an adult. You know, I know it's not his your dad, and dad would be always be dad. And he would have thought that I wasn't. He, my dad, cop brain would have kicked in, and but anyways. But you know, I was. I didn't want to sound selfish. 
that I was putting myself in front of my mother because I'm not, and I didn't think that anything I did was gonna make, help find my mom. I, I didn't. I didn't think any of those things would help find my mom. And I didn't know that my mom was missing. And I didn't want to sound selfish. The only thing I want to do, Amy, is find her. I know. That's the only thing. I want to bring back that home to you. That look, that smile. I know. And I need to find out where did she go and what happened. I know. I want the same thing. But I honestly didn't think any errands that I did that morning would change. I mean, didn't affect anything. I know I should have told you, and I'm sorry. And that, that that pulls me back a little bit. You know what I mean? But so here for that being trying to confirm everything that you had told me, that would have been the time that I would have done. You know, moving on and be able to. And you're I know you wasted your time. No, I haven't wasted my time. Because this, this is my job. You spun your wheels no, because no. I didn't... I, we're a machine. We're a supercharged machine right now. I know that, okay? but you were spinning your wheels because no. I... See, but now you have the opportunity, Amy. Because we have moved on from that. To be able to, for you to put everything on the table. That is everything. And tell me a little bit more. Well, to be able to figure out what happened to your mom. What else can I tell you? I don't know anything else. The only thing I, I want to avoid, Amy, is be able to get the information back from the phone company. Okay? And that will open something else that contradicts a part of your story. I don't want, I don't want that to happen. And I need for you to look at me straight in the eyes. Okay. With your blue eyes to my dark brown eyes <laughs> and told me, Joel, the phone's gonna show me where I was. I was up in Chief in Chief Chief Line Gainesville. It won't show you that. It's gonna show me that you were up in Gainesville. Yes. On the weekend and you came back Sunday. It's gonna show you what time I was there. It's okay. gonna show you what time I left. It's gonna show you everywhere I was at. And it's gonna show me every phone call you did to Mary yes. and everybody you talked to. Yes. Okay, she's gonna Mary. show I'm oh, sorry. The, that lady that you said you talked to? Marie. Marie, I'm sorry. That was on Marie, Sunday. Marie, Mary, Mary. Well, that was, that was on Sunday mm -hmm. morning, okay. but yeah. It's going to sh show me even more details. So even going to show me the, the phone calls that you say that they disappeared from your phone about your mom. The phone calls that you made to your mom. Yes. So you're going to show me everything. It's going to show you everything. Inbound, out calling, you know, everything. outbound, you name it. Everything. Okay. It's going to show you So you, you promised to me right now, you swear that it's going to show me all that. Hand to God, I swear, it's going to show you everything. Okay. It's going to show you my exact location, times, everything. Okay. Hand to God. Okay. All right. My mother. I want her home. I want her home too. I want to go home right now and see her standing in the living room. That's what I want. I want to bring her home. I know. I want to go home and see her standing in the living room. You don't, you, you, you don't want to have in my heart right now? I want to get you home and get her home and see you guys reunite. That's what I want. I want to give her the biggest hug. I would never let her go. Never. What would you do different if you had the opportunity, Amy? If we, if we are with, if, when we find your mom, what will you tell her? What will you do if we have the power right now to take out, let's say there's a remote, to hit rewind? What will you do different? I would leave on Saturday. I would not leave. No? No. You would stay where? I would want to be at the house. I would, I would, I would want to be there. And maybe this would have happened. If you had your mom in front of you right now, what would you tell your mom? I loved her very much. 
and that she's the most important person in the world to me, that there isn't anything I want to do for her. And then I would hug her and I'd let her go. And see, Delta Dog with her. It's the first time she ever taught me. Well, she will tell you by you telling her those, those words. Well, what would be her reaction? She would cry and tell me that she loved me. And you're the young, youngest? Yeah. You're the baby? There's nine years between me and Judy. So you mommy's mommy's little girl. Mm -hmm. And she's my mommy. Mom will always be mom. She's not my mom. She's my mommy. She's always been my mommy. I'm trying to get you guys there is together. No, there's, I mean, I have never ever wanted to disappoint her or make her unproud of me or... <laughs> And I know that on a couple of occasions I have disappointed her and it killed me. Have you ever had an opportunity in your life to be able to make up for any wrongdoing or any mistakes, no matter how small the mistakes made into the biggest one, to make things right? How will you do it again? How, you, how will you make it up to her? How will you make it up to her? I would marry my ex-husband. <laughs> to start with that one, right? If that's the biggest one. Sorry. That, that, that's, that's the biggest thing. Because she was very disappointed when I married my ex-husband. And then the substance abuse that I had, she was very disappointed. I know I blame doing my ex-husband, but I wouldn't do that. Those have been my two biggest regrets in my life, because I know those have been two biggest things that disappointed her. And I wouldn't do it. I would listen to her. When she told me, don't marry him, I wouldn't. And I think my life would have been I know my life would have been completely different. She sounds, she sounds like she is a very wise woman. She is. She also sounds, uh, the way that you describe her, uh, she's very, her faith is, she has a lot of faith in God. She is. She's she's a, and she tries to be the best person that she can be. She's a, she's a very Christian woman. She doesn't cuss. She doesn't, she doesn't lie. She doesn't. She's the best woman I know. But you're aware of this she said right now. If I, if I could go back, I would be exactly like her. But she, whatever place you sat right now, in Colorado, whatever state or city you know, nearby us, I bet she'd be praying for you right now. Trying to send God's angels and her blessing, God's blessing to camp there around you. There I pray for her. It's a, my prayers to her. Begging God. I think she'll be doing the same thing for you guys too. Well, I've been praying for her and I've been begging God for you guys to be able to find her way home. Or somebody, not just, it, not just you, anybody, to please just God break her home. And I've been doing that since yesterday. When I saw that first suitcase. Or that blue and black one, actually, I should say. As soon as I saw that, I, my How gut, you felt? What you thought? Tell me anything. My, my gut, I, my heart sank. Why? Tell me, tell me, tell me exactly what you felt, what you thought, because, what had in your mind. Tell me. Because that duffel bag is always on the shelf, top shelf, in the garage on the far wall. And it is... Not that I knew they were in the attic, and my mother 
would never put anything in the attic because of the heat. It doesn't matter if she was, she wouldn't put clothes up there, she would give them to Goodwill. That, because that's who she is. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason her and I have a bag of stuff to support Goodwill. But it's, you know, it's, she would never do that. And as soon as I saw that, my heart sank because I knew something was definitely not right. And after that, I don't, I mean, my mind just kind of zoned down on me for a little bit because I didn't know what emotion to have. I mean, there was all of them. I didn't know whether to scream, cry, yell, beg. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know. I just knew it was not good because I know my mom. She would give it to goodwill so other people could use them for jobs or to start over. She wouldn't put them in the attic. She wouldn't. And she taught me that. That it's better to help people to start over than to let stuff just rot or let rats eat it. My mother is a wonderful person. And I want her home so bad. She's my best friend. If you had the information or let's say some kind of revelation from God or some kind of psychic powers <laughs> to of knowing where your mom is, will you let me know? Are you asking me if God told me where my mother yes. was at? Yes. If God would speak to you in your dream or yeah. are you praying for your mom, will you share that information with me? Yeah. If you have any knowledge of where your mom is, will you share that with me too? Yes. You will not hold it back? No. If somebody will tell you, hey, I believe your mom's over here or over there or I heard, I think I saw it, will you share that with me too? I would call you, tell okay. you. This doesn't person, matter the time. Doesn't matter the time. This person told me this, I would get their phone number or address. Full name, this person told me this, this is their information, please go talk to them. Gotcha. I don't care if it would be 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. I know you probably wouldn't like that, but I'm sorry. 24-7. I, in order Right to now, right now, can I tell you something? Right now, my goal, my goal and is from you, Mom. Okay? And I'm, me, I thought, my family, understands my calling, understands my career. I know. And there's sometimes during my career and my time you have to be where, taken away from your family. Where my family is is understanding. My family is not selfish that my wife has to see her husband and my kids need to see daddy. They go. understand you have to put them families. I, mean? and I gotta put them, them to the side to right. put, you know, well, now I don't consider you strangers because we've been talking, we're getting to know each other. Okay? My dad had to do the same thing. Exactly. I so you went through that. You I left. understand, yes. So for me to, for us to go out there, pour our life out on, on, you know, risk, take risks, and be able to bring closure and happiness and reunion. Right. And a second chance and opportunity for a family to redo their life. And be able to reconstruct that life together or even move on for whatever hiccup or whatever problem they're having okay I understand living with your parent you being probably the only child and your parent not having a partner or anything like that it gets frustrated okay my dad lives with me okay and sometimes I call it I need some me time so what, what do I do? I need to call my brother. He said, hey bro, I need for you to come over to the house. I don't want to bother your house. I need for you to come to the house. You need to give me a couple hours. I need to breathe. I need to go out of the house with my wife and my two kids. 
and be able just to have some family time one on one, you know, and let dad watch his what he loves, Fox News. You understand what I mean? I and, and, and I understand that it's difficult to live sometimes because, you know, from whatever generation they're from, they were raised differently. Right. Whatever generation you and me were born at is completely different. You understand yeah. what I mean? You know, and now I bet you, you you look at this new generation growing up, you see, I wasn't like that when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So this, that on um, misunderstanding, not understanding why they're being like that. And sometimes personalities, you understand what I mean? Especially when you spend so much time together. Well, see, that's why I think I'm, I'm extremely fortunate because one, my mother's allergic to cigarette smoke. So okay. I can go out back, she won't come out there if I'm smoking. Or I can say, hey, mom, I need to borrow the car. Mm -hmm. I'm running over to the beach just for a couple of hours, just for me time. She'd say, here, honey, here's the keys. And, you know, it, but I mean, and I feel very fortunate about that because her and I are able to do that. Yeah, me and my dad are able to do that. So, I mean, so like me and my me, 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 me and my dad. We never got on each other. Yeah, I, I go basketball games with my dad. I go to soccer games with my dad. I go to baseball games with my dad when, when there's some um, um, spring training here. He loves that. That's his favorite time. That's his favorite sport. You understand what I mean? But there's also that breather time that you need away from each other. Because there's sometimes, you know, remember, it's very different when you live under your own roof and under parents' roof. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, they got some rules and regulations that, you know what I mean, doesn't make no sense. Fortunately, you know? my mom didn't, she does it, we, we, she, you know, we were, yes, we were mother and daughter and we lived under the same roof, but when it came to rules, it was, it, you know, if you're gonna be gone, all night just let me know mm -hmm. or if you're going to be you know whatever time you're going to be back let me know um and she was good with that i mean it didn't matter it mm -hmm. was or if any company borrowed a car and she wasn't using it she would say here take it for a couple of days you know it wasn't it was more of a roommate type thing because we were best friends even though we were mother and daughter but Mom and I were so much alike, we didn't really get on each other's nerves. Gotcha. I mean, I, I feel very fortunate to say that. And there's nobody else in this world that will ever be like that. And that's the reason I want her home now. So if God comes to me and tells me where he thinks Mom is, or if somebody tells me something about Mom, I don't care what time it is or what day it is, I will call you with all the information and beg you to please go talk to me. And I don't care. It could be sound like the most ridiculous thing in the world. I would still call you. Um, have you ever run a course? Yes. Um, do you do it through the same company all the time? Enterprise. Enterprise. Yes. What's the last time you ran a car? Um, I think August. August? Uh -huh. Okay. And, um, I was going to tell you, um, and when you rent a car, um, who pays for it? I do. What? Do you use the there, was what, there was one time that uh, mom rented the car, but I gave her the money, whatever I got back. Um, but yeah, I pay for it and I use a credit card or um, a couple of times I used a prepaid card, um, but I stopped doing that only because you have to have, you know, um, and one time I used my debit card. so. But there was there was one time that mom rented a car for me and I paid her as soon as I I got back. How much was that? Two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. How much was the ticket to Ohio? Um, I would have to have my phone to verify. I think it was like three hundred and something. Okay, and what's through Southwest? I'm going. Up, I'm going. No, it was on Spirit. I'm going okay. up on the um, Friday and coming back on Monday. So it's only a weekend thing that you're going to go? Or right, I'm going to check everything out and then come back before I arrange to have everything. Um, 
and that was one of the reasons for the storage because I'm not mm -hmm. taking everything. Um, I'm taking what you need. I'm just taking what I need, um, and I just needed something a small, something small, and that's the reason I stopped because they had some. They have some really small ones, and I've seen them, but I didn't know they weren't open on Sunday. But since nobody came, I said I'll just deal with it later. If um, so, for example, you said you're going to leave what, Friday, come back Monday, mm -hmm. make sure everything is settled, everything is good. To try to. When were you planning to actually do the big move, like actually just go and... I was going to make that decision once I got up there. When you when you were scheduled again to start working over there? That is whenever I get up there is when they're going to give me my official start date. Okay. So I... Were you going to meet with your boss when you were going to go up there this um, weekend? On Monday. On Monday. No, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. On Saturday. 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. That's the reason we're talking. That way we can clarify things. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, because I mean, I mean, because originally I was supposed to meet him on Monday, but the flight back, leave, I have to leave there at like 7 o'clock, and I get back at like 10 something in the morning. So, and originally the flight didn't leave until later. Gotcha. So we bumped the meeting back. So. That I wanted to look at everything, go over everything, and make sure that that was what was going to be best for me. And at this point, unless mom is staying in that house on Thursday, I know they didn't go. I just, I can't. I can't go until my mother is standing back in the house. Gotcha. I wouldn't even go either, you know what I mean? You're the first person who's told me that. Everybody, all the other deputies, detectives, my sister has said, go. There's nothing you Hell can do. Hell no. Well, what they've told me, my sister. How would I go? My sister's exact words for me is, there is nothing you can do here that, that, that you can't do in Ohio. Still, you know, you got, you got, you know, and this is the way I see it. I don't know you see it the same way. But here's what I see. You got some big decisions to make when you get up there. And if you're not completely clear in your mind, 100%, you cannot make those decisions because those decisions are going to change kind of your life. If you're looking for a new career, I would be when you're going to relocate, exactly, you need to concentrate and be completely clear. So I don't blame you if you don't want to go. But she's telling me there's nothing I could do here that I can't do in Ohio, that I'm exactly the same distance apart. Well, well, that's the other detectives are saying I should that's go up the there reason because why. I need to concentrate on work. That's the reason why, I tell you, Amy. You make your own decisions. You forget about everybody else. I, Amy I makes did. a decision for Amy. And, and I, nobody can obligate nobody to do anything that they don't want. If Amy wants to stay because the situation is going on and your primary, your primary mission right now is to get mom home, right. you stay. You want to stay. Exactly. And I told Judy, I can't leave. I mean, Judy, I said, and I told her, I said, Judy. I can't leave not knowing what's going on with mom. And she goes, yes, you can. You just need to go. And I'm like, how can you say that? It's your mother. And I walked in the house and I'm like, there's no way I can do that. Mm -hmm. I can't go. Not until my mother is staying in that house. I don't care if it work would do me good. I'm not going to be able to concentrate until I know exactly that my mother's in the house, she's okay, and I can reach out and touch her. I'm not, I, I can't, I'm not going. That's my decision, and it's in their subject. I don't care what anybody else tells me. That's my feeling, and that's my mom. And you're the first person who's actually agreed with me. Everybody else has told me I'm wrong. And I don't understand how people can say that. You forget about people. Don't, 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 don't pay attention to what people say. About people's opinions, okay? You just don't pay attention to that. Let me step out. Let me give you some tissues, okay? All right, be right back. Thank you.
his plate on the floor. That's all. That's the best I can find. Yes. Girls, the girls next door, they can buy the other, the other nice fancy tissue. Oops, boy. I don't care. You okay? Yeah. 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 You said, when was the last time you, you ran out of car for Enterprise? When was that? I was in August. In August? What kind of car was it? Um, I would have to look at my phone. I have a, I can look. Do you remember the color at least? No. Was this big, small, four door, two door, sporty? Four door, four door it may be um, silver. Okay. Like a, um, That part of it is I love this car. Um, I would have to look at my phone. Okay. It, it, it would tell me. I think it was silver. You remember how much you paid for that? Um, not off the top of my head, no. Okay. It, it would tell me on my. I can look and it would tell Who, me. What credit card you used to the to to the one? Mine. Yours. Okay. Okay. No, we did. Uh, the silver one may have been the one that mom did and I did it for three days and that's when I gave her $200. Okay. Before that, it was also in August, I paid for that one. I, I don't know if it was silver or if it was black and silver. Okay. Same style car, um, same exact cars, different colors. Okay. How many credit cards do your mom has? Uh, um, Oh, and which companies are those com uh, credit card companies? Um, GM, which um, is like uh, Capital One, I believe. Okay. Um, Up Promise, and I'm not exactly sure who they're through. Um, and she has one in her name, and I have one in my name. We both do. And um, we both have the same PIN number on both of them. And then she has her CFE Platinum. And those are the only three I know about. Okay. So those accounts that you have, uh, you, that she has one, her name, the other one has your name on it. Mm -hmm. Who's the primary account holder? She is. She is. So mm -hmm. she gives you one with your name on it as a, like a permission for you to use that one. Yeah, I okay. can use it and I pay for what I use. She pays for what she uses, I pay for what I use. When was the last time you used one of her credit cards to buy anything? Um, four. Wait a minute. Um, is it September? Mm -hmm. June, July. Okay. What did you purchase? Um, Mommy asked me. It was, I used the GM car and it was a rental car. Fall off of the Bronco. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is your mom like into technology and stuff like that? Mom. She tries to be, and I try to help her with it. Okay. 
not very tech savvy, but she tries. Okay. Does your mom have an email account? Yes, she has two. Two? Oh. Which ones are those? Um, she has. Um, what are the email addresses? There's uh, tayhawk10 at aol.com. I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry, T A Y. T A Y. H A W K. H A W K. One zero. One zero? Uh -huh. At AOL.com. Uh, AOL.com. Mm -hmm. And then for um, the other one, it's Tayhawk uh -huh. 11. Yeah, we'll say Tayhawk 11. Mm -hmm. At Yahoo. Okay. Dot com. Do you got access to those email? That the Yahoo one is on my phone because okay. that's the what she sets up for for the GM um, and the up. So it comes to me. I don't have access to her AOL one. Okay. But because we share the two cards is the reason I have that on my phone. And that way, when I get an email, I let her know. Okay. But normally, when I get an email, because I put a charge. So, but if I didn't, I tell her, hey, mom, did you, you know. But the AOL one, I, that's her, that, that's all on her. Um, what can you tell me about, there's been any recent purchases by your mom that you know of? Um, because th th there's some things that I need for you to help me explain and understand, okay? I know she bought some stuff from um, Walmart. Okay, do you know those things? That she bought? That she bought? Um, I know she bought a uh, full-length mirror mm -hmm. uh, TV. Okay. Um, and because of the she, the TV in her TV room is going out, and I think she bought some jewelry. Okay, how big was the TV that she bought? She bought be a big one. I don't know exactly how big, but. I know she was bigger than mine. So. What credit card she used to do that? Do you pay for that one? I'm not exactly sure, but I'm going to guess Walmart. Do you remember how much was the whole bill? No. I didn't ask her. Did she tell you why she needed those things? No. Did she tell you exactly what kind of jewelry she bought? Other than just, you know, like earrings and necklaces because she wanted stuff, some stuff to wear to go with, you know, church stuff and, you know, different things like that. She was tired of not having, you know, different things to wear. I mean, I can't say anything about that. Everybody deserves to feel pretty. What will you say if I believe that your mom were not, was not the one that did those purchases? That my, I believe the person that made those purchases was you. Your mom find out that you were making those purchases and she didn't like it. Why would I make the purchases? I don't know. I don't you know. have access to the account. You got access to the emails. I don't have access to I just don't see a 79 year old woman buying a 50 inch TV. I have a 42 inch TV. I don't need a 50 inch TV. Okay. Understand? And I think she got upset at you. Those are not my purchases. I don't need the jewelry. I've got plenty of jewelry. Mm -hmm. I don't need the jewelry. I don't need a 50 inch TV. And I don't need a full length mirror. Gotcha. Um, 
So did she talk to you about those purchases? Did she mention anything to you? When she, she did those those purchases? Yeah, she asked me if I could help her with them. Okay. And I of course said yes. When what do you mean to help her with them? What do you mean? She was ordering them on the computer, so she wanted help with them. What computer did she use? She actually used my phone. Your phone? Yeah. So you did all the transactions on the phone? All I did was go through and she told me what she wanted and I said okay and whenever it started coming up I told her she needed to put in her numbers, you know, her, her account numbers and all this other stuff. I had her do that and when she did that I told her I said okay if you're done hit continue. I didn't watch her do it. So, you know, I just I just told her when she got done to hit continue. And when she got done, she said okay. And I had her, I said, have you reviewed the order? She said yes. I said okay, hit continue, submit or whatever. She did and confirmation came up. And that was it. But they, it was not for me. I just helped her with it. Because, I mean, I'm taking my 42-inch TV with me, so I don't need a 50-inch. I don't need jewelry, and I don't need a full-length mirror. I mean, these are things that I don't need, nor do I want. Okay. What else did she buy? Has she made any other purchases other than that? Other than those purchases? Mm, um, not that I'm aware of. I mean, I've got some stuff that I'm saving that I haven't bought yet um, from Walmart, but it's for betting. But and I haven't bought it yet, but around what time was that, me. Around what time did you, did you guys make those purchases? Around what that time? When? And what day? Um, Friday or Saturday? Around what time? I don't know. Was daylight still out? Or was it dark? I believe it was daylight. Okay. Before dinner? After dinner? Before lunch? After lunch? Uh, I would say after lunch. I don't really, I don't wear a watch and I don't really, okay. Okay. I don't pay. But you got a watch on your phone, you know, it seems like you always have a lot of time on your phone. But I don't, I, my phone is, I don't always have, my phone is normally dark. Well, well, so it sounds like you're always on the phone, you know, you, you use your phone a lot. I do, it, but it, I it, 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 it just, the thing I don't understand, it's like, she has a perfectly capable computer at her house. And then you guys use your phone. To make such a big purchase, we've done that before. I mean, it's we've sit in her TV room and do things, a, a lot of different things on my phone. She likes my phone. I mean, it's nothing unusual. It's faster than the one that's in there because she hates how slow it is, and it's. It's nothing unusual about it. Anytime I make purchases, I use my phone. How about the laptop? Her laptop. I don't. Judy bought her that laptop. I I actually thought she had it with her because she's normally in the TV room, and the detective is the one who found it underneath her bed. I I didn't know that it was there at the house. I thought she had it with her. But that's something that Judy bought her. I didn't, I don't have anything to do with the laptop. Okay. I know she doesn't like the laptop because it has Windows 8 on it and she hates Windows 8. She refuses to use it. So she has like an iPad or a tablet, anything like that? Um, she has, it was a little one, an iPad. Okay. Yeah. Um, she has one of those. It was also with the laptop, which I thought she had with her. Because that's normally in her TV room. That's the reason I thought she had it with her. But he found it under her bed. But I, again, that's something that she does. Okay. 
And I think that's just mainly got like books and solitaire or yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. She knows how to use that pretty good. Understands yeah. it pretty good. No, no, no. She may need so like to turn her on. She she, doesn't, she doesn't like turning either one of them on. Oh wow, gotcha. I mean, she hates Windows 8 that much. Um, I don't think I've seen her use the laptop and and the iPad or did you about her? I haven't seen her use that since probably the beginning of the year. She just doesn't she doesn't like it. I mean, and she's not gonna tell any Judy she's not gonna tell Judy her feelings. I did think she did take it with her, but You've been complete and with me this whole time? Yes, sir. I know we cleared up some stuff that was kind of cloudy before. Yes, sir. I am. And you put it on the table. Yes, sir. I am. Okay. And you swore that everything you had told me has been the truth? Yes, sir. Okay. You swear? I swear. Okay. Hand to God. If I can help my mom, technically, I always have. I try to teach her. I write stuff down for her. But when she gets overwhelmed, I'm like, Mom, here, just let me do it. You tell me. But when it comes to the numbers and stuff like that, you need to put this, 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 and this in. And just hit continue or submit whatever it says. And then it, we go from there. And then that's it. And then I keep her updating. But there is no jewelry I need. I do not need a full length mirror. And I have absolutely no use for a 50 inch TV when I have a 42 inch TV that I'm taking with me. Did you guys pick that up already? You guys were, yeah. Got delivered to the house already or? She requested for it to be delivered. Why didn't you want to guess there? Do you know? I don't know what date she picked. No. Okay. I'm going to throw something at you right now. I'm going to share this with you, okay? Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you think happened to your mom? You think she's with Rose? I want to believe she is, yes. Okay. You said you, that you want to believe that she's with Rose, so that means that you don't believe she's with Rose. Why do you think right now, all of that, you, you want to believe that she's with Rose? I want to believe with Rose because if she's with Rose, then she's okay. If she's not with Rose, then my fear is... What's your fear? She's not okay. And I don't want to think that. In what way that she's not okay? Somebody's hurt her. Somebody is hurting her. Somebody is holding her and not letting her go. Because she's not going to believe she's with Rose and she's okay. And that y'all are going to bring her home. I don't want to think of the other things. It's too hard for me to think of the other things. I want to have faith that I want to believe that she's with Rose and y'all are going to find her and bring her home. Safety. And stand her in our living room so me and my sister can go, you scared the hell out of us. Don't ever do it again. That's what I want to believe. 
I don't want to believe anything else. If I believe anything else, I'll curl up into a ball and never stop crying. That's why I'm not really. You don't know where your mom is at right now. You have no idea. Yeah. You know you will tell me, right? Yes. If I even had a clue or hint or a, anything, I would tell you in part. I would ask you to send everybody to go get them. They have absolutely no idea. I wish I did. Well, we'll define your mom. She's been at the house the whole time. My mom's been at the house the whole time. But she's dead. What? Your mom been at the house this whole time. And she's dead. Mm -hmm. she's, she passed. No. No, 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 no! Just be in the backyard the whole time. No! in the backyard. No, 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 no. She was buried in the backyard the whole time. No, no, no. And flowers placed on top of her. No. for me to lie to you, Amy. No. Telling you the truth. We're in the backyard. Your mom. Your mom mm. is passed, mm. died, is dead. No. And was buried in the backyard of her own house. No. And then they put flowers. Not just natural flowers, fake plastic flowers on top of her with fresh soil to make it seem that it was a nice beautiful garden. <laughs> Who will do that, something like that to this sweet old lady? Hmm? Who will do that to her? She even deserved it. No, she didn't. I don't know. Hmm? I don't know. She didn't deserve that. My mother was a Christian woman. She's a good woman. She did not deserve that. No. no. My mom 
Gone is not gone. Please, God, please tell me she's not gone. No. Trying to figure out. She was buried. She was buried. And they put flowers on top. I'm trying to understand it myself. That's the reason why I'm trying to get talk to you. For you to, to be able to tell me without holding anything back and be completely truthful and tell, to figure out what, you, what happened to your mom. What's the reason why this happened to your mom? I don't know of any reason why this would happen to my mother. My mother has never done anything to anybody for them to do that. I know you've never met my mother, but she has never done anything to anybody for them to do that to her. She is a decent, good Christian woman that would give you her shirt off of her back. There is nothing she wouldn't do for her friend. My mother didn't deserve it, and there is nobody that I know that would do that to her, or would have any reason to do that to her. I don't, she's never made, I don't know anybody she's made mad. I don't know. I don't know. Now you understand why it was so important for me to confirm and reconfirm where you've been, who you were with, stuff like that. You thought I did that to my mom. I'm not saying that you that you did it to your mom. It just this how severe this investigation, how deep just got into right now. I'm trying to cover all my tracks. Every entrance, every exit, every window, every crack, everything of this investigation. You understand what I mean? And that's the reason why I'm asking you to be truthful, completely truthful with me and tell me where you were, who you were with, you know, what time was this, what time was that. I understand. They just went from a missing person investigation to a homicide, to a murder. They just went from a, another human being taking the life of another human being. A homicide, a murder.
My mother has never done anything to deserve some meeting with it. She's a nobody but he can pull it, take him out of the life. Where's the bank card that you used yesterday to withdraw the money? Uh, Where's I got the house? I believe it's in my purse. Is it your purse? Mm -hmm. yeah, that bank card has your mom's name on it? Mm -hmm. okay. Have you ever taken money from your mom? taking advantage of your mom, income, situation, knowing that your mom, you know, loves you very much, um, babies you a little bit more than your other siblings, and you use that to take advantage of her? Because yeah. for me, I know me growing up, you know, I knew, I knew what kind of face and what kind of excuse to tell my parents yeah. for them to buy me stuff. You guys ever argue about money? No. About, fin about finances? No. Accusing mom you spending too much money? Amy you spending too much money? No. We never did. understand this, Amy. I don't even understand this. Captain, I have what person took out the time and energy to hurt an innocent older female who loves her daughter very much, her daughters. I know she loved her other daughter. Okay. How many kids she has total? How many? Two. Two. Who loves bored little girls very much will do whatever she can for her daughters and this is the way that her life ended. I don't know. Hurt and buried in her own backyard. And then put soil on and then fake flowers. Then really, damn, and somebody really thought this through. I don't know. I don't know. But then the thing is that they thought it, thought it through, but then just, just forgot a couple of little details. See, that person thought that, she, that he or she thought everything, but left a couple of details out. Good thing, right? Mm-hmm. Very good thing. Because that's when that the, the forensic part opens up, you know, the evidence part opens up. Right. You know, we'll be able to put everything together right. and put that puzzle together. Right. Understand? That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Very good thing. But I don't know any 
anybody that would do that. And I'm certain my mother doesn't know anybody who would do that. He's trying to figure this out. <coughs> you know, that's what that's what we're trying to do. I know. about Carrie? Do you think we will do anything like that? God, no. There's no way. Carrie loved my mother. He's the type of person, he can't even stand, if he sees a, a man yell at a woman. There is absolutely no way, no. Not possible. I wouldn't be around somebody like that. Going back to the purchases at Walmart, you stated that you helped your mom purchase those things yes. to do the, the transaction online. You, you said that you that she wanted you to. She wanted the items to come to the house, be delivered to the house, you said? Yes. Okay. But you have no idea when they're going to get there. Yeah. Okay. Why is your phone showing that, he, that you've been tracking the packages? I haven't been tracking the packages. You have my phone. You have my phone since yesterday. Okay. How, how could I be tracking the packages? I don't know. That's what your phone's showing. I, I, there's no way for me to track the packages. You mm -hmm. have my phone. Okay. I can't track those packages. Not if you got it. I haven't been in the house. You've got my phone. There's no way for me to track the packages. I, mean, I, I, just, I, I just give you the facts while your phone shows. Does that okay, what I mean? But, but I, mean? I just give you the facts while your phone but, shows. But does that make sense? You know what I mean? No, I, I'm just saying. I, I just give you the facts I understand. of what your phone shows. That's all. I know, but what you know? I showed is what my phone is showing is I've been tracking the packages. You've had my phone. I have not been allowed in my house. I haven't had my phone. I still don't have my phone. The tracking shows that the last time your phone went into the website of tracking the packages was on the 20th before law enforcement was contacted? No. Okay. I'm, again, I'm just giving you the facts. Okay. Or what your phone states. Okay, but no. You understand what I mean? It just... I, I, I understand. I'm going based on what your phone says. I, I, I understand, but no. Okay. I can tell you flat out, no. There was no reason for me to track them. Unless she asked me to. And obviously she didn't.
so I would have no reason to track the packages. They weren't mine. It's so weird. It was the last phone call. Oh, actually, somebody heard your mom was at 8 o'clock on Saturday, which that was the 19th. And then, somehow, nobody had heard from your mom since Saturday night. And then all of a sudden, mysteriously, your phone shows that somebody mysteriously tracked the package that, or the order that your mom made either Friday or Saturday that you said that you, that you helped her with that purchase. And like you just said right now, that you only will track the package if your mom will ask you to do it. Am I right or wrong? You Is that accurate or well, that's not accurate? Wait a minute. Okay, so you're saying that my phone is showing that package was... Everything on phones shows a, a timestamp. Yeah, what I say I, is day I and time. I understand that part. Okay, the timestamp that shows the last person that went into a web, the website tracking, trying to track the package was on the 20th, it shows the time before law enforcement was contacted. So that was before we made contact with you and your sister. That was not me. I can tell you that was not me. And then right before that, you know, right now, you know, you say that you will not track it, you'll not be tracking the package on your own unless your mom will ask you to do it. Right. That's how I know it was not me. She made the order, and Amy. that was. Amy. I know we're. Let's be, I know let's be sincere go. with each other. I, Listen to me. Bottom line, right now. Bottom line, right now, Amy. Right now, Amy. Your mother was murdered, and I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. I know that. I'm asking you some simple question. That I got the facts to follow to be able to sustain it, and you still lying to me. I'm not lying. I have How about a simple question. I have not tracked the package. Did I go on Walmart's website? Maybe. But did I track the package? No. I could have gone on Walmart's website. It's not unusual for me to do that, but did I track the package? No. Your mom was murdered in her own house, wrapped up in garbage bags, and buried in the back yard. I don't need to know this. And then, they took a de they were decent about it. To put soil, fresh soil, and then put some flowers on it, on her grave. The person who did that has more than enough time to do and plan this. The person who did it had a reason why to do it. Your mom wasn't picked randomly. She was targeted. And the person who committed this knew your mother. And your mother knew that person. Your mother found something out about that person and confronted that person. And this is what happened. This is the result of that confrontation. That person knows that time is on their side and took their time to clean everything up. Rock your mom, your mom's body in plastic garbage bags, go to the backyard, dig a hole, please drag your mom's body, stop, 
to that hole. Please stop. And bury her. <sighs> and probably out of respect, let's put some fresh soil on it and some and some fake flowers, some plastic flowers <sighs> on. Amy, Stop. you gotta talk to me, Amy. You I, have to talk to me, Amy. I didn't have anything to do with that. You have to talk to me, Amy. I'm talking to you. I did not have anything to do with you that. You need to stop talking. You need to stop lying. You need to stop yes. telling me everything that you know. And you mean to be completely honest with me. For the sake of your mother, Amy. For the sake of your mom. Now is the time, Amy, that you know that mom is not going to come back home. You have an opportunity to stop being honest with me and fix things up. And be completely honest with me for us to be able to do our job. That's the only thing I can tell you, huh, Amy. That's the only thing I can say. I don't know anything about any of that. I don't know anybody who would do that. I certainly wouldn't do that, especially to my own mother. Now uh, people sit in this same chair. I know. Telling me the same thing. I know. Me. I know. And you can't even be sincere with me about some other questions that I have asked you. I had to give and more and more and put more on the table for me to be able to get it out from you. with my mother. I would benefit none from this. At all. You got access to her bank account. You got access to her financial situation. Credit cards, bank accounts. If she's dead, no I do not. My sister does. My sister has control over everything. Well, you took out money with her permission. Took twenty five hundred dollars, paid she for the higher trip. Took I don't know another six hundred dollars two times through the year, another four hundred dollars that she gave me. You know what I mean? She gave me that. And now you sitting me here that your, your sister is the one that got all the benefits of it. She. Takes, she has the, and according to what mom has set up, Judy does the financial power of attorney, all that stuff. Not me. Interesting. Very interesting. But I had absolutely nothing to do with what happened to my mother. Very interesting. Why is that interesting? Just, just look at all the, all, all the money spent this last week. All the money spent on this last week. Money taken out of our account on, 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 on Sunday, which I had to confront you about it. Because you would not tell me about that. You told me from the beginning that you went from the house to Westgate to me, whatever her name is, and come back straight home. And I told you why. Yeah, I know, I know. And I had her permission to do it. But then after that, then, you know, you finally came out, that you left the house, met a ride right on 192, made a U-turn, stopped in front of the junkyard, talked to Marie for I don't know how long, then you went to the bank, then when you went to the other storage place, then you went to talk well, to the lady, to or something State. like that, and, and then came, come back home. You understand? Know, You have control over her finances. You have uh, control over email. You have control over credit card. You have control over debit card. You have control over bank, checks, 
you name it. You had an open book of your mom. Finances. I didn't have control over her checking, I mean, her checks or... I don't have her credit cards. GM up, they'll be canceled. So, I don't know where you think I have control. Before you went to Gainesville on Saturday, did you stop at any gas station? No. Here in town, in St. Cloud? Mm -hmm. Kissimmee? Mm -hmm. I'm not lying to you. I'm not. There's some stuff in your story, Amy. I'm going to be completely sincere with you. That is still a little bit cloudy and fuzzy to me. Okay. Just there's no reason from the beginning for you to hide all those things from me. I've been throwing you, the whole time we've been sitting here today, I've been throwing you facts at you to try to confirm where you've been, where you haven't been. And when I give you almost the whole thing, that's when you go, Kling. oh, that's right, yeah, I stopped at that place. Stop at that place. Yeah, I did this. I did that. How do you think that made me feel? What do you think makes me feel, you know, questioning myself? I want to trust Amy. I want to believe her. But I can't. It sounds in your mind. And then, I get hit. It feels like a baseball bat right to my chest while they found the house. How about you, Mom? I stood on that back porch not knowing that she was there. I didn't think it makes me feel. When you were standing on that back porch. I was smoking a cigarette. When? On Sunday. What time? After my sister left. I went outside, smoked a cigarette, and I was staying there, and I had no idea she was there. I didn't think there was smoke. I don't know. You tell me. I'm being completely open on this side. I was standing here smoking a cigarette and I had no idea that my mother was in the backyard that buried. And then I went inside, laid down, and took a nap while my mother was laying in the backyard. Ron, what, what time was that? That your sister left? Do we have to ask her? I don't know. How long do you... you 12.30. How, how long did your sister stay out of the house? Um, From the time she got home? Joy was supposed to call at noon. Um, by 12.15, she hadn't. So my sister left between... 12, 30, 12 15 and 12 30. After she left, I stepped out and smoked a cigarette, went back inside, changed clothes, and laid down, watched 10 15 minutes of TV, and fell asleep 
and woke up to Judy hollering my name with the law enforcement officer. And I didn't even look at what the clock said. I just jumped up real quick. I thought they had found mom. That was my first thought. That they had located her. Yeah, who would do something like this? That's the question everybody's asking. Amy. An animal? A stick animal? Somebody think that has some psychological, some problems or some emotional problems? Could. Okay. I don't know what people. I don't know what a person thinks or what goes to their, their mind when they do something like that. Based on my training experience, I mean, as a law enforcement officer, as a police officer, in every situation where somebody gets hurt, where somebody argue, argue or somebody fights, there's always three sides of each story. It takes two people. For something, most of the things happen. Then you got one story that belongs to him or her, and another story that belongs to the other side, and right in the middle, when something happened, which the middle one is the real one, and that if there's any other witnesses or any video to prove, the only person that knows is God. You understand what I mean? Yes. And in life, everybody makes mistakes. We're human beings, we're not perfect. Where is one mistake? You understand what I mean? Well, there's some things in life, emotionally and mentally, that takes over. That blinds people. Follow either argument or a disagreement. You know, somebody getting caught doing something that they're not, they're not supposed to be doing to be on somebody else's back. Somebody got jealous. Somebody, you know, that, that hit of the moment. Somebody do bump into somebody else or something that will take that person to the edge for that person to take those horrible actions and hurt a human being which sometimes end up in taking that person's life the good thing about life is that life always gives you a second chance and God always forgives and it's up to that person to take that opportunity to make things right, to clear their mind, clear their conscience, and take that evil or whatever thing inside that is carrying them out, holding them back from keep moving forward to be happy with life. However, that person needs to make that decision needs to take that road to stand up and say, here's what really happened. We got into, we got into it, it was an argument, stuff like that, I lost it, blah, 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 blah. You understand what I mean? Then when I notice, I freaked out. Based on my training experience, always ends up like that, most of the times. It's up to that person to take a stand, Make that decision to come out with the truth. Now, I'll tell you this right now. I have seen the change in people, the relief. They feel forgiven. Not, yet, not, not just by just God, by the person they hurt, by the family members. But if that person doesn't forgive themselves and take the opportunity to make things right, I think it's too late. It's too late. You got that person has one more opportunity to make things right. If that person doesn't take the opportunity, that's up to that person. But that person cannot later on turn around and say, I never had the opportunity. 
that person can never deny, I never had the opportunity to tell myself the story. Say, this is what really happened. It took me this, I got this emotion and stuff like that, it took me to the edge. I'm telling you, Amy, is that I need for you to start being honest with me. There's still a couple blank spots that are blank that you haven't been completely truthful for with me. Which are? Where you been the whole weekend? Saturday, Chiefland. Sunday, here. Okay. Sunday night. Here, literally mm -hmm. in this building, mm -hmm. and at my dad's. Friday, I was at home. And you did tell me that you received phone calls from your mom on Saturday night, right? One. Okay, a phone call. And it was after what? Eight eight thirty? You said? No, it was between eight twenty and eight twenty-five. Okay. And then, what I could recall, and correct me if I'm wrong, you also stated that you attempted to call your mom. And because she tried to get in contact with her, but you said that it will say, will not ring, it will say, this, this caller doesn't have the voicemail set up and you can leave a message. Correct. Okay. And how many times you tried to call her back? Once. Once. And that was Saturday night? Yes. And once it said that, I mean, I know that my sister tried throughout the night, but if the mailbox isn't set up, it's not set up. So. Okay. The only thing I could hope is that she would call. Okay. Gotcha. I'm gonna step out real quick, right? I'll be right back.
need you need to use the restroom or anything like that? Are you good? You sure? Alright, be right back. Amy, what medication is that? Um, this is um, for my heart. Okay. And this is for my blood pressure. And I was supposed to pick another one up today, but I have to do it by 6 o'clock, and obviously I don't think that's going to happen. And you have it with you just because you need it you take it as needed or do you um, take it at a certain time this one is at one and this is it twice a day and i have taken it at certain times I understand. and they brought them down to me down to my dad's house because it was time for me to take them okay. so when they came by when y'all came by i just picked up everything and brought them with me okay because i was under the understanding that i was going to get my phone and then going home I understand. some some crazy developments happened like but more than crazy. You know what the, the the issue is, I think, is um is the, the lack of logic that's going into what you're saying and 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 the 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 untruths that you told us already. That's the that's the that's the biggest problem, because when someone lies to you, especially in a circumstance and like like this, I know, and I corrected it with him. No, you 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 corrected. Yeah, sure, but you got a. That looks like you're hiding I know, something. I know. And. And I'm not. Well, let me tell you. And I know it looks like it, and it looks bad. This is. I just want to tell you the way I see it. Okay. Um, You've always been the blunt one. Uh, and I have that reputation. That's, that's fine. I, it's, I, all, I, it's, I don't, it's all I, me coming out, though. It, it, no, I like blunt, so okay. please. Friday, um, the 18th, um, you make a call to your mom um, late at night, about 11 p.m. It doesn't appear that there's any talking going on, but you call her number from your phone. On the 18th? On Friday, the 18th, late at night, probably about 11 p.m., your phone makes a phone call to your mother's phone. Okay. Cell phone? House phone? Uh, I'd have to check on that. 
one or the other. Um, I don't know where you were Friday night. I was at home. Okay, so. So was she. I understand. I'm just telling you that this is Brett telling you what he's seeing, okay? Okay. That's, that's weird. Saturday, there is no communication between your phone, your mother's cell phone, or the house phone. That's what I don't understand because there All was. Right. I've been, and I'm having trouble understanding it too because um, these, what I know from these records, I've been a detective for 20 years. All right. Now, recently, in the last 10 years, we've had the magic of cell phones. And I tell you what it is, is cell phone records are accurate. They tell you exactly what it is. It can go up into a court of law. Um, the custodian of records will come and testify and show you how accurate these records are. I've never seen them inaccurate. And this isn't your phone I'm looking at. These are the records from the phone company. I understand that, but okay. there, was, there, there should be a record okay. from a call from my mother shoulda, coulda, and then from me to her. Shoulda, coulda, woulda, there's not. There should be, though. Okay, but there's not. This is just me, what I'm seeing, okay? Okay. okay. So we move on, um, and now it's, it's Saturday. And Saturday, a lot of what appears to be weird stuff is going on. Um, your mother buys you a plane ticket. I understand that she, she'd be more than happy to do that for you, okay? Um, we got a ton of purchases online. Um, we got a wire transaction um, for $2,500 from your mother's account to yours. Not wire transaction, check, but okay. You know what I'm saying, electronical, electronic transaction. Mobile person. deposit. Right. Um, so we're, we're talking almost like five grand in one day. Okay, then you say that then, no, the twenty-five that went into my account was for me. I understand that. I'm just talking amounts of money but added the up. The purchases that that was with my mother's. I'm telling you how we're looking at it because it's coming from your phone. This is what Brett's seeing. That's all I'm telling you. Okay, but she had me. I I heard the whole thing. Okay. I know, I've heard you explain it before. I don't okay. want to explain myself. Now. Okay. 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 I'm sorry. So we have all that money that, that's shifted hands, this is what I'm seeing, on Saturday. Now you say that Carrie and you call one another. Mm -hmm. um, I'd have to look at the records, but I don't see that call anywhere. I don't know when you made the plans. I don't know. It sounded kind of spontaneous that you guys decided. Yeah. So that when I'm thinking around 3, 2, 3 o'clock, you guys decided you were going to get together because you said you were out of the house by five. Yes. Okay. So I'm thinking about at least. He would have had to. After he noon. left at three in order to be there by five. Right. So I don't see that communication, and I'll have to double check that one because I don't. I don't remember seeing that. Then you tell me last night the route that you guys always take. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have a GPS that's still in your purse. He has a GPS. And the way that the, 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 the oh, not the GPS, a, 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 GPS, a, a, a transponder, a, a, a e-pass. I didn't take it with me. You, but this is, I'm going to get to that. Okay. You have an e-pass and Carrie has an e-pass. Mm -hmm. So you guys, as far as you say, you go up the turnpike and let's just stop there. You guys go up the turnpike. You say that he goes through one transponder. One, one area, and then he pays for the rest, mm -hmm. okay? Um, what I know about the turnpike is that no matter if you go under there or you go into the stall to pay, there's they, still they a reader attack. there. There's right. a reader at everywhere you go. They take with your attack. And we're not getting any of that from your e-pass or his. Now, I say yours because your e-pass is still in your purse inside the house. Okay. I put it back in there, but I took it okay. out. <laughs> That's what doesn't make sense to me. Um, that you have, you got home, and this is where one of the lies comes in. You tell us you got home at eleven, but then you said you got home earlier than that. For some reason, you decided okay. not to tell us the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's. What is the truth to that statement? What time did you get home? Nine in the morning. So you left. You seven. both left at 7 o'clock. Yeah. You get here. Does he get out and go in the house? No. He drops you off. Yeah. 
you immediately go inside. Is your mom there? Okay. Your mom's not there. You say that the keys are inside the home. That you don't have keys to the car, that your mom has the keys. And you find the spare keys inside the home. Is that right? The spare key was on the counter in right. the kitchen. So you would But I had to go through the gate right. into the back door. So the house is locked up. Yeah, and I went through the gate. I opened it. Mm -hmm. I have a key to the house. And that's important that the house is locked up. Yes. I'm going to get to that in a minute. And I saw that there was a key there. Okay. I Let me continue. First down and you immediately get on the phone. Um, you know the car's there. Mm -hmm. You know your mom's not there. You have this, and I'm going to call it a suspicious phone call that your mom gives you, apparently, that's not on the record. And she tells you something that she's going to California to console a woman who's, whose husband just died, and she's that driving. That Saturday. Okay. But what I'm saying is you come into the empty house knowing that that occurred the night before. Yeah. Okay? And the first thing you do is you call up Tasha for some cigarettes instead of wondering where your mom's at. So... You get in the car, you drive, this is what you tell us first of all, and you do the tricks, the cigarette transaction. Well, I had text Tasha. I understand. This is just what I'm seeing, okay? You, you go and, and you say you trade the cigarettes and I come right back. This is what, what your first story is, okay? Mm -hmm. Then we start getting acts, uh, 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 we're, we start getting facts and, and we start understanding situations. And, and now we're looking at it, and we're now we're looking at it going, what is going on here? Okay. I changed my story. So now we have your mother, somebody spending your mother's money on Saturday. Now we, we have a couple uh, um, purchases on Sunday who we find out is you. Not purchases, but a withdrawal from a bank uh, along with other purchases as well, I might add. Um, and we have you with your mother's card withdrawing four hundred dollars from the bank. Did I have permission from? I From how? How do you have permission? Your mom's not even there. I had I got permission from her. She gave it to me on Friday. She... That doesn't make sense. Well, it may you not got make... You got permission to use it Sunday? Here's my card. I'm going to be leaving unexpectedly. So here's my card. She gave it to me on Friday. She said you can withdraw four hundred dollars. Does it make I sense? I didn't know she was leaving on Saturday. Okay, I'm just telling you how I feel. And I, I understand that, but she said here's I, my card. I, that does not make sense. And not only she gives you the card to hold, she doesn't think she's going anywhere. She gets this emergency. I don't know that. Okay. Well, she gets an emergency situation where you said, well, she kind of sounded like a little, maybe she was upset. And then she bolts to, she bolts to Colorado within, within minutes because your sister runs to the, the house and there's no one there. Right. Okay. Then you say, okay, I lied about when I got home. I still don't understand why you did that. Uh, I, I did hear that you didn't want to look like um, a bad person, you didn't want to do that, but if she gave you permission to get $400 out of the bank, how is that gonna make you look like a bad person? You don't even talk to your sister. You don't talk to your father. Who is gonna call you a bad person for that? Now this makes me think, Amy. This makes me think. There's I some. I talk to my dad. There, you barely talk to your dad. Is is it every day? Not every day. Okay. But... How is he going to know you got four hundred dollars out of the bank? And why would he care? Your mother gave you permission. You know what that makes me think? They say there's a, there's something going on here that I don't understand. I still don't understand it. But we're going to get to that. Okay. You go to the bank. Did you go to a gas station somewhere and get something? Either the day I think it was on Saturday. I think it was in the morning. Maybe around I made in my, any day Saturday. Did you go to the gas station? Did you get no. gas, make a no. purchase, anything? No, I did not drive the car on Saturday. Okay, because we're someone's giving us that there was there was a different purchase made. Now I haven't got the video on that yet, but that's okay. coming. I didn't drive the car on Saturday. Okay. You didn't drive the car all on Saturday. No. 
So then, let's move on. It's Sunday. Um, you're home now. You've been home since 9 o'clock. Your mother's not there. Your sister calls you and say, no. are you home yet? No. You call your sister and you say, I will call you when I get home? Yes. And this was at, we can get the time off the report, but this is... Um, I call her or I text her. You text her, that's fine. Uh, you communicate with her and say, I'll call you when I'm near the house, 15 minutes from the house. But you were already home. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is another thing I'm thinking. Okay, this is kind of strange. Maybe it's not for you, but it would be for me. So then, she never gets a call. She pulls up in the driveway, and you come walking out of the house. You know, I did call her and say, I, I did call her. Okay. And say, and told her that I'm, I'm almost there. I'm telling you what I'm, what I'm looking at, because that's not the story I got. Now, you, you got to remember, I've talked to way more people than you. Okay, okay so, so there's a difference between your story and other people's story. Okay, but on my phone it should show that I called her. Okay, I can double check, that's fine. And All said, right? it, yes, and then, yeah, I did. But according to you, we can't trust your phone or the report. But so, I did call her. So then. You can trust her phone. So that, I trust all the reports, believe me. Mm -hmm. So then. I don't. Well, of course you don't, because it's making you out to be a bandit right now. No, I don't trust them because there's things missing that I know should be there. We've already established that these reports have made you give us some more truths. That you were lying for no reason, unless I can think of, is you're trying to hide something. I'm not. Now, I'm going to get into some uh, the terrible thing that occurred. Um, we, we have a dead body. Please don't. I, I'm, not, I'm not going to get into, into specifics, okay? He, um, he I don't, I don't, already... I'm assuming that it's your, your relative, your mother, okay? He's already told me. I know. I'm not going to get into details, but this is what I want to say. Um, a person who breaks into a home, and I, and I don't know if this is what you're thinking or not, a person that breaks into a home and commits a horrible act doesn't clean up like that. And then not do anything for advancement. Not only that, they don't make it look like your mother left to go somewhere. That doesn't happen. I can tell you in 10 years of homicide with every, every presentation I've ever gone to, that doesn't happen. Unless it was somebody close. I'm not saying, Amy, that you did anything. But what I'm saying is, with everything I'm seeing, with all these facts and all this craziness going on, it makes me think that you're not giving us everything you know. And I can tell you one thing, the evidence will prevail. It will prevail. There's no getting around it. And for the person that steps into this room, and lies and lies and lies and lies and then at the end the evidence prevails guess what there's no more talking there's no more saying this is what happened it didn't happen like you think there's no more of that it's just done because we don't go back we don't go back and talk we try to reason with people. We try to give them the benefits of, of coming without everything you know. If, if you had something to do with it, if you didn't. But I tell you one thing, Amy. I know deep down in my heart that you're holding things back from us. But I'm not. You are. I'm not. I, I'm telling you, Amy, you're not going to make me believe that. You're not going to make me believe that someone entered that home and then locked up afterwards and cleaned up afterwards and made everything look pretty. Whether you're trying to protect somebody, no. whether you're trying to protect yourself, no. well, then I don't understand why you'd be hiding all this stuff. I'm Just not that, hiding anything. It, it, I'm telling you that's the way it looks, Amy. I, but I'm not hiding anything. I am not. You're not telling me everything I you know. I don't know what happened. I'm not hiding anything. I didn't 
do anything to my mother. I didn't say you did. And I didn't clean the house. I didn't make everything look pretty. I didn't say you did. I didn't do anything. Okay, maybe you did. Tell me who did. I don't know. I wish I could. I if I knew, I would tell you in a heartbeat. If I'm wrong about this, I'd be very surprised. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I hope you are right. But I tell you what, the evidence will prevail. It will prevail. And it's going to show that I... I, I hope so. I... Because I, I would never do that. I don't... I'm not saying you would. I, but I wouldn't protect somebody who would do that. I, I don't... I wouldn't even... I wouldn't even want to know somebody who would do that. Well, you know what? I would say the same thing. I just... In your job, you can't. No, listen. But with all these circumstances that surround this whole horrible thing, it, no, guess who's the shining star? Beyond horrible. Who is the shining star? That's you, Amy. I'm not a shining star. I'm telling you, you're the biggest person right now. There's things you can't understand. There's things that you wouldn't understand until we had to call you out on and prove to you that that was not the way it happened. And there's going to be more. There's going to be more things that we're going to say, you know what, Amy? You had your chance. This is it. But we, we will do it that way. It doesn't matter to me. It really doesn't. Because in this day and time, it makes my job easy. It really does. I didn't do anything to my mother. I don't know who did. I wouldn't know. Isn't it crazy that Carrie uses his e pass one time and then doesn't use it again on the way up and on the way back? Which we're going to get video of if it actually happened. I, I can't tell you why he does what he does. I know, but I'm gonna, I, what I'm saying is I, I think that we're going to... I don't know if we're going to be able to do it or not, but... One of the possibilities is is that might be that might be a, a, a fib of some kind that you guys went went no. and paid through the. I'm just telling you. You said no before to the to the stuff that you already came out with. You said the same thing, Amy. Did you not? You said last night. You said no, no way. But today you go, yeah, yeah. You got me. I didn't want to look like a bad person because my mom gave me permission to get four hundred dollars out of the bank. I heard you tell Detective Guevara that you were going to bring your TV with you to Ohio. Yeah. How are you going to get it there? It's going to be, I'm going to hire a U-Haul and have them load Did it. Did you call a lock service at all, a locksmith yesterday or the day before? No, I was going to. For what? I wanted to have some keys made. Okay, for who, for what? I'm just asking. Well, because I couldn't remember, I wanted, Judy wanted a key and I couldn't remember if I had another key. Okay. So I was... Did you have another key? I did find another key. That's the reason I never called them. Okay. That's fine. And what's the storage? Are you, are you getting a storage service of some kind? I was going to look to see about getting a small one because there are going to be certain items that I don't take. And the one there on Old Canoe Creek Road, they have really small ones and I was trying to see how much they cost. But there are going to be some things that I don't take. I don't know what to make of this. So, I mean, that was the only reason I was looking at that. Nothing the sinister. Card, the card that you used to get the $400 with, you told the, the Guevara that it was in your purse. It's not in your purse. It was. There was another, uh, there was an American Express, I think, that belonged to your mom that was in your purse. American Express? Let me clarify that. American Express, the Leah Hawkins. Does appear to be expired.
inspired, but that was in your purse. I don't know why. So you don't know where the card is for the uh, Central Florida Credit Union? I thought I'd put it back in my purse. Where would it be if it wasn't in your purse? I was driving in a car. Hmm? I was driving in a car. So it might be in the car? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I thought... So it's something you would normally do is just leave it in the car? Well, no, but I mean... But you would put it in your purse, right? Well, if I reached over... It Inadvertently it, dropped it? Yeah. Okay, I'll check on that. Okay. I mean, I thought I did put it back, it, but mm -hmm. if I dropped it, I dropped it. I mean, I haven't looked for it again, so I wouldn't know. Because I haven't towed the car since. So what would you do if you were me? I don't know what to do. House wasn't broken into. Everything was locked up, you're right. The key that was, I did look for a key that was outside, mm -hmm. just not there. It's not logical. I know I keep saying that. I know. The whole thing's not logical. Well, she used to keep a key in where the hose wraps around. There's a little door. Mm -hmm. There's a frog inside there. She always kept a key in there just in case she locked herself out. I locked myself out. Mm -hmm. I went to look, get it because I was going to give it to my sister. It's not there. All right, that, that, that might be. But that doesn't mean my mother didn't right. take it right. and move it. Right. I mean... And the whole thing is, is just doesn't make sense. That's all there is to it. I agree. It's not random. There's nothing random about it. I agree that it makes absolutely no sense. But I know I had nothing to do with it. I know I don't know anybody that would do that. I wouldn't even want to know somebody who would be capable of that. And I don't know what else to tell you. Your actions don't make sense, Amy. What do you mean? It doesn't make sense that you would not be questioning your mother about this sudden trip for an 80 year woman to take with such a sort of suspicious communication I to you. It just doesn't make sense to me. I'm not a person who questions. <laughs> okay, but that's not, that's not normal. For me, it is. My sister is different. My mother is different. My dad is different. I'm, it, for me, it's normal. And I've always been that way. So if you want to say it's not normal, okay, fine. But for me, it's normal. I'm just telling you what it looks It's just one of those. For me, it's normal. It's just another, it's another red flag. I mean, it's just weird. To me, it's not, to me, it's normal. It's not a red flag to me. It's just how I always am. You know, somebody says, well, why did they do this? I don't know. Did you ask? No. Why not? I just didn't ask. That, that's me. To, me. to me, that's normal. That's how I've always been. So for me, it's not a red flag. It's just, it's just me. It's my personality. I, I don't know how else to explain it. Well, it's really might as well not be because it doesn't make sense to me. It really doesn't. And I think that would be most people that it wouldn't make sense to. That's fine now. All right, I'll be back.
haven't met yet. Okay, my name is Detective Rios. Okay. Um, oh, what's your name, actually? Amy. 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 And last name's Day, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we haven't met. Um, I'm a detective over here, actually, in this same bureau with the other guy you're speaking to. I've never talked to you before, right? Um, I'm actually assisting out with the, with the case with your mother and stuff. Uh, most of the time I've been at the house, at my family's house, you know, back and forth. That's where, I, where I've been. Um, so I haven't really got to sit down and talk to you and meet you. Huh? My house? Yes, that's where I've been. Um, so... In my sister's house? Your sister's house? No. I've been over there. Oh, you said my family's house? You talk about me, my mom, and yeah. me, my 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 mom. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know that um, she has been talking to you for a while and stuff. You know, I just want to kind of. I'm sorry. I said I know she has been talking to you and stuff. I just want to kind of get the perspective, kind of. I know mm -hmm. you're here and and a lot of questions have been going on. You know. Um. Not that, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, since I haven't been here or spoken to you yet. Um, the, of course, there's reasons why we talk to people. We understand that, right? Mm -hmm. You know, there's a reason why you're here, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, there are certain things that, that we do as detectives. I mean, we've done this for years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's kind of, you know, I, I don't know what you do. What do you do for a living? What's okay. your profession? I'm paralegal. I'm paralegal, okay. You feel so or pretty good at being at doing that job. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and as you are with that, that's how we are with this. I know. You understand that? I know y'all very good. So and this is the reasons why why of course reason why you're here. Because you're not just here for coincidence. You understand that? I understand. Okay. And um just knowing I mean I've been doing all just that been all day and stuff at your house. And um in the last couple of days, actually, and um, I've had listening to some interviews and talked to other people also. And um, I got to tell you that I mean, I'm gonna be honest. It, things just don't look good for you. You understand? The way things are all mixed up and and how stories are changing. You know, and I want to be honest. It doesn't. Okay, that's that's why. You know, that's why you're here. Um, the same reason why we're here. This is what we do, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but all I gotta say is that life, in general, is hard. All right, it's not easy for anybody. It's not easy for us. It's not easy for on this side. It's not easy for you. Okay, we are. We're, we're all human, right? And as human beings, we are created to make mistakes. This is what we do. All right. I'm not perfect. I can sit here and look at you and tell me that I'm an angel. Okay, um, we've all made mistakes and done stuff that doesn't make us bad. It does not make us bad people. It doesn't. You know, sometimes we do stupid things that come to bite us in the butt. You know, and but that's part of being human. It's part of nature. It's part of us learning. It's part of us growing. It's part of us surviving as a species. It's just what we do. Um, I didn't kill my mother. Well, I'm not, I'm not going there, okay? I'm not going there. But all I'm telling you is that you're here for a reason and it doesn't look good, okay? So far, from what we've done, it doesn't look good at all. Alright? It doesn't. So, what we're trying to get to is. If there's. Something, anything, any person that you know that that is going to lead you to, to try to get you out of the situation you're in, it's going to be very, very, it's a very good idea to tell it. And, and I'm not BSing you. You understand? Yeah. I'm I'm telling you the truth. Okay. I, have, I don't have to come in here and talk to you. I know. You know, I, I'm on my own. No one sent me in here. I know. Okay. This is me just because I've been gone. I've been at the house. You know, I've been there. I was, I was there. 
Okay. Just hold on. And I, I don't, I don't know what to do in order to prove that I didn't do anything wrong. Is my problem. I understand. I'm racking my brain. No, I got you. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out what I can do to prove that I'm, I didn't do anything wrong, and that, you know, give y'all something that would prove to you, without a doubt, that. It, it's not me. I haven't done anything wrong. And I haven't, I can't, I haven't been able to think of anything. Let me ask you, do you miss your mother? God, yes. Yeah, you miss her. My mother was my life. She was my best friend. There wasn't anything I wouldn't do for my mother. I would never hurt her. Never. If someone had a gun to my head, they would have to shoot me before I hurt my mother. Period. And I'm not BSing you. Honest to God. There isn't anything my mother wouldn't do for me. She stood by me when a lot of people would. And. There is nothing I wouldn't have done for her. And I wish like hell that I would have stayed home Saturday. Because then maybe the mother's been left. It. And I would have thought my mother. A huge piece of me is now dead. That one was more important to me than any member of my family. Now, as strong as you feel, I mean, you want to get to the bottom of what's going on just as much as we do. Yes, and that's why I've been trying to rack my brain, trying to figure out how. I don't know what I can do to prove that I didn't do anything or know anybody did anything or I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't know, but I want to get to the bottom of it. I want to be able to tell you guys something. Yeah. And I don't know what. I don't. I. I, I don't know what I can tell you that's going to help. I honestly don't. I've been trying. I know I screwed up when I didn't tell them the truth last night and correcting it. I know that threw a red flag up, I, and, and I. I understand that. And. Me not asking my mother questions, they said that there was a red flag up, but it's just my personality. I'm, I'm not that person. If somebody tells me something, I go, okay, I don't ask them 500 questions. That's just not me. I never have been that way. Yeah. It, to me, it's not a red flag. It's just my personality. Yeah, so but why, why wouldn't you want to tell the truth, though? I mean, that kind of... It's, it's just... It sounds vain. I know. It sounds vain. I was, I, I was afraid that it would that I would sound selfish that I was putting myself first before my mother. And I wasn't, being, but it's because I wasn't worried that something was wrong. Mm -hmm. But then after all of it happened, I thought I would sound selfish and I knew my sister would go ballistic on me. And, and so, I didn't. I didn't want to sell that. I mean, I know that's stupid. I know it is. It's naive. It's immature. And I regret doing it. I wish I would have just said, this is what I did. And you know, if my sister wanted to go ballistic on me, oh well, I'll be done with it. Mm -hmm. But I didn't. 
And I know I can't, I can say I'm sorry 500 times, but it's not going to change. It's not going to change anything. So. Did anybody else ever go to the house over there with you and hang out? Or did she know? You mean? It's your mom's house. Did I ever invite anybody over? Yeah. No. Yeah. My mom was like that. She liked anybody being over there? So she didn't know anybody else? Well, I mean, Marie would come over. Grace across the street would come over. Um, uh, the show of witnesses would come over. Any of your friends? No. No? Did you have any friends in the area? No. No? No. There's no one you talk to in the area? No? No. I don't really socialize with anybody in this area. I was just wondering, like, if you were going out of town, I was just wondering if someone knew that you were going to be out of town and stuff. No. I live my mother. No. I'm not antisocial. I just... I don't like people knowing my business and... I... Most of the people that I knew when I was growing up and stuff like that have moved. Mm -hmm. I don't drink so I don't go out. Um, and I don't, you know, just go to restaurants just to hang out. You know, that type of thing. I hang out with my mom. She's my best friend. What about your father? I talked to my dad. Um, him and I are close. And um, that's where I stayed last, well, from four until I came here. Um, but and his wife, Katie, um, who I love to death, and, um, but other than that, no. You get along with your father? Yeah. When was the last time you saw him? When they came and picked me, they picked me up from my dad's house. Yeah. And did you see your father all the time, too, or not? Well, when I was 12 or 13, my parents got divorced, so. Okay. Um, I, I would see him on and off, but, um, I mean, I didn't, it wasn't that we, I mean, we were, there was a period when we didn't speak, yeah. but that was when I was a teenager and rebellion and mm -hmm. stupid, but, um, then, um, our relationship just got better and we grew closer mm -hmm. and, you know. I wasn't as close to him as I was to my mother, but I only moved back in with my mother five years ago whenever I went to my divorce. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, but I value my dad's opinion and his advice, being very blunt, and so is Katie, and I appreciate that, and so. Normally, I will call and ask them their advice or their, you know, opinion on mm -hmm. something because I know they're going to tell me what I need to hear, not what I want to hear. So. When's the last time you shot a gun? Um. I shot Carrie's gun probably eight months ago. Carrie, Carrie's. A friend? Mm -hmm. okay. You guys both friend, girlfriend? Like together? Yeah. You know him for a long time? 30 years. I saw kids. What kind of gun does he have? He has a 50 caliber. 50 caliber? Mm -hmm. He collects them. Oh. But he keeps the locked up in his safe. Mm -hmm. So that's when you shot a gun was eight months ago? Mm -hmm. Do you know how long gunshot residue stays in her hand? You only get swapped for gunshot residue on your hands? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Um, 
You know, coming to guns in the house or weapons in the house, you know? Um, I'm told my mother had a gun. Oh, you don't know if she had it or not? I knew she had one a long time ago that I hid. Um, and then she got another one, but apparently that one went missing, and I don't think she ever reported it. Okay. You hid the first one? Mm -hmm. Why'd you hide it for? Because I didn't think it was safe. Hmm. You know what kind of gun she had? Um, the one I hid, mm -hmm. uh, I think it was like a 38. Okay. Was the one she replaced it with, you know? It was bigger. Yeah. I don't know how. Uh, it, the, the barrel was longer. I, I don't know exactly what it was. Okay. When, so, when you hit it, where'd you hide that? The 38? Mm -hmm. in, in the garage. Um, in one of the bins. One of the bins? Mm -hmm. Is it still there? As far as I know, yes. Okay. Um, and what about the bigger gun? You haven't seen that in how long? Have you seen it? Or? She's the one who told me that one was missing. Okay. I don't know where she kept it. Um, she just told me that she had a gun, it, it was missing. And that was a couple months ago. Now she, did she like guns? Was she a gun fanatic? Or, what did she have a gun for? What do you think her mom had a gun? I thought it was for protection. Yeah. But, um... Barrel on that thing? Didn't look like there was protection. Yeah. I mean, it was awful long barrel. To me. Yeah. Um, but my mom didn't go to the range or anything like that. I mean, she wasn't somebody who went out firing weapons or anything like that. Yeah. So it's possible it was for protection and it was just what she could buy. Did she know how to use a weapon? Did she know how to use it? She used to be auxiliary for St. Cloud in the 70s. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. So does she like revolvers, you think? Were there revolvers you like? Yeah. Yeah, she could always out shoot my dad with a shotgun. Oh, really? He hated it. <laughs> how, um, if your mom worked to work to hide a gun, what do you think she would hide that? Um, she would have hid it somewhere in her bedroom. Okay. She would have kept it somewhere in her bedroom, somewhere that she could have gotten her hands on it. How long did you think that she she got she was missing? She told me two months ago that it was missing. Two months ago, huh? Mm -hmm. I told her she needed to call and report it. Who was living with her two months ago? I was. You were. Mm -hmm. Now, does she ever have anybody over that she think would take it? If she did, she never told me. Hmm. But that wouldn't be unusual. If, if she didn't have, my mother was that person, if she wasn't completely positive, yeah. she wouldn't make an accusation. Oh, okay. Yeah, that seems pretty nice. My mother was a wonderful Christian woman. Sounds not like my mom. Um, that, that gun, if you had to guess what size caliber, what, how big it was, what do you think? Um, I know it was um, a revolver mm -hmm. and um, barrel. It's pretty long. About that long. About that long. Yeah. So I don't know exactly what caliber it was. The best I can do is I can tell you what a nine mil looks like. Yeah. And that's only because I see them on television all the time. Yeah. And I know what a thirty eight looks like. Yeah. It's bigger than thirty eight. It was bigger than thirty eight. What color was it? Was it chrome, silver, black? It had a black handle and it was um, chrome. It was all chrome? Yeah, the, the long way, yeah, because it was the one I hit was chrome with brown. Okay. But um, it was just a little, little thing. Okay. This one had a, the, a black handle. I remember that. And a couple of months ago, she told me that she came in and she said, Amy, um, my gun is missing. And I just looked at her. And I said, your gun is missing. She said, yeah, the, the long one. And I went, okay, what do you mean it's missing? And she said, it's missing. And I said, did you call the sheriff department? Mm -hmm. And she said, no. I said, mom, if it's missing and it gets used, it comes back to you. Mm -hmm. And 
she just kind of walked away. I should never call. Mm, not that I'm aware of. No. I, I had two thoughts. One, she got it from somebody and it wasn't registered to her. Mm -hmm. Two, um, she did call and just couldn't tell me. Mm -hmm. I mean, those were my two thoughts. She either didn't call or she did call. If she didn't call, it was because it wasn't registered to her. Did she ever own any of her own weapons? I believe that 38 was registered to her. Not to you? No, to me? Yeah. No. 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 I grew up around guns. I don't need to have one. Did you ever do any hunting and stuff? I don't hunt. Oh, you don't hunt? Okay. I don't believe in killing animals. Mm -hmm. Except for snakes. That's right. They're reptiles. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's well, you yeah. had one stare you right at you and your the tongue almost touch you and you already are afraid of them your fear factor goes up quite a bit mm -hmm. um killing them doesn't seem like such a bad thing mm -hmm. but anything else i will hurt you if you get an animal or you know you know that type of i'm i'm, I'm very big about animal rights yes yeah. human rights animal rights i'm i'm just that's just the, you don't hit a met woman a woman doesn't hit a man, you don't hit an animal, you don't mistreat, you don't try to mistreat children. I mean, that's, that's how I was raised, that's how I am. And that's the reason I'm trying, been trying to find out and figure out what or how I can give y'all something to prove that, to stop me, where you don't have to you, you stop looking at me and maybe you know move on to somebody else or a different direction and i don't know i can't think of what i can do what what i was in here so i don't know what the other detectives talked to you about what did they tell you about your mother they told me that um she was buried in the backyard with um, fresh dirt over her and fake flowers. And she was rash wrapped in trash bags. Didn't they tell you anything else she was wrapped in? And all I thought about was after my sister left Sunday about I guess a little twelve thirty or a little after, I stepped out on the back porch and took a cigarette. And I never knew she was there. When was that Sunday? Mm -hmm. I was standing there smoking a cigarette. And I never knew she was in the backyard. All by herself. Did you never notice those flower beds? Um. Which one? There's one that she plants the tomatoes in, and then there's the other one that she has the olive plants, and she had fake plants there, but she had those there all year long. Oh, she put fake plants there? Mm -hmm. She always put fake plants there? Mm -hmm. Why did she do fake plants for? Because of the um, air vent from the um, dryer. Mm -hmm. It's, um, she has to keep it covered because it doesn't have a cover on it. Mm -hmm. And it killed the plants anytime she's planted them there. So she just, about three years ago, started putting fake plants there. So that way she didn't have to worry about it. Did then on the other side, 
is the it, it's a smaller one, but it's um, uh, that's where she only paints the um, peppers and the tomato plants. But there's another planet there. Hmm. There, it's it, it it's an empty one right now. So when they said the fake plants, I there's only one place in the backyard that there's fake plants. Did you ever help her plant the fake plants? I've helped her move her, you know, and rearrange them and you know, pick different ones to put there, but uh -huh. that's about it. You ever help her dig and shovel and plant new ones? I mean, I've helped her with the shovel, um, dig or kill snakes. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, and then, you know, just kind of rearrange the dirt with the shovel and just put new plant, new, you know, rearrange the flowers or change them. And I would stand back and look at them or she would stand back and look at them. But we haven't done that in uh, September. Um, the last time we did it was in, um, July. Oh, July. Yeah. July. How long have you been at that house for? Uh, I moved back in five years ago. Wait, five years? You've been there five years? That's a long time. Yeah. That's a long time. That's how long you've been divorced. Oh. I was supposed to get, I was supposed to be moving to Ohio, but. Oh. Um, would there be any reason? whatsoever that your DNA would be on the plastic bags? Um, it depends. Um, if they were big black ones, they're in the garage. I touch them. Okay. What about anything else? I mean, there's a, most of the things out in the garage, me and mom both touch. Like we what? Move, we move it around. Um, blankets, um, cable, rope, um, bins, uh -huh. um, the televisions, Tupperware. Everything. Uh, coolers, uh, suitcases. I mean, yeah, we... we because we shift and move things all around. We both do it. Yeah. So, I mean, her and I DNA, and Judy and Morgan's are probably it, it, there too. So, because we're always shifting things around and moving the stuff. Yeah. I mean, you know, if I get a suitcase down for her or she'll get a suitcase down for me or, um, you know, getting a trash bag or grab a roll of the trash bags and, you know, mm -hmm. and then if we don't need them, just stuff them back in the box. Um, gotcha. Just, I mean, you know, stuff like that. Um, where, where, what, what kind of cable are you talking about? You mentioned cable, you move cables around also? Um, over on the, um, shelves, mm -hmm. there are, um, we got jars of different things and we were switching cables to the TVs mm -hmm. and um, we took one of the, I took the white cable yeah. off of her TV because it was too long mm -hmm. and she doesn't like a lot of the wires oh, yeah. and so we put a new one on it and I took it and put it out in the garage mm -hmm. um, but she helped me, you know, to put it together. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just put it up on the, I see it would be the one, two, the second shelf, mm -hmm. uh, by the garage door kind of in, or maybe it was the third shelf, mm -hmm. um, cause there's a little black cable one that's on the shelf also, but okay. I don't know if it's the second or third one, but it's closest to the garage door, I remember that part. 
Um, so, um, that's, that's the cable I was talking about. Well, she, what about sheets? He said sheets. What kind of sheets do you move around in the garage? Blankets. The blankets we use to wrap the oh, uh, blankets. Pump. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do we have blank certain blankets that we use to wrap the pump during the winter time? The pump? Yeah, it's outside and it's kind of a uh, it's got a block house around it. Yeah. Um, and we use um, two blankets and light that we put in there to okay. keep it from the water from freezing. You know, the pipes from freezing. Oh, is that the well? Is that well or something? Yeah. But it's got a, it's over off to the, it's not next to the house it's off to the side it's got its own little okay house around it now these blankets they keep them in the garage all the time is that what you do mm -hmm. no what kind of blankets are they uh one is a kind of like a, a well, i call it a, a, a scratchy pink with a kind of like a satin um you know around mm -hmm. it it's got paint all over it mm -hmm. um another one is was mine when i was really young it's mm -hmm pink with um, a little a character, two characters or mm -hmm. something like that on it and it's got uh, the lamp actually almost cut it on fire one year. Mm -hmm. um, we got it too close mm -hmm. um, and that's out in the garage. That's the garage. Mm -hmm. What color is that one? Uh, pink and one upper. side it's just solid pink, mm -hmm. like a light pink, mm -hmm. and on the other side, it's pink that has uh, little pictures. Uh, I think there's like green on it or something. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not exact. I haven't really. I, I saw it the other day. I gotcha. So when I went when I went out, I went out there to get something, and I saw it the other day, and I had to move it. So no reason I don't remember. And that's how I remember seeing that other pink one because it's kind of like it's like right below it. Mm -hmm. So. So we know, like, we keep them kind of stacked together. But. And when we, when, when, where, when would you have moved rope around? When I was doing, moving the cable. Oh, okay. Yeah. We keep them all in the same area. Okay. And um, you guys got, like, a lot of twine or stuff like that? Or you have any twine or anything like that? Mm, you mean like the really thin, thin, thin? Yeah. Um, no, I don't. Uh, well, no, yeah, there is some on the shelf. Yeah, there's some. I think there's some on the shelf. I think it's twine. I didn't really pay that much attention to it. But I think there's some twine out there. Is like fishing line? Uh. It could be fishing line, or it could be um, uh, weed eater line. Oh, yeah, I got you. So, uh, I mean, I don't know which one, but it could be one of the two. Okay. So, I, I, I don't know. But as for skinny twine, do you ever remember seeing any twine anywhere? Um, really skinny twine? I, um, I think there is some out there, but the only thing that I really remember seeing is like a frayed... Um, brown kind of like uh, scratchy rope okay and I only remember that is because she had me we had that we use it to wrap the um, when we do the pump we take and tie that around there to keep it in place uh -huh. and then set the light down there okay. that's what we use for that I gotcha. but it's really scratchy oh. um, we're in the garage that 38 if it's still there is it still be on the shelf somewhere? I'm trying to imagine. It's okay. No, it's not on the shelf. It's in a bin. Mm -hmm. um, it's in one of the bins. Um, on the, it's not on the shelf. It's mm -hmm. on the on the floor. Um, and unless she moved it around, mm -hmm. um, I think it's like in the. First or second bin? I think. I'm not exactly sure. I know it's in one of those bins out there. If I. More correctly. Yeah, if, I mean, if I went out there, I could. I mean, I would know exactly which one it was. 
That's definitely, you moved that one. You moved that gun, right? You're the one who hit that gun? I hit that gun. Okay. And I did that um, back before I moved out in um, a long time ago, uh, back when, um, um, back in 98. Oh, so it's been there for a long time. Yeah. So if we did a test on that one the last time it was fired, it would be a long time ago. Should be. Should be. Unless mom found it. You think she possibly get a shot and put it back in the same spot? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Uh -huh. no. I can't see that happen. Yeah. What about and the other the missing gun? Any clues your mom ever bring it up and say, hey, my like maybe she got rid of it or gave it to somebody to share with her, anything like that? All she told me was that she came in, she said, we're in trouble, the gun's missing. I told her she needed to call the sheriff department. Mm -hmm. She just kind of looked at me and walked off. She never said whether she did or not. And I, I didn't ask. Again, it's not my personal. Yeah. I mean, I did make the comment, you know, if something happens, it's going to go back to your mom. Yeah. So, whether she did or not, I didn't ask because it... It meant that if she didn't, I knew that it was a gun that wasn't registered to her. Mm -hmm. And if she did, then you guys would mount the house. Mm -hmm. That's the reason I didn't ask her. That way she didn't have to tell me. That's just how I am. I said we, let's say we swabbed your arm, your hand, mm -hmm. and we did find residue on it. Would there be any particular reason why you had residue on your hand for? It? No. No? I know, but no. No, okay. Um, and the room is the far room, right? The far? Is it the one all the way down, right? On the left? Yeah, uh, if you go in, it's the one towards, it's in the front house, purple. Okay. Yeah. And the other room that's there is on the right? That's her TV room. That's her TV room. So mm -hmm. she hangs out, that's, does she hang out in there ever? Is that where she likes to sit and stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did she like watching shows and stuff like that? Oh yeah. Uh, who saw like a lot of notes and she was taking, like I like she took notes for everything. She well, likes uh, Dr. Charles Stanley, so she takes a lot of notes on the um, his sermons, and mm -hmm. she has another one that she likes to watch, and um, she loves Paula Dean mm -hmm. at the cooking shows, mm -hmm. so she takes a lot of notes on those mm -hmm. things. Yeah. So. so if you think someone's in CIS, oh, CSI, yeah, in CIS, in CIS, Los Angeles, and in CIS, New Orleans, yeah, and them. Hawaii Five O, really? loves Steve. No, I think about she loves Dave Lee. No, mm -hmm. I, no, no. I'm sorry. We just recently we had this conversation. I love Steve McGarrett. She likes Chin Ho. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Not funny, but yeah. It's amazing the conversation I just remembered. Yeah. Anyways, go ahead. All right, I gotta get back because I'm thinking about Wi-Fi right now. <laughs> um, you don't have a DVR? <laughs> no, I don't actually. Um, yeah, so she took a lot of notes. Um, she's like real organized with a lot of stuff too. I noticed. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very organized. Yeah, very very organized. Mm -hmm. And. Um, did you always get along with your mom, or did you ever have times when you had problems? No, always got along with her. You always got along with her? Mm -hmm. um. The worst thing I always, and, and I did it twice, and, and to this day, if I had a time machine, I would go back and change it. I disappointed her twice, and I wish that's the last person in the world that I would ever want to disappoint. I don't know what those disappointments. My ex-husband. Mm -hmm. She told me not to marry him, and I did. Mm -hmm. And uh, back in 2010, I had a substance abuse problem. Okay. But she was the one who helped me and got me through it, and I was very grateful for that. Mm -hmm. But I still wish I could go back and never have that problem. Well, I don't want to get into your whole substance abuse stuff. 
because I don't want to bring up bad memories if I don't have to. But did the other detectives talk to you about a substance abuse problem at all? They asked me if I had a substance abuse problem, and I told them back in 2010. Yeah. They asked me if I still had one, and I told them it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't even drink alcohol. Yeah. That's hard, though. That's hard. It's hard fighting, fighting the urge when you have a problem, else, you know. And not only that, it's hard to admit having a problem, you know. It's for me. And it's not against this. No, for me, it wasn't. It, as a matter of fact, um, anytime I can help somebody, yeah. I, I, I have absolutely no problem talking about it. I understand. But you know, it's not against the law to have a substance abuse program. I know. Or, or problem. And we also, I do have a misdemeanor because of it. <laughs> but we also, we also, <laughs> we do also offer programs and stuff, you know, for that. Right. That and and they're actually they've been proven that we have pretty decent ones. So if there's any reason you're worried about telling us about one, you know, we no, do whatever we can. Help. No, absolutely not. Um, okay. I, I mean, I know mine was um, the Larica, and um, I don't I, know what that is. It's uh, for um, it's FDA approved. Mm -hmm. It's for fibromyalgia and um, convulsions yeah. and epilepsy, and. Um, the doctor that I was going to at the time had me taking three times the amount milligrams that yeah. the pharmaceutical company recommended. Mm -hmm. And this reason the judge I had doc, I had Judge O'Brien. Okay. Um, I spent 22 days in jail, got my bail hearing, and then I spent almost a, a year on house arrest. And Judge O'Brien had had enough with the prosecution because they kept changing prosecutors. Mm -hmm. So when my court case came up, she told him to make a deal dropped it down to the DUI and um, gave me 100 hours of community service, which I did at the pound. Um, I had to go to um, victims awareness class in a DUI class, which was kind of funny because everybody in there, they when they would ask what their blood alcohol was, they would tell them in, yeah, zero. Yeah. There was another guy in there for pot and zero. Yeah. Um, of course, the one guy that came in and that little stick that you have to put on your tongue and it turns green you've been drinking when he breathed on it and it turned greener than the Incredible Hulk without it even touching his tongue mm -hmm. at 8 o'clock in the morning um, we when he left we all just kind of went mm -hmm. are you kidding me but you know he the guy up there he was great um, I learned a lot as a matter of fact my mom ended up getting irritated because when she would like when she would leave and drive I would be you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> but it changed my driving habits. Yeah. So in the long run, I mean, I benefited greatly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wish I would have never had the problem, but in the long run, I did. I benefited greatly because I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about others, and I learned a lot about what could happen. Oh, yeah. So um, the new doctor I have, mm -hmm. I love her um, because she is a... Um, diet exercise the vitamins person mm -hmm. um the prescription which is this one is for my heart and this one is for my blood pressure yeah um so you know it's oh, but i need some of the, let me say, oh, the blood pressure <laughs> right, go on. You know, this is only five the, i take it twice a day but it's five milligrams uh you read or no once a day this one's oh. twice a day this is actually what time is it by the way i don't know I don't have a watch on me. I don't have any phones on. Okay. Well, you got to take one some? At, at 630, I have to take okay. um But anyways, um, it, um, it, this is the last resort. And when she comes in, it, like uh, this one, she came in with um, three. this one plus three other type of heart medications, okay. paperwork, to go over it with you. What that's is, good. What, so that's different, right? She exactly. So on. It, once the two of y'all agree, mm -hmm then she'll write the prescription. And fortunately, um, I was at 157 whenever I started having to take this. This I'll always, I've had to take since I was, well, not this one it, per se, but um, I've always had heart conditions since I was about 15. Um, but this one, I'm excited to say, because I was 157 once I started going through my divorce, yeah. and um, I'm able to drop that weight, and. I've got it down to a point to where my blood pressure is. Um, she is looking at taking me off of this, okay. and also my cholesterol medication. So that'll be two less ones I have to take, and I'm very excited about that. All because I and and I lost weight. Yeah. So you know. No, do, do, no. When I say this, do the medications you take ever affect or alter your, the way you think and your mind thoughts? 
Do you ever get extremely angry? Is that why you have blood, with your blood pressure and everything? Oh, no. Uh, my blood pressure was because of my weight. Okay, okay. Yeah. And so never... Um, um, this, you could, uh, nanospring would do uh, more. The, all this does is keep my heart at between 60 and 70. Okay. So when you're on your, when you got addicted to, what's the name of it? Larica. Larica. What kind of, what kind of medication? What is that? Is it, a, is it opiate or is it a... Oh. It is a, a controlled substance, and it's for like epilepsy. No, it's for ep it, it's uh, it, for epilepsy. It's nerve. Oh, okay, so the but tracks. it can alter your your mind size. Oh, you can. It so can, it how, can. So how would it affect you? You think when you, whenever you're on it? When I was taking it, I don't take it anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Um, I take gabapentin. Yeah. And gabapentin is like taking a nap. Yeah. Um, but. Um, and the Larica, if you, I was taking it four times a day. Of course, I was taking 800 milligrams yeah. four times a day, which is way too much. Um, it, um, you got a extremely nice high. And yeah. if you took more than four, you could be in la la land and not even care. Yeah. It'd be like drinking 24 beers. Yeah. And you could take eight of those and feel like that. Yeah. Um, I could take 12 of them and walk normal. Oh, really? Yeah. Did you ever lose a memory or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was, I, I wrecked a car. Oh. Except, fortunately, nobody, it was just me and the car. But, um, yeah. It was, it was because I was driving and it will, yeah, I just, I fell asleep. You, I mean, you, it, it does that. Um, when I went to, start going to this new doctor, um, she looked at everything and she, she was the one who told me a lot about the, that I was taking way too much and told me I could put me on gabapentin, but it, because of the withdrawals, she started me off at 600 milligrams. And then I asked her if I could get down to 400 milligrams, mm -hmm. and then we went down to 300 milligrams, and then I um, asked if I could go down to two, and two didn't work, so we remained at three. Okay. And it's been great. That's good. So, um, you know, and it, my mother was a huge part of it. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to go back to it mm -hmm. because of what's happened. Mm -hmm. Because that would dishonor her. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for my mother. I would have been dead five, six years ago if it hadn't been for my mother. And so there is no way I would go back to something like that because that would just completely dishonor her. And I'm not going to do that. I'm not, I'm not. I would never do anything with a disorder, whatever. Well, how are you with drinks? Do you want some water or something? I um, do need a water because it's 6.30. Yeah. I'm supposed to take it. might be around 6.30 now, so you might have to take some of those. I have to take um, this one at 6.30. Okay. Let me get you some water, okay? Thank Hold you. Tight. Uh, it's my
get some water. I'll be right back. I was like, look for a cup everywhere. Hold on, guys. We got some bottled water. Did you want to do that gunshot residue? Let me ask. Let me see, because if there's a, okay. let me see who's here. If there's a forensics or somebody here. Okay.
Have we got somebody coming out to take it to the bathroom? We just can't do it ourselves. I know you need okay, to. Okay, so like someone there, there's someone that's going to be a minute. So. It, are you able to step in? Can I ask you a good question? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh. Um, do you know if I'm going to be leaving here tonight? I'm not sure yet. Okay. Um, it's not my case. I know. All right. Uh, I have to get with the other detectives and find out exactly what's going on. Um, but uh, to be honest with you, I don't know yet. So. Um, if I do, am I going to be able to go back to my house or am I going to have to go back to my dad's? You can't go back to your house, not yet. Okay. Um, is there, it, I, the reason I'm asking is I have a prescription I was supposed to pick up today and I can't do it without my purse. Okay. I need a change of clothes. Okay. Um, I mean, there's just certain things I need. I need stuff for my dentures because okay. I, I don't, I, I've had them in and they're starting to rub me raw. Okay, I gotcha. You know, it, yeah. I mean, this is, it, it, it hurts really bad. Okay. But I've already missed one medication because I wasn't able to pick it up today. Okay. And, but I can't do that without my purse. Okay. And of course, I need my toiletries and clothes. Okay. Um, I'll talk to. Uh, I'll find out for you. If, okay. you, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah. Um, so the bathroom's coming up. Okay. If you bathroom first. Up. Bathroom first, and yeah. then the residue thing. Um, yeah. But in. Um, I just want to let me go and smoke a cigarette while I wait. Is that cigarettes with you? Well, let's see. Let's see what happens. What we have to wait for the female deputy to get here. Okay. And then uh, we'll see what we can do for you. Bathroom is uh, or cigarette and then bathroom and then the, the rest of the Okay, let me find out what's going on. Okay. If you would please. Okay. Thank you so much. No
full of ice, and as I spoke, it warmed up. I'm turning purple. Yeah, sorry. Is there Just, any? Uh, let's see what I can find for you, but okay. I'm very bad. Do you have any longer? Yeah, it's gonna be like an old ten more, ten more minutes. Right. And then what? Bear back. Oh. Best I can give is this. Okay. Um. And do you? I'll be back. Right.
before we get started, just gonna take care of a couple, couple stuff here. And you're in custody right now. Get over here. Just about the same stuff that I wrote you last time. Okay. To okay. Uh, today is September 25th, 2015. Time is 1:48 p.m. And I'm sorry, I'm mean, always. What do you say right now? I'm not supposed to say anything to you without my attorney. That's what he advised. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. So you're saying you don't, you're not going to say anything? You don't want to say anything? I mean, if you want to talk to me, that's fine. But I mean, I, he told me not to talk to you, period. That was. I'm sorry. Okay. It's up to you. It's time when I made your decision. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that your decision? That, that's your decision? Straight up, you're your decision. You want to talk to me, Amy. That's what I'm here for. That's the reason you're here. You understand what I mean? I know. The last time I talked to you. No. So, just want to put this in record. Um, at least you're right, and then we go from there. Okay. Nine. You have the right to remain silent. You understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. You have the right to uh, anything you say can. May be used against you in court. You understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. You're entitled to speak to a lawyer before and during questioning. You understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. You can afford an attorney and you want one. One will be provided before and during questioning. Yes, sir. You understand all your rights right now and that, that I just read to you? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's go forward. I understand your attorney told you that. Is that your decision? That you don't want to talk to me? I just want to give you the opportunity for you to tell me anything that you need to tell, get off from your chest, and tell us what happened. That's the reason you're here. And we also got to take care of all the stuff. I don't have anything new to tell you, sir. You remember the conversation that we had the last time you were here with me and my other partner? I remember we were still talking about that evidence going to prevail? Yes, sir. Okay. It's prevailing. Okay. And the reason why we brought you over here is for to give you the opportunity for you to tell us what happened. Understand what I mean? Answer some questions that we have. You know, right now the evidence is prevailing. We don't want you to look like a sadistic killer. Yeah. We just want to give you the opportunity for you to open up and tell us what happened. You're requesting your attorney. I'm gonna go ahead and conclude this interview. The time is 1:52 p.m. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. We're gonna keep. Um, we're gonna take care of a couple, couple stuff, but somebody else is gonna come in to take care of that. Okay? Yes, sir. We conclude the interview.
I'm waiting for my boss to get back real quick. I'm gonna talk to my boss something, okay? I'll be back here in a little bit, okay? Yes. Sir. You need anything? Just knock on the door, okay? Um, I'm just right here. Is there there is there is it? I mean, other than this, that I put like my a, bottom denture in. You need like a straw, better or? Well, no. It they didn't give me anything to put on my denture, and it's rubbed it raw, mm -hmm. so it's made it. I don't I mean, have anything. I can drink a little bit of this, and if it's okay, do No, no, I just brought it in just in case you want to sip in or nothing. So I can sip a little bit of this. Yeah. You're all right if I put it in here? Yeah, I guess so. It's okay, I can put this little piece of paper over well, it. It no, presses you out. Give me one second. Get some napkins just in case you need some, okay? Oh. Oh, this is going to help you now. No, actually, that, that, that will help. I can wrap them up in that if that's okay. okay. That gets up to you. That, okay, uh, it's up to you. That, but that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Fine. okay. If you need me, just knock on the door, okay? Thank you, sir. All right.
Today's date is September 25th, 2015. Time is 2.41 p.m. We have the Sheriff's Office on Seattle County. For the record, Amy, can you please state your full name? Amy Grace Day. Okay. What's your date of birth? 3471. Okay. And what's your address? 4725 Lake Shore Drive, Saint Cloud, Oregon, 34772. Okay. Just for the record, Amy. For the record, we ended the last interview saying that you wanted to speak to your lawyer. I'm now waiting my uh, right to an attorney in order to clear my name. Okay. So, so that, by you saying that, that means that you want to speak to me. Yes, sir. And you're the one who initiated this, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Due to this, I need to read your Miranda warnings again. Yes, sir. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and sign. Yes, sir. Both of us together, okay? Yes, sir. Amy, you have the right to remain silent. You understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Anything you say may be used against you in court. You understand? Yes, sir. You're entitled to speak to a lawyer during and before questioning. You understand that? Yes, sir. You can now afford a lawyer and want one, one will be provided before you and or doing questioning without charge. You understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. You got hand coffee in here? Huh? You got hand coffee in here? Huh? Okay. Okay. You need to print your name right here. Mm -hmm. Is it name and person sign? Mm -hmm. You need AMG or just AMG? What's the matter? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and show right here. And here. Mm -hmm. And here. It's my And here. It's my We're going to sign down here. Right. Okay, thank you. Since we didn't use the rest of the page, we're going to close these parts out, okay? You just like you did last time, yeah, that's right. Yes, sir. Okay. And then I'm going to sign it. Yes, sir. Let me get this out here real quick. Thank you, sir. Let me see the stretch your arms a little bit. Okay. See the stretch your arms out a little bit. One more thing for the record. Can you raise your right hand, please? Do you serve the statement you're about to provide? Is the truth and nothing but the truth to the best of your knowledge? So, yes. what we got? So, help me, God. Yes, sir. Okay. You called my attention and you said that you want to talk to, talk to me. Yes, sir. Because you want to clear your name. Yes, sir. Okay. And like I told you before, evidence will prevail. Yes, sir. Okay. So, I want to give you the opportunity for you to say your side of the story okay so at this time i'm just going to sit right now and you take over and you start letting talking okay um the truth is saturday i was not home however i was not in gainesville um i was with a gentleman by the name of rocket i'm sorry i can't give you more than that other than i do know he's a meth dealer i do not do meth but I was drinking heavily, which is not something I normally do. He does drive a black Mustang, tan interior. I don't know the tag. Um, we did leave. When my sister called and asked me if I'd heard from my sister, I lied to her and told her that I did, and I hadn't. But I was drunk enough that it didn't really register in my brain what she was saying. Um, whenever I got back to the house at nine o'clock, I was still kind of not, I wasn't drunk, but still not really understanding, put, piecing together the night of the night events because I had not been to sleep. I did get into my mother's vehicle, um, which the key was on the counter. Um, they go into town and do those errands and different things and to the bank and back home. Um, 
I do remember giving Rocket my keys to the house to use the bathroom, but he wasn't gone more than five, ten minutes, and he came right back. Um, next thing was whenever I contacted my sister, and I did lie to her and tell her that I was getting home a little after or 11, around 11.30, 11.35, and I had um, already been to probably home maybe about 15, 20 minutes. Um, and that's when I really did notice in her room that her clothes were gone and I mean, I knew her car was there because obviously I had used it, but I did notice that her clothes were gone and stuff like that. And suitcases that were out in the garage. Um, there were a couple of things out of place, but I didn't really put that much stock into them. Um, only because We'd been moving stuff around in the garage, so you know I didn't know if maybe she'd moved some more stuff around. We'd all, me and Mom, had both been moving stuff around, rearranging it, and we were getting ready to get rid of a lot of stuff. So it didn't really make that much, you know, difference to me that stuff had been moved. Um, some things on the shelves, um, things over by the washing machine and um, some things over by the uh, back door where there is um, um, a bunch of different things, uh, a pan to sweep um, garbage things and stuff like that. Um, the uh, tape that I had hanging on the uh, clothesline that was um, out by the washing machine it was gone, but I thought Mom took it down and threw it away, so I didn't put much thought into that. Um, along with um, a trash bag or two, one I think one or two trash bags were on laying on top of the wash machine and dryer, and they were gone. But I thought she'd also thrown those away. Also, I used them in my room. I uh, used them to tape my um, dresser and my bachelor chest so that way I didn't have to I could put some stuff in there and pack it and I really didn't have to move you know unpack it and pack that much stuff um, and then when I didn't leave I just took it off and I just we just took it and hung it back up there just in case we were going to use it again um, the mirror we used it to wrap the mirror we closed my mirror on my dresser because there's a three pane we closed it and we used it and we took the tape on it and then we just took it off and we saved it but we had laid it on top of there and then it was gone but I figured mom threw it away and she just bought new tape and we were just going to do something different with it. Other than that, I mean, that's, that's all I can tell you about that until after my sister got there um, and then after my sister returned again. I don't remember exactly what time, um, 2 30, 3 o'clock. And then from there, that's the rest of it I remember. Yeah. Let's go back, let's review what you just went over. Okay. Okay. You said, uh, what time you left your house? Saturday. It, between 5 and 6. Okay. And you said, by a gentleman by the name of what? Rocket. Okay. Mind describing Rocket to me? He is probably 5'11. Okay. Um, clean cut, uh, white. Um, he has one scar, but it's not a very deep one. It looks like it's something it'll heal. Um, I didn't notice, I mean, he doesn't have any tattoos that I know of. Um, great teeth. Uh, good complexion, blue eyes. Um, and dresses very well. And you say he's a, he's a drug addict, right? He's known to be a meth dealer. I don't know. I've never Either. seen him use. Okay. 
Okay. I don't use, and I've never seen him use, but I know that he's a meth dealer. Okay. So he left between five and six. Mm -hmm. You leave with Rocket, you said? Yes. Okay. He said he drives a black Mustang. Mm -hmm. Do you know approximately what year? 2006, 2007. Okay. Any specific about the car that will make it stand out? Yes. Um, on both of the, on the back, there are. Don't ask me why, because it doesn't it doesn't go with him. Are two kind of it's not all the way down the side of the car, and I do remember this because I thought it was odd. Just like two pink pinstripes only but they're just on the very back quarters of the car where normally they go all the way down the side mm -hmm. these are just little pink pin ones just on the back panels on each side I don't they don't make sense to me to me pin stripes all go all the way down but, and the um, I do remove the, the leather interior um, is tan but it is outlined in black. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and the, ins the inside of it is kind of like a black with outlined and tan interior. So you say you leave for about five or six with Rocket. Mm -hmm. He's a meth dealer. Mm -hmm. And you guys leave him in his car. Mm -hmm. Where do you guys go? Uh, we went down towards Hickory Tree and then we went to go towards Melbourne. But um, we didn't really go any further than the Deer Run Fire Station and turned around and went back and jumped the fence there across from uh, the lakeshore where I know you're just no trespassing. It used to be a playground where the lake it, there's a there used to be a playground. There's a gate there now. Um, and we jumped the fence there and I was drinking and he was drinking. What, what kind of what kind of, what kind of drink you guys? Beer? I, uh, I was drinking tequila. Tequila. Mm -hmm. okay. So you guys were drinking on the playground, jumped the fence. You guys were about to have a playground. What happened next? We were just sitting there drinking. Um, I think I passed out for a little bit. I probably did drink tequila. I mean, I was in the car. We were listening to music. I mean, it's, we weren't, it wasn't anything sexual between the two of us. I mean, that's, we were just, you know, hanging out. It's completely out of my character, but it was just something I did. Tell me what happened next. You said you passed out when you woke up again? When I, when, we, when I woke up again is when he dropped me off at 9 o'clock at my house. 9 o'clock what? Uh, A.M. A.M.? Mm -hmm. That'll make it Sunday? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So you don't remember nothing from the night before all the way to 9 a.m.? I don't remember anything probably from 9.30 Saturday night to waking up between 8.30 and 9 o'clock Sunday morning. Well, then tequila. But now... It, I, I shouldn't say I don't remember every anything. I just, I'm, I remember I don't remember anything after I passed out. I, just, I was asleep, so I mean I don't remember anything after I passed out. I don't remember if I did anything after nine thirty. You know, like um, slept with the guy, or you know, did anything like that. Well, I would have known getting in a vehicle because when I do drink, if I get in a vehicle, if I'm too intoxicated, which I definitely was. I would have been throwing up all over the place. And then tequila, you guys take do any drugs? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Where were you when your sister called you the first time? At the end of the road. At the end of the road? Were there by, by the at fence the, you said about the playground? At the end of, at the very end of Lake Shore, there's okay. a hickory tree. Right across from that, there's a gate and there was a um, playground, a little bit of a lake, and we had jumped the fence there. You mentioned something about you letting Rocket use the bathroom or, or give me the key. I, I gave Tell me a little bit more about that. Why was it? Just I, I, gave, I can't give you the exact time. I know it was after my sister called. Okay. Um, when? Which call? 
uh, when she asked me about my mom, if I had heard from her, okay. and I did lie to her and tell her yes. And that will call you remember around what time it was? 8.30, I believe. And he said he had to go to the bathroom really bad, and it wasn't just number one. And I figured, well, if, you know, mom's gone, I'll just give him a key. He can run down to the house and use the bathroom. You gave him the key to Rocket and... To the house. To the house, okay. And then you both went to the house? No, just he did. He walked back. He didn't drive. He, he, he walked back to the house. And I told him he was going to have to go in the back gate in order to get to the back door. I don't know what bathroom he used, but like I said, he was only gone five, ten minutes. How far is that? Well, where you guys were from your house? How far? Five minutes, maybe. In a car? Yeah, walking. I mean, literally just right down the road. Kids used to go down there and play on the on the playground. My okay. nephew used to go down there. Alright, so how long did he take to go and come back? Maybe five, ten minutes. It could have been a couple of minutes more. I wasn't keeping track of time. Okay. Pretty much everything was a little blurry. Okay. How was he when he came back? Seemed fine. Still intoxicated, but seemed fine. Okay. I mean, it wasn't like he was out of breath or, I mean, you know, he wasn't sweating. He was singing, he started singing to Bon Jovi that was on the radio. Kind of just jumped right back into where he was before he had, you know, left. So, after he came back, what happened? We drank some more. Um, I started feeling a little uh, nauseous and not very well, pretty drunk. Okay. Um, and I told him I was going to go sit down in the car. He said, okay. I did. Um, and I passed out. So you passed out. When you woke up, after you passed out, where were you when you woke up? The same place. Okay. Um, same about, place where? Right down the road. Okay. Uh, be about 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. Okay. And I was going to walk back to the house, and he said, now I'll just drop you off. And he, I got out of the car, he didn't. I dropped, got out of the car, went around back, and let myself in. and. I saw the key there, and that's when I went and did those errands, and came back and called my sister. I know this is a lot, and I and I know I've told you a bunch of different things, and it's not just the different things that I told talks. I'm way past that. I'm way past that. I'm not depending on your on on all the story you have given me. One of the pending is on the on the evidence that we're collecting. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. So you missing you missing tape, right? What kind of tape is that you're talking about? We use duct tape on my furniture in my bedroom. Okay. So the the rolled out tape that was there is that's the one you're talking about that was above the you said it was above the washing machine or something like that, the dryer. But we had the tape and it was um, on, there's a piece of uh, white wire which the time that we yeah. keep clothespins on. Okay. And what we had done is when we took it off of my dresser and my bachelor chest and mm. all of that, we just very carefully took it off of that and put it on, you know, just kind of hung it up on that and was going to use it again because it was still good. Mm -hmm. um, and on my mirror, we had covered it in order to try to, once we folded it, um, try to keep it from, you know, anything happening to it. Okay. it kind of like, you know, we, we folded it and then took the bag and put around it. And, okay, 
and then we took the tape, and then we were going to, before we moved, I mean, we didn't do it until I was, was going to get ready to load it on the truck. We were going to take a blanket and put around it. Okay, so what you're saying is that your, the tape also will have your DNA on it? Is that what you're telling us? If, since it wasn't in the garage, I mean, I thought my mother had thrown it away, but okay. if it's not been thrown away in the trash can, then yes. Okay. Because we both used it. So, I mean, so, I mean, if it's not in the trash can, then, but I thought my mother had thrown it away, but I didn't check the trash can. Oh. Okay, so. So you have, you told us that your DNA would be on white wire, be on black bags. Be on the green and pink sheet, right? It'd be on a uh, scuffy rope, right? It'd be on tape. We have these things you were asking me whenever I was. No, out. just tell me. Yeah, she I mean, told me, right? Right, whenever all this yes. stuff when I was out, yeah, with different you, things you, out in the garage. These are the things that you named off, right? Right, out in the garage, yeah. So you named all these off. I mean, but there's a lot of other things my name, my fingerprints and DNA would be on out there. No, I understand, but you know that you just named off everything that your mother was wrapped in. No, I did not know that. Did you not know that? No, I did not know that. Yes, every single piece. And this is why, when you're talking to us, and we're giving you an opportunity to talk, okay? This is this is where it's going to come important, all right? All right? I know you're getting charged with murder, okay? You understand that. Now, you have to be honest with us. If, if, if something happened to your mother, Okay, and and you found her in a certain position or certain way. Listen, I'm telling you because what you're telling us now is not making any sense. All right, again. So <coughs> listen, if you if you found her a certain way, if she fell and you and you didn't know what to do and you panicked, you know that's okay. Do you understand? I I know I understand. I, that means, I understand. That, but I understand. I'm just telling you because what you're telling us now is is not making any sense again. All right, and plus everything that you you're, you're giving us. I mean, like a, if, if say your mom fell and hit your head, I don't know what I would do if your mom fell or she, or she had a heart attack and you found her, you I know? Did not, I did not, the last time I saw my mother, she was alive, well, and happy. So, you, you, your mom wasn't hurt or injured in no, any way? She and was there alive, was no, well, and happy. And there was no panic from you or nothing like that, right? No, she was, she was, she gave me a kiss. She told me she loved me. I told her I loved her. She was, we were both happy. Okay, so there's, there's absolutely no way that you found her. No. Okay. No. I, I'm just, you know, if it, I would have called I would, you. I would have known what I would do the same. I'm just I know, I, if I had found her, she was hurt, I would have okay. called you guys. Okay, I, I'm just, I'm just. Trying to figure it out. I know. I mean, I mean, because I, mean, I live in that house. My DNA and fingerprints are going to be all over the place. Not just in the garage, in the backyard, in the living room, in the kitchen. I mean, in our bedrooms, in the TV room. I mean, they're going to be. It's going to be on in the shed. It's going to be everywhere. Inside the car, outside the car. It, it my. I've lived there for five years. And the things that I named were just things that I could remember off the top of my head, but there there are a lot of things in there. Um, the Christmas stuff is going to have my fingerprints and DNA on it. Um, boxes are going to have my fingerprints and DNA on it. I mean, there's that wire that goes over the, the lint trap in the dryer. It's going to have my fingerprints and DNA on it. The dish detergent, I mean, the stuff in the sinks, under the sinks, I mean, everything's I'm just trying to be honest and clear my name. Amy, did you kill your mother while you were drunk? No, I did not. No. I get drunk. Did you do it while you were drunk? No, I could not. I get drunk, I pass out. I want you to think about back the last couple of days that you and me have been talking. We've been talking a lot. And I've been presented to you a lot of facts from my investigation that I prove you wrong. And you just got a warrant for murder on you based on the facts that I have 
on you. And we go again, evidence will prevail. So I'm giving you an opportunity for you to be completely truthful, Wells. You know, what my, my detective real is saying right now, what Josh is saying right now, this story, your story right now about Rocket is not making no sense. I'll tell you that right now. Okay, how does Rocket not make sense? Okay. I, that I don't understand. I know, we know exactly where you were when you called your sister. We know exactly Sunday. where you were. We know. I'm talking about, I knew where you were on Saturday when you alleged said that you left out of town. We know where you were the whole time. I didn't call my sister on Sunday. Okay. She, when Saturday. she called you. Right. When she, when Judy called you. I was right down the road. Okay. You want to keep to that story, that's you. Okay. But I'm presenting you everything. Some of the stuff that I have, I'm not going to give you everything. I know. I'm not going to give you everything. Everything on the table. And you still not take, you, you still not, I, I just don't know why you don't want to come out and, and tell, tell me the real story of what happened. I have no idea why you're not taking this opportunity. But I don't know what happened to my mother. Because right now, the evidence that I have right now, showing that you were the one who killed your mother, is not supporting the stories that you've been sharing with me. I would not kill my mother. I would not. Not even if I was completely crocked, I would not kill my mother. I'm giving you the opportunity for you to be truthful. I, I understand that and I am being very truthful. I would not kill my mother and I did not kill my mother. You're saying Rocket did? I'm not saying he did and I'm not saying he did. I don't know. I was passed out. I don't know. I know you're lying, Amy. I know you're lying. I know. We know that you killed on purpose. You I know did. that. You did. I did not. Okay. I would have no reason to kill my mother on purpose. I would have no reason to kill my mother. Okay. At all. That's why you're convincing yourself to say, I know that. No, I'm not. That I'm giving you the opportunity, Amy. We're done. We're past, we're past back already all the stuff that we have spoken to. In, in, we, this is for real, right now. I'm giving you the opportunity for you to tell me the, the truth, okay? You're not going to tell me the truth. Tell me what happened. You said it yourself. You knock on this door. You call me. And you told me, I want to clear your name. So I, want, I don't want to talk to this attorney. I want to talk to you. So I'm giving you an opportunity right now for you to tell me exactly what happened. It's not going to walk out this door. And I'll, and I'll be done. I, I don't want this door shuts. It's over. I understand. So I'm giving you an opportunity for you to tell me what really happened. Okay? We're done with the lies. It's time for the truth right now. Okay? Evidence is supporting that the story you gave me about Rocket is a lie. It's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie, Amy. Because I know exactly where you've been Saturday and Sunday. I know exactly where you've been. So it's time for you to tell me the truth. I am done tired of hearing lies from you, Amy. And you need to come out as an adult and tell me the truth. We're done with lies. As far as I know, I was not passed out. I was intoxicated. That's what I know. I know I passed out, and when I woke up, it was the next morning. That's what I know. And where'd you wake up the next morning? Right down the street. Then what happened? You went home? Yes. At 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. And when did your sister come over? I called her and she was there between 11.30 and 11.35. In the meantime, I had run errands in my mother's car. Was your sister there before you or after you? After me. So you're already home? Yes. 
When I called my sister, I was already home. Did Rocky kill your mother? I honestly don't know. I, I, I wish I did. I wish I could tell you yes or no. What's your opinion? I know I didn't do it. So I would say yes. Why do you think Rocky killed her? Well, what was his motive? If he thought there was money in the house, he would more than he would more than do it. Yes. Whether there was money in the house, I don't know. Was Rocket with you in the morning when you woke up? Yes. Was he with you all night? I don't know. What happened to your mother? I don't know. Until you guys told me, I honestly did not know. Did I think it was very strange that she called my sister and said that she was leaving and it was someplace other than North Carolina uh, by Sunday? Yes. And that she said that you could, she called you too? Correct. You understand how this is not making any sense? This is what we've got to find out what happened to your mom. You know what happened to your mom. I, and you need to tell us. I mean, I know what you guys have told Listen, me. You know your mom was buried in your backyard. That's what you guys have told me, yes. I, that I do know. But I did not bury her there. She said Rocket did. In five minutes he came over to choose the bathroom. I wouldn't say he did in the five minutes, but like I said, I passed out. I mean, I could have been walking around, but I know that I did pass out in his car. I do know that, and it, what he did after that, I can't tell you. You understand, if she died on her own, that means you didn't kill her, right? I, I you understand that. I, I do understand that, but I did not find my mother dead. Or hurt? Or injured? No. Or? If I would have, I would have called you guys immediately. Well, I would have called 911 immediately. What's Rocket's number? I don't know. How you met Rocket? He drives around on Rainbow Avenue. So you tell him how he is up? I see him up and down. How, how did he get to your house, first of all? I see him up and down Rainbow Avenue. I stopped, talked to him a couple of times. He asked if I wanted to go out partying one time, and I said yes. The next time I saw him, he said, do you want to go? I said yes. I ran and grabbed my purse. We went. I need for you to stop lying. I'm Amy, not, it's making you look heartless. I'm it's making you look heartless. I'm not heartless. I'm not I, I just feel. I, have you ever cared about your mom? Do you care about your mom? I love my mother very no, much. No, do you care about your mom? Yes. Okay. By lying, it does. It's not showing that. I'm. I'm trying. I'm not lying. I am trying to tell you everything. Okay. I want to clear my name because I know I did not kill my mother. I would never hurt my mother. I know this. Even completely cropped, I would never hurt my mother. I know this. Have you ever called Carrie over the weekend? Have I ever called Carrie over the weekend? When was the last time you called Carrie? Sunday. What time? Uh, I don't know exactly what time I talked about. Morning? It was, at, it was uh, evening. Okay. What well, you guys talked about? Uh, what was going on in the house. Okay. What else? Um that I needed his help. Okay. What kind of help? That he picked me up in his Mustang. And? He said no. And? I begged him and he still said no and I said okay and I hung up the phone. And why? What, what else happened in the, in, in the conversation? Why do you, why do you tell him, you know, the conversation to say that he picked you up? I told him that I couldn't tell them that I was 
seeing a confidential client is the reason I couldn't I couldn't tell you guys that. Confidential client about what? A, a law matter. Stop with the lies, Amy. That's what I told Carrie. Listen to me. Listen to me. That's Do you work for a law firm or no? Yes or no? No. Okay. That's what I told Carrie. That's that's what I did tell Carrie. I need for you to be honest with me. I'm not just gonna walk walk out. Okay. That's that's why I told him. The all the stories or the other version on your stories are not working, Amy. I'll tell you that right now. All the evidence that I'm being collecting, we've been collecting noises investigation, is helping me out. That's the reason why you're being served today with a warrant for murder. Kill your mother. You bury your mother in the backyard, and then you try, try to cover your tracks by lying, calling, making up these whole stories, stories plural. That you're out of town. That you're with Carrie. That you're every rocket. But you know what? All this evidence that we have, we collect and we keep looking into it. You start you your you start is crumbling down. I, scrumbling down. My dad thinks I worked for a law firm for over a year. He thinks I live in Ohio. And and I haven't. So you understand? Are you looking at the, I just wanna know, are you looking at the whole big picture? This reality right now, Amy. Yes. You're being charged for murdering your mother. And you're gonna still sit here in front of me denying it. When all this evidence that we have against you is showing that you did. But I didn't murder my mother. I would never murder my mother. Then tell me what happened, Amy. Because all this story you told me is not it is not it's not helping you. It's not making no sense. I know. I but I mean I don't know what I mean. I would. I can tell you that I, for several reasons. One, I would not murder my mother because without her, I don't exist. My mother literally paid for everything for me. I would have no reason to kill my mother. I would have no reason to hurt my mother. You did. No, I didn't. You did. I didn't. Does something happen, Amy? Something happened. I obviously something did, but I don't know. And what. everything's pointing to you, Amy. It, everything's pointing to you. It wasn't me. All this evidence making you look like you're a killer, like a sadistic killer. It's not. Evidence me. is prevailing. It's not. Evidence me. is winning. But I didn't do. You are losing, Amy. All your whole story. I your whole story has crumbled down. I didn't do it. Has crumbled down, Amy. And you're still going to be sitting here in front of me. In front of me. And you're going to still make it up lies, making up stories. Now, I'm going to deny killing or hurting my mother to my dying day. Okay. Because I did not do it. Had I found her hurt, injured, anything, I would have called 911 in a heartbeat. But I didn't. When I got home, she was not there. I had no idea where she was at. Remember what I told you? I was going to give you an opportunity. Gonna walk out. I was going to walk out. You know, when, when we tell you stuff and um, we kind of ask you certain things like, hey, are you sure it wasn't this? Are you sure it wasn't that? You know, it's, it's honestly trying to give you a way out, all right? Because he's 100% honest when it comes to being murder charges, you know? It's, it's, this is real. I am sure. Okay? 
and we just can't we just don't go get charges on like that on everybody. We have to know have sufficient evidence. So therefore we have evidence upon you that shows that you did that. Okay? This is what I'm telling you. This, this is what I'm telling you. This is what I'm telling you. Okay, now what we need is when I when I say stuff that could happen, because I know people get scared. All right. And not people's situations. I'm not your I don't know yes. why you would have evidence that I would hurt or kill my mother. Okay, listen, is it possible that you don't remember if you're passed out or you're drunk? Would you not remember if you did something to your mom? No. Is that possible? No. Huh? No. But how do you know? You weren't you don't remember what happened that night. You said you don't remember. Because I'm not capable of that. Huh? I'm not capable of that. Even under the influence? No. So No. But you don't remember anything. I would not be capable of killing my mother. I don't care how under the influence or what I was under the influence of. She meant that much to me. She means that much to me. I wouldn't do it. And I don't know how you have evidence that I would. I don't. I honestly don't. How do you And basically, I mean, we know that we're out there and check databases. And I know I couldn't find any guy that you named driving black Mustang or anything like that. All right, so I'm trying to figure out why you would even put something like this into your story. You know, it shows to us that you're deflecting. No, it's what he said his name was, and that's what he drove. And he has no last name. If he did, I didn't know. And he, that's what he told you he drove, or he did drive it? That's what he was driving. He didn't say it was his, but that's what he was driving. And all he told me... Did you guys walk to the park? Because you said it was right down the road. It was right down the road, but we... We went to drive towards... Um, we went to drive towards Melbourne down Hickory Tree. We got to the Deer Run Fire Station. We turned around and came back. Oh, your mom was home at the time? I'm gonna say my mother was still home at the time. So we wouldn't- What do you mean, you don't know she was? Well, I mean, it was before dark. My sister didn't call me until about 8.30. So we wouldn't have, I would have thought she was home. So I wouldn't park in the driveway, no. So were you not home at 8.30? No. No? Where were you at 8.30? 8.30. Okay. We were walking down Lakeshore. My street. We were walking down the street. At 8.30? Yeah. Which way? Towards my house. Towards your house? Mm -hmm. At 8.30? Yes. We are going towards your house at 8.30? Yes. Where are you going? The house. You going home at 8.30? Well, we weren't going home, but we were just, I mean, he was going to go in and... You are walking towards your house at 8.30? Mm -hmm. And then I... So his car was where? His car would have been at the end of the street on the other side of Hickory Tree at that playground where the fence is at. You have to jump the fence is blocked. Yeah. It would have been parked right there. You can't get inside there without either breaking the lock or jumping the fence. So any movement we would have done, we would have been walking around. Did this guy murder your mother? I'm sorry? Did he murder your mother? He would have had to have gone back and done it whenever I passed out. So, was it you or him, right? Hmm? It wasn't me. So did he murder your mom? He had to have. I know I didn't. Is the guy a bad guy to do something like that? Yeah. Has he murdered anybody else? I don't know. Then why do you think he's that bad of a person to do that? Who else would have done it? It's either you or him. I know I wouldn't have. He doesn't exist. Yes, he does. He does exist. No. He does. You are lying to us. No, he does exist. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. 
if I was sitting on Rambler, I could probably see him go up and down the road several times. He does exist. Was it that at night? Yes, he was. Mm -hmm. I know he went there to use the bathroom. After that, we drank more. After I passed out. So in other words, all the stuff that your mom was wrapped up in, we're going to find his DNA on there. You should, yes. And his fingerprints. <laughs> you should. Sorry. Sorry. Amy, why does people that knows you for years are saying that you hate your mother, that you can't stand living with your mom, and that you're sucking your mom dry, that you're taking advantage of her financially. Why people keep saying that? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Really why can, I why have that. you been telling people that your mom passed away? I'm not telling people that. Okay, that's why. Right. I'm going to give you some specifics. Friday, do you talk to somebody? Do you speak to somebody on the phone? I mean, I could have. I mean, I've. Was well, it a long distance phone call? Do you use the. Hmm? Do you spoke to somebody on your phone? Melissa. Out of state. Melissa. Okay. What was that conversation? Melissa asked me what had been going on, and I was. Not a joke, but I was joking around that both my parents were dead. Wow. I know you said joking joke. around. I was joking. I know it wasn't a joke. Joking around. Joking around. I will never joke about that. I know. About my parents. I know that. I know that. That both of your parents passed away. Yeah. Wow. And how come people are saying that knew your mother very well that she was afraid of you. I Why people keep saying that? I don't know. I don't know of anybody that would say that me and I, my mother had a bad relationship. Or that my mother was afraid of me. I, I, I honestly, I do not. We're not just talking about random people. We're talking about people that are very close to your mother. Okay, I mean, I, but I don't know any of them. I don't, I don't know any of them that would say that. Why would they be afraid? Why would your mom be afraid of you? She would have no reason to be afraid of me. I mean, they're saying that, so there had to be some type of reason. I was just not saying she had a reason or anything. No, she would have no reason to be afraid of me. I've never struck my mother. I've never threatened my mother. I've never... Yeah. You killed your mother and you made a joke about it. I didn't kill my mother. You killed your mother and you made a, a joke about it. I did not kill my mother. I did not kill my you mother. You killed your mother. No. You wrapped her up. And you no. put her on the ground in the backyard? No. No. That's right. No. I'm done. So, I wish you the best, Amy. I'm done. I don't know anybody that would say that. Well, there were a couple of people that said it. Remember, we talked to everybody. Well, I understand that, but... Why would they make something up? I don't know of anybody who would say that my mother would be afraid of me. She used to lock her door at night because she was scared of you. Wait a minute. Wait, well, wait, 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 wait. Her bedroom door? Mm. Because if that's the case, whoever told you that flat out lied to you. I was the one at night who shut my door. Mother left her door open. So you locked your door in there? I did not lock my door, but I shut my door because I watched TV later than she did. My mother went to bed between 8 and 8.30. I stayed up later. I shut my door so my television would not bother her. So let me get something right. I've been saying all kind of stuff to you. We've been talking hours. And finally, one thing you said to me out of everything is that finally stopped me and say that's a flat out lie. Out of all the things I told you, you stopped me from one measly little detail. 
Is that true? Well, I mean, it's a flat out lie okay. that. Wait a minute. It's listen. A, it's a flat listen. out lie that I murdered my mother. Listen. It's a flat listen. out lie that I hurt my mother. Wait, it's too late for that. You, it's you a flat can change out lie all you want. that Amy, my mother was afraid of me. Amy, Amy, something happened and you were there and you don't have it to your mom. Okay? I, and this is it. You know, you're going you're gonna to be charged with her murder. Okay? All right? You are. And that's why we're giving you the way out. If something else happened, but unfortunately, no, nothing happened. So it was just, it was just a regular. If anything else anger, happened, I don't killing. know. And I wasn't there. So, I mean, there, I, I, I don't know how I can help you there. Okay, but did you, did you pull money out of your mom's account all the time? I pulled money out of her checking accounts once, and we both had a credit card that, or two credit cards that I pulled money off of, yes. Okay. And her debit card, bank card, you pulled that off of that? Yes, one time with her permission. Okay, and when was that? That was on Sunday. That's the only time you've ever did it? Yes. Okay. Did you have her PIN number? I did. Okay, and how long have you had that? A while. Oh, wow. How come you never pulled that money before? She's always done it. So why on Sunday? I was out and about. So you're just out and about and just had to pull money out? Well, she given me permission on Friday to do it. Okay. So, I did it. So she said, Friday, yeah, you can pull money out. So Sunday, I'm going to go. Well, she said on Friday I could do it. And then on Sunday, I decided to go do it. Okay, she so said. So you decided to do it the day after she's dead? I didn't know she was dead. I did not know. You did. I didn't. You did. I did not know. Yes, you did. No, I did not. Yeah. No, yeah. I did, did not. You did, you did, you did. No. Yeah. Listen, right We now, go back and forth about this all the time, but I did not know. I did not tell my mother. I would not hurt my mother. I do not know what happened. I don't know why my mother, if people are saying my mother would be afraid of her, afraid of me. I don't know why they think that she slept with her door shut when she didn't. My mother and I had a great relationship. Great. We loved each other very much. What messes? Why do you lie so much? Can you answer that, please? Because you've proven to lie, right? This you lied to my dad? No, lie to us. And everybody you know. Why, why do you lie to... Why do you lie so much? I don't want y'all to guide know that I hang around with somebody who deals in heroin. I mean, I'm sitting in jail with 75 women who just got brought in there and I'm hearing horror stories about this. About what? Your murder? Well, they're telling me that. Okay. Much, but what's your what's your mom's wallet? I don't know. I have no idea. What's that? I don't. I Where don't. was the last time you saw her? Saw it with her in her purse. If there's any. There's any reason why her water should be in your room? No. No reason? No. Okay. Absolutely not. Can you can you give me um Rocket's description one more time? Let's take it step by step, okay? okay. I'm just trying to put an attempt to contact right now. Okay. Um approximately five eleven. Okay. Uh, clean cut. Clean cut. He has a small scar right here, but it'll just, like it'll heal. It's kind of like red. Right. Okay. Um, okay. He is um, got blue eyes. Blue eyes. Um, well built. Nice smile. And dresses nicely. Okay. Does he got any hair? It's um, kind of like a short military okay. cut. Kind of a blondish. Um, does he 
he has any tattoos, any ink on him? I did. That you noticed that was visible? I did not notice any okay. tattoos that were visible, no. Whether he had any, I, I, I don't know. But I didn't notice any, no. Any earrings? No. Ear pierce? No. And no piercing on his face, either. But this uh, looks, this mark here looked recent. Um, it, I mean, it was already red, like it was going to be a little s small scar. But I, I mean, I don't know how long it takes for a scar. Okay. It was just like uh, pinkish red. I want to show you something that I want to because I could say something, okay? And I want to make it official, okay? Just want to show you. This is your warrant. You're being charged, premeditated murder, kidnapping, signed by Judge O'Brien, serial bond. That is official. I got enough evidence to get this warrant signed. And my evidence keeps coming in. And it's destroying your stories and your lies. I brought you over here because I want to talk to, talk to you per in person to tell you this. About these charges and give you an opportunity for you to talk to me. Now, first, you did it. But then, when I told you about your charges, you knock on the door and you say you want to deliver me. That's a good start. Okay? You need to find deep inside of you. Deep inside of you in your heart. And you need to tell yourself, stop lying, Amy. You need to give your mom peace. And you need to start telling the truth about what happened to your mom. I'll give you the opportunity, Amy, for you to take that step for your mom. For your mind to be at peace and be able to rest her whole eternity at peace. You did something wrong. Stuff happened. What we find, we look inside of each other, inside of yourself, and you know that you're wrong, you need to make a right. And by you making a right, is be able to clear your conscience. Ask for forgiveness to God and let your mom rest in peace. You're not doing that right now. You're not. You keep lying and lying and lying. And I just don't know what else to do. Give you the opportunity for you to come forward and tell me what really happened. You need to tell yourself inside, Amy, Self, stop lying and tell the truth. I know deep down inside, inside the heart, 
It's killing you. It's killing you. Because I know you want to do the right thing, Amy. You want to say that, tell the truth. You want to tell me what happened. But this demon inside of you that doesn't let you. You need to push that demon off and listen to that little voice. Think about your mom and tell the truth. I found out already. I found out already. You killed your mom. No, I didn't. We can stay here until I retire. I know. And you're I'm not going to come forward. forward. I know. Okay, so. I'm not going to agree. Okay, so. It's 3.42 p.m. Still September 25th, 2015. And at this time, I'm going to conclude this interview, Amy. I give you my card. You know what you reach me. I, I give you my card last time we met. I but still, I got more. I got plenty. Can I put my bottom teeth in? Here's my card. You want to talk further or entertain me a little bit more? Give me a call. But we're done. Sorry, I put my teeth in. Do whatever you want, baby. We're done.